Flyers! Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm the Flying Fabio and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to Abigail. <laughs> Alright, hey everybody, how's it going? Wait, wait, did we just get a raid? Captain Arash! Captain Arash, hello sir! Hello Captain Arash viewers! Huge raid, thank you so much man, appreciate that. My god, lots going on. Lots going on already. We're working a level 2 hype trade before I even say hello. And hello, by the way, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right. Let's, uh, here. Let's put some tunes. Yeah, come on. Look who's here. Hi, guys. Good to see you. I gotta go. Hello and goodbye. All right, we'll see you later, baby. Just resubscribed for three months. All right. That was quick, yeah. We got uh, we got a lot going on in our lives too. All right, so uh, here we go. We're gonna put uh, we're gonna put some tunes, right? Get that background months. going Komodo as usual, hype, Komodo, hype, as Komodo usual. Hype. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Man, Gerald R eight just there we go. Subscribed for three months. There that we go. That's a little better. That's a little better. Gerald R eight. There we go. All right, feels a little better now. Feels a little better now. All right. Jeez, jeez. I just go in to put some tunes, come back. It's already, I don't know, two thirds of a level three hype train. What's going on, everybody? All right, so we got we got a lot going. Three days ago, Taragashi with a tier one, with a prime subscription, actually. Taragashi, thank you very much, man. I hope you're out there. Hope you're out there. Then Chromo uh, tipped $20. Hey, Chromo, what's up, man? Thank you very much for that. Uh, and he says, hey, Fabio, hope you get back up and running soon. We finally did, Ryan right? Rimmer, Sorry about all the trouble with months. MSFS. Uh, me too, man. Been loving the streams. Keep up the great work. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Mr. 97 months. Let's go, man. Let's go. Hey, Mark is here too. Hey, Mark, how are you, man? Two months. Two months streak. Hello, all. Hello, back. Kozaki with 100 bits. Thank you. Virtual Aviator with 100 bits. Thank you. New spawns. Eight months. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Welcome back to you too, new spawns. How are you, man? Sneaky Fungus. Seven months, dude. Five months streak right there. Lucky seven. Glad to see you back, Fabio. Yeah, lucky seven indeed for us and for Kimi Raikkonen, I'd say. Citizen, 100 bits. And then Captain Arash with that awesome, awesome raid. Oh my gosh. What? Just, hold on. We'll get there. Aspen. Aspen with Stuck 11 months. For three months. Gamer thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Good to be back, to too. Uh, woo, five months for Naughty Gnome. Let's go. Berater with three months. Uh, Drunk Simming, four months. GT Captain Sappy. Ooh, Captain months. Sappy. Gamer What's up, man? How's it going? Hello, hello. Gifting a tier one sub to Geraldar. Enjoy, Geraldar. I hope you do. I hope you do. Uh, Captain Arash, six months. Man, Captain Arash, hello, sir. Thank you. It's good to hear from you. We haven't spoken in a while. We need to get together. We need to talk. All right. Rock and Rimmer, two months with a prime sub. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Citizen, gifting a to PH. Yeah, hello, PH. Yeah. Thank you, Citizen. Appreciate that. Uh, Gamer Taurus with six tier one subs. Let's go, buddy. Good to see you. Good fixings. Nine months. Welcome back. Let's go. Indeed, sir. Aura with 200 bits. Source control with 200 bits. And just like that, we're at 80% of a level 5 hype train. Holy moly. What a welcome back. Hey, yeah, like, thank you very much for those 300 bits. Tar Bridge, five months. Let's go, man. <laughs> welcome back, Captain. My Captain. Hey, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Respect back to you. Real deal. What's up, man? How's it going? Hey, Kingsman. Oh, Dugao is here, too, man. All right. It's going to be hard to keep up with everything that's going on. So... I am not going to go back and see everybody that was saying hello, but hello, everybody. It's great to be back. Great to be back. Very, very great to be back. Rocking Windows 11. Uh, so we'll see how things go, right? So far, so good. Uh, so testing, so good. But we'll see. Um, but it was the only thing that finally did it for me. Um, I still don't know the source Perfect of my issue. If I knew, I'd probably be able to solve it. But I uh, tried a lot of different things, and uh, eventually, Windows 11, uh, I, I was, you know, considering I live off of this. Um, it was kind of scary going to Windows 11, but at the same time, I said, well, you know, the only thing I didn't do is reinstall Windows 10. That was sort of the last two things I had going, right? And I decided to go Windows 11. 
and it worked um, right off the bat too. So um, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll just keep our fingers crossed. I'm here to say, what's up, man? How's it going? Widowmaker, thank you very box, ten months, man. Welcome back to you too. Months. Thank you. In a box, man. Eleven months. Look at the, uh, those subs, man. Hey, we're about to do a year. We're about to do our year of this channel. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? That's insane. Hey, Orange Collar, what's up, man? Welcome Hello, back. in a box, man. Uh, did you need the required TPM module for Windows 11? I did. Well, not hardware. Um, my CPU can enable it, right? Leet. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Captain Seppi. Let's go, buddy. Thank you. Uh, but, so, I can enable it via BIOS, right? Um... But remember, I bought these cards. Oh, remember, I started with one motherboard, then changed to a different motherboard. This is a, a, a hero, uh, Maximum or Maximus hero. Um, and I needed to do not one, but two BIOS updates. I guess I had an early BIOS. Well, I probably I did, right? Bought it early. Um, so did uh, two BIOS updates and then was able to turn on TPM, which Asus calls or actually Intel, I suppose, calls it PTT. Right? Um, and that was it. That was the only thing that I was missing, really, to be able to go to Windows 11. Yeah, airlock. I think that's what's going to happen, actually, if I'm honest. I think going forward... Uh, yeah, you old school, what's up? That's what's going to happen, right? Is software as a service, right? You're going to probably pay a subscription um, or have the option to... I don't know, maybe just buy the version you want. But I think that's what will happen, is you just have quicker and more frequent well, shallower, not quicker, maybe shallower and more frequent updates to the OS as they kind of just fine tune what has, you know, the parts that have been working for a long time. Rock Frog, 11 months. Let's go, buddy. Thank you very much, man. That's awesome. Hey, Rock. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's see here. Oh, you have a hero too. Yeah, nice. It's an awesome board. It's an awesome board. Let's Cali! Let's go. Seven month streak. Let's go. Months. Thank you. Hey, Rob. What's up, man? Tier one, four months. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Rocking a coffee that I made myself. But I mean, it, it is in a Starbucks cup, but it's uh, it's Nespresso. Don't tell Starbucks uh, sponsor of this channel. Uh, <laughs> I wish, right? Um... Yes, finally rocking the Nespresso machine. Tickle, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Oh my god, look at that. Look at that level 5. Look at that level 5. My gosh, 25 subs, 700 bits. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Let's go. Choo-choo. Ooh, Aeropress. I don't know that one, Dalmatian. I don't know that one. All right. By the way, um, one of the things that uh, I haven't been able to fix, well, I, I suppose it would be a fix. Maybe it's for now it's it's minor, but the um, the level bars in OBS, which I use often to kind of determine music volume and sim volume, stuff like that, uh, they're updating with much less frequency than than they did in Windows 10. And I haven't been able to find a way to, to change that. So... Um, it often doesn't show me the max because it's in like the max will happen in between updates, right? Uh, so, uh, you guys are gonna have to let me know if music needs to be louder or, or quieter. Not that I don't ask often, but today I'm really gonna have to rely on you guys for that. Same for Sims, so same for all sounds, right? So let me know. Hey, Fake Wayne, great to be back, man. Okay, music quieter, let's go. Let's go, let's try this right now. How about this? How about this? We'll do a couple drops there. <clears throat> Yeah, so, uh, Dragon, that's an interesting statement. Uh, interesting for me, because I bought my parts with the intent of overclocking, right? Um, they're beefy enough for that. They're designed for that in some cases, in some parts, right? Um, but I haven't actually done it yet, because I honestly, I've been pretty happy with the performance, right? Haven't really seen a reason... Especially now with the sim update, which I honestly I've flown one day with you guys and that was about it. Um, so we'll see we'll see how it goes today. But uh, I haven't felt a need, so um, yeah, you know I I haven't done it yet. Doesn't mean I won't, but I haven't done it yet. Mhm, mm mhm, mm could be. Yeah, thanks, Knights. Uh, hope all is well with you too. It's been a little while. 
great to be here for great to hear from you guys man i hope all you guys are doing well i hope uh only good things happen while i was gone uh and uh Google yeah just hopefully we're back to normal months. we'll see underscore one gifted a tier one sub to booms us. what's up buddy what's up is that the original booms or is this booms two uh underscore one in this case <laughs> hey thanks very much man which oh enjoy that subscription hey clumsy what's up buddy how's it going how's it going kilo zebra's here too what's up man what is up okay so um uh what problem exactly real deal are we talking about the problems i had with the sim let's go br low what's up man good to see you Thanks, Kilo. Appreciate that, man. Great to be back. Oh, did you really, AK? Congratulations, buddy. Let's go. AK got the job. Hey, that's awesome, man. Congrats, buddy. Congrats. The OG booms. Nice. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. I think this is account number three, right? <laughs> or at least, at least username. Yeah, I see what you mean, real deal. I see what you mean. Interesting, yeah. Maybe I need to look into that. I like to live dangerously, though. I still don't have that on Linker installed. Granted, I don't have much stuff installed at all. Uh, I do have a few things installed, but not much stuff at all. Not much stuff at all. I'll tell you what I have. I have the TBM 930 improvement is in, because I love that aircraft. I haven't flown that aircraft in a while. I feel like we need to get back to it right and enjoy some working title g3000 sweetness which you know i don't think it's as advanced and functional perhaps as nxi but uh ways for you know the 1000 series of garments but it's an awesome avionics already um very functional i have that i have the uh the caravan no pod mod installed that's already working too basically i only have stuff that's confirmed to work with su5 right I have a Mr. Tommy's Diamond 62, uh, DA62 mod, which is awesome. Got all the Just Flight updates. Uh, we have updates for the Warrior, we have updates for the Arrow, and updates for the Turbo Arrow. And it's not just SU-5, they added some stuff in there. So we're going to have a look at those change logs too. Um, what else? Got Navigraph, Nav Data is in there. Um, Great Britain Central still in there from last week. The GTN 750, uh, PMS, um, is it PMS? I think so, right? Yes, PMS 50, um, GTN 750, and in the case of the Arrow, also GTN 650, which is pretty cool. It's basically the 750, but in a 530 format. You know, the GNS 530, the, the typical, you know, biggest GPS you have that comes with the SIM. Um, then I have, uh, let's see here. Oh, Unreal Weather. Unreal Weather released an update. Uh, it's now fully working. Uh, actually, it started, it was already working on 118.13. We're now on 118.15. Uh, that was the hotfix, right? Um, and we have some uh, some notes for that hotfix itself. So, yeah. Yeah, Goblin, it is. As a matter of fact, we're going to use it. We're going to use it today for our uh, ferry flight. So we are doing a ferry flight today. We we're two legs from the end. We got to finish that up, right? So I got to take advantage of everything working. Let's get it done. Oh, nice, Clumsy. Nice. I didn't know that was in. I saw that they did an FD update, but I, I don't think they said exactly what. Hello, Larger Life. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly, Larger. Besides all that, uh, basically all that. Basically all that. Hey, Jumbo, what's up, man? How's it going? All right. So let's start looking at this stuff, right? Uh, first off, right here. So this is the Turbo Arrow. Uh, remember, Warrior and Arrow got updates too. Uh, but I'm starting with the Turbo Arrow because that's what we're flying today, right? So version 4 is what we're on right now. It was released August uh, uh, 5th. PMS 50 GTN 650 integration. There we go. FD tweaks, I think this is what uh, Goblin was talking about, right? Um, no, sorry. Clumsy. It was clumsy. 
Then autopilot control assignments fixed. Uh, we didn't have issues with that because I think our autopilot wasn't assigned to anything hardware wise, right? We just, we click on it. Landing gear lights dim more with panel light and switched on. Okay. Uh, I think we're talking the landing gear lights in the cockpit. Um, EFB sounds on off, click spots added, all right. Cockpit texture tweaks for improved appearance. All right, nice. That's always good to have. KN62 inner knob animation fix. Didn't know there was a problem. Sim update 5 control system compatibility fixes like cabin heating controls uh, because I think it has to do with de-icing. Remember that? You can defrost basically, right? Parking brake lever. Uh, maybe they have just updated the variable in the sim and now we got to relink stuff. Windows latch or window latch. HSI and DI knobs. Uh, GPS 100 on off button. Yeah, so it sounds like it's very much the basic sim is changing some stuff that they have to then, you know, latch on the new new names. So uh, it isn't just a sim update five compatibility update, which is awesome, which I think is awesome, right? Uh, very nice, very nice. Let's see here. Can I go back here and see the other ones? Yes, yes, but it's okay. So it's easier to do this. There we go, and here, and here. Okay, this is the stuff I have from Just Flight. Um, which, by the way, um, guess what? Got a Just Flight preview coming probably, probably Wednesday. I um, think I'll get it tomorrow afternoon from what I've heard from Just Flight. I mean, they're working on this uh, early release, but it's, I mean, the final release is days away right um so uh yes we're gonna be seeing it if i get it tomorrow afternoon then we'll see it on stream on wednesday um and that would be the f14 yes 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 as always it's gonna be a preview so not final but very close to final right um so yeah very uh danger zone for sure new spawns for sure uh yeah dalmatian yep uh, yeah, I'm very, very interested in that. All right, let's uh, let's have a look at the the arrow because the arrow got updated too. So, uh, oh, okay, I guess that link didn't work. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Is it an arrow? Nope. Just flight, no arrow. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Arrow three for MSFS. There we go. Version nine. Um, and uh, some things are the same. Like, for example, integrating GTN 650, right? FD tweaks, autopilot control assignments, same landing gear, EFB sounds, cockpit textures. Uh, sounds like actually the exact same, exact same stuff that happened to the turbo. Okay, okay, very cool. Now, uh, I'm gonna guess the Warrior is gonna have uh, a little bit more, a little bit more changes because it's, uh, you know, earlier aircraft. Let's have a look. Or, or earlier in its development cycle is what I'm trying to get at. Uh huh, okay, so few things more. Turn coordinator texture fixed, beacon light controls assignment fixed, okay, dome light texture position, wheel fairing option saved with state, okay, nice. EFB sounds on off, uh, click spots added, okay, that's the same. EFB warning added for engine flooding due to incorrect primary usage, oh, this is interesting. Flooding prior to flight can now be resolved either by following the POH checklist, engine start with mixture fuel pump off because you're trying to get the fuel, you're cranking the engine without uh, the mixture on, right, mixture is cut off. Crank the engine because you're trying to get the fuel that's flooding the engine. There's too much fuel inside the cylinders. You gotta get that out of there. Well, it can ex be exhausted through the exhaust valve and exhaust pipe, but you need to crank the engine, right? So that's what they mean by following the POH checklist uh, or by waiting for a short period because the fuel will eventually evaporate if you just wait. Flooding in flight will now cause temporary engine splutter. Okay. Uh, stutter, maybe? Splutter. Okay. Rather than total failure. Cockpit textures tweaked for improved appearance. Tutorial flight plan fixed. Oh, I didn't know there was a problem with the tut tutorial flight. Uh, okay, and then it's the same stuff. All right, nice. That's the updates for just flight, right? Um, let's see. 
Uh, who is uh, Ninja? What are we talking about here? I mean, I know who you're talking about. Uh, let's see. Maybe something. Oh, you're saying Pi. Isn't it Pi Mark? I thought it was Pi Mark. No? Anyways, is it Primark? Huh, okay. Primark? Maybe? I don't know. Hey, what's up, Oz Flight Simmer? Good to see you, man. Oh, Primark, okay. No, Primark. <laughs> Jesus. This is the Primark Primark stream. Westland, Exterminator. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that follow. All right. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, here is the notes for the hotfix, right? So, our sim, God Sim Update uh, 5, there were a few things that didn't quite work so well. So, fixed ground level of detail, low resolution, when flying at airliner altitudes. All right. I think people were saying that this had to do with the new rendering system that made the sim faster. Um, so, like, you look, you know, fast one way and another way and stuff takes longer to load. Maybe that's what they're talking about here. I don't know. I'm guessing. Fixed washout oil painted clouds. Uh, yeah, there was some HDR, I think, overexposure there. Clouds and the overall luminosity under cloud coverage. Okay. All right. That's not it. All right. What is it, Ninja? Fixed missing volumetric lights. So, didn't know they were missing. Fixed abnormal temperature spikes over airports when the METAR data was not updating often enough. I think this is what some people were seeing, right? And thinking live weather was broken. I think it was broken only over, well, in this condition here. Uh, a lot, maybe. Aligned pressure, altitude. I was low res uh, texture at LNR altitudes. Ah, low res textures. Now normal res again. Okay. But isn't that kind of what was happening too? Like when you look, you know, fast one way and another, it's got, to, well, it's going to have to wait a little bit to load whatever higher resolution stuff it's going to have to load. <laughs> Dalmatian. <laughs> All right. Um,. Aligned pressure altitude SIMVAR and pitot-static altitude calculations to prevent wrong altitude information for external live ATC services. Okay. GPU, so I guess it was being the, the altitude was being reported wrongly to controllers that are using their, their uh, clients, right, to control. GPU stats are now displayed in the debug window when the dev mo uh, mode is activated. Okay, that's always useful. And disabled aggressive compilation optimization for WASM signed zeros. Okay. Interesting, but keep fast math. Wow, they all of a sudden, they keep stuff like, yeah, we did this, look, just fix this, then boom. Straight into, like, the depths of programming. Not the depths of programming, but, you know, a little deeper than the rest. Uh, let's see. How harsh the culling is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so they're gonna give us a setting where, it, yeah, okay, nice. Well, right now, st sticks. Yeah, exactly, APA. That's what I'm saying. Like, they all of a sudden go, like, into a different language, right? Known issue, by the way, um, in some ATC service. I don't know a lot of people that use it. Some people use it. Radar can still report incorrect altitude, uh, and that will be fixed, they think, in World Update 6. All right. Now it's fixed. Okay, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Nerd talk. Also, uh, the DC-6 got updated, right? Um, this was in August 5th, also. Uh, and they got a few things here going. Uh, they fixed some stuff. They, you know, as usual, it's early days in the life of the aircraft. So um, every time they do an update to, you know, in this case, make it uh, compatible perhaps with SU-5. Um, they also have a in-house list of to-do, to-clean kind of things. And they're working it, right? So you see some of those updates um, now, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Here's the other thing. Um... They're talking about 737 development, which we're going to have more news here on stream sometime soon about this, so stay tuned. Um, but also, it's their 24th birthday, so happy birthday, PMDG. 24 years, that's incredible. Amazing. Uh, to celebrate, we're going to give you one week of 24% of all PMDG products for prepared, right? So if you still fly prepared, um, there's a, loads of people that do. Uh, it's still a great sim, right? 24% um, off of all PMDG products. Um, starts August 7th. Uh, don't know if it says when it expires. But anyways, very, very cool. So uh, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Um, 
Then I have another page that we're going to talk about later today, but it has to because one of the things we got in Sim Update 5 is now there is change of air density based on temperature. And that's important because we normally correct our altimeter for pressure, which is one of the things that changes air density, which we need to know because remember how an indicated air speedometer works, right? But temperature also changes the density of the air. And so you also have to correct your altitude for temperature. That's something a lot of pilots haven't really seen before, sometimes even heard of before. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today because it is one of the new features that's in the sim. Um, and who knows, maybe we even will get a chance to demonstrate it. Probably not today. And you'll see why, because we need a specific type of day and specific type of terrain for us to be able to demonstrate that very well. But I want to test this and make sure that it is in there uh, because I only heard that it's in there. I know, right, 777? I know. That's, yeah. Yes. Amazing. So we're going to talk about that. All right. Very good. Very good. Very, very good. So, um, pro sim. What's pro sim, real deal? What is pro sim? What's that, Apid? What aircraft can't you fly? Deadhead! Hello, sir. I just sent you a message this morning, by the way. I think you probably already saw it. But hey, thanks. And TBD. <clears throat> so, Kilo, are you telling me that uh, using VPilot, which uh, I might even today, um, might have some issues with altitude reporting? Is that what's happening? Yeah, Ipid, so I saw here that you're talking DC-6, but uh, I don't know, are we talking prepared or or flight sim? Good morning, Joey Bolo. What's up, man? All is well. Dude, we're back up, man. All is great. All is great. Oh, interesting, 777. Okay, they keep updating the PDF. But for those who read the menu, it's frustrating because if it's anyone's guess what exactly changed. Great point, and one that I'm going to pass on to them. That's a great point. Great point. After all, PMDG is Precision Manuals Design Group, right? Alberto, como estamos? Todo bien. Actually, DC, they intended it as prepared with the cool E as a three. That was what Lockheed said when it came out. Um... Obviously, a bunch of people call it Prepare 3D or P3D, right? But being the good <laughs> sort of grown-up corporate company that Lockheed is, that was the intent, is prepared in a cool, hip way. To a long post from the developer of Epider, he explains how the new altitude system affects VETSIM. Awesome. Thanks, Aspen. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Okay. Okay. So... Uh, let me see here. I have some uh, stream notes. Remember in that awesome little notebook that my daughter gave me? Little leather bound. It's amazing. All right. So let's see here. Yep. Yep. Oh, this is pretty cool. Um, let's see. Also, don't forget the uh, miles per hour versus not performance in the sim. Yep. Flew some days ago and it was spot onto the charts, but in knots. So the chart probably is in knots like we talked about, right? Triple seven. I'll talk to them about, about it too. Yes, hello, fellow kids. Exactly, good fixies. Exactly. Uh, uh. Posted a link to... Uh, okay, no, that's it. Yeah, I already read that one. Nice, hey, Pit. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. So, um, anybody here use Flight Control Replay? Hmm. Made by... Uh... <laughs> Do you guys know who makes it? It's another Fabio. Only used high flat recorder. Okay. Okay. Um, 
The easiest workaround for Vpilot L2 to issue right now is to use a weather preset with, uh, okay, as the pressure, and use the center atmosphere lapse rates. Interesting, Kilo Zebra. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate that. The firefighting Fabio. Ah, uh, that's funny. Um, all right. Uh, okay. I think, yeah. Yep. There's even a couple of videos I can show you guys. Let's see here. Let's see here. All right. Here's flight control replay, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's the most complete software to record and replay your flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Prepared Microsoft FSX, right? Uh, SC or Microsoft ESP. Interesting. Interesting. Microsoft ESP was basically the Microsoft Flight Sim code after Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, 10 stopped existing, right? Microsoft discontinued. But the code was available, and this is the code that Lockheed bought, the Microsoft ESP, bought and made prepared on top of. Uh, but the code is available. You can actually buy that code uh, if you really want to. And then you can use this, I guess, in Microsoft ESP to also. <laughs> Gamer. Uh, yeah, Ryber Dobson. Interesting stuff. All right, so check this out. Brazilian ATC. <laughs> Dragon. Featuring cinematic MSFS. How about that? Um, so, uh, I haven't used it, but we're going to get access to it. And not only get access to it, but uh, the developer is going to be on stream. So his name is Fabio. He's from Italy. He's the guy behind this. And uh, he's actually getting, uh, well, a new version ready. But uh, the current version, uh, he's going to show it to us here on stream. So we get to ask him questions. Uh, we get to learn probably more than what we would on our own without him being here. So pretty Pretty excited about that. Yeah, right, Rodopsin. That was gonna be my question. Is do you think do you think Chad can can handle two Fabios? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's double Fabio stream, exactly. Between two Fabios. <laughs> nice. Nice. Ah, Derpex. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out, I suppose. So when we do that, Derpex, when we get it here and start trying it, um, let's try that. Let's try that. <laughs> Fabio growth is always logarithmic. <laughs> nice, nice. Fabioception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so it's got some interesting features, right? So you can record your flight. Um, change camera trigger lets you select any simulator default camera during your flight replay. Uh, and the system automatically changes camera at the time you configured in timeline. Oh, so you can. Whoa. Whoa, that's cool. I didn't even know you could do this. So, in the replay timeline, you can actually mark where you want the cameras to change to different cameras that are already set up in the sim. That's super cool. Relive instant replay. You can rewind your flight situation if you miss an approach or flight constraint. Go backward and resume your flight to replay from any moment you choose. Oh, powerful, powerful. This will feel like, uh, like one of those racing games, right? Like Need for Speed, where you can rewind back after a crash and be like, no, I want to try that again. <laughs> right? Pretty amazing. Play as AI. Uh, oh, your recorded flight is replayed with AI aircraft generated by FCR. Flight control replay, yeah. To simulate formation flight. 
the ghost aircraft follow the same flight path besides yours. Right, because it's your flight path, right? And you can customize their position and distance. Oh, it's offset. It's offset from your replay. Like behind or beside a multiple, the number of air. Oh, so you can make like the Blue Angels, right? You just fly the routine yourself. And then you add a bunch of AI aircraft, um, whatever aircraft models you want to be offset in formation. And then they fly to get. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Looping. Hey, nothing is impossible, buddy. Huh? VR support. Now flight control replay can be used also in all VR environments via key mapping and for Windows Mixed Reality headsets. Uh, you can also run flight control replay directly into the cockpit and you're able to see FCR UI for a complete use. Wow. Automatic change camera using keyboard shortcut configuration. Call and activate any custom cockpit camera, smart cam or other default SIM cameras by choosing a keyboard shortcut in camera change dialog. Set up to uh, the keyboard shortcut that you configured in MS control sections and inside the camera change dialog. And this will be triggered at a choose frame. Okay, I think that's the same that you talked about up there. When replay reaches this frame, FCR triggers the keyboard shortcut and automatically activates. Yeah, it's, I think it's the same. That's awesome. This sounds really cool. This sounds really cool. Gorlo, what's up, dude? I, I'm starting to think that the uh, Virtual Blue Angels, they just use this. They just have one guy flying up front, but using this in a live way, right? Right, Gorlo? Come on. Come on, man. Time to come clean. Hey, Mort's here too. What's up, Mort? So that's Flight Control Replay. So we're going to have Fabio straight from Italy here on stream to show us how Flight Control Replay works and maybe talk about some future features. Pretty cool. We'll use scripts. Yeah, exactly. Way easier. Way easier. Way easier. Aye, aye, sir. Checking in. Hello, sir. How are you? It's good to see you, man. Hope you're doing well. Dalmatian. I watched the Virtual Blue Angels for the first time a couple of days ago. Pretty cool. Pretty cool might be an understatement. It's very cool. Uh, I watched them, uh, well, I, I didn't watch them live this last air show. What was the name of the bad last big air show? Starts with an M, right, Gorlo? And uh, didn't catch them live, but I watched the replay and man, whew, they performed live, right? As they usually do. But wow. Oh, look at that. Just resubscribed for nine months. Good. Look at that nine month badge right there. Aye, aye. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Nine months. Let's go. Carrier air power. That's it. Uh, no, Aspen. Fabio, the other Fabio, isn't available until uh, two weeks from now. Uh, that's right. Two weeks from now. So, uh... We don't know what day that week. We're picking the day now. Uh, so I'm talking to him about what day, but he, we already narrowed it down to that week. The Twitch baby. That's right. Nine months. It is a Twitch baby. Oh, I didn't think about that. Aye, aye. Ooh, we got some things to talk about. <laughs> no route just yet, PR. Uh, why? Because we had planned the route that we're going to fly today. It's Prestwick to Rotterdam. We knew that. That was from the last attempt we had at this, right? Um, but... We haven't checked the weather, so the weather in a, in a route like this, because it's a pretty long flight, it's three hours or so, uh, weather can definitely affect which way we're going to go. So we're going to do the route again together here, and uh, then we'll put it up on the bot. Wait, Garlo got a new job. No, what? wait, what? What happened, Garlo? What are you doing now, buddy? Scenery is all default, gamer. All default scenery, buddy. That's why it's turned off, too. Also, we could have just updated that and said default. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see, Looping. Let's have a look, buddy. I have one here. Oh, update available. Interesting. I d Did we have these before? That something needs updating? No. Update available. Aha, look at this. Let's see. Oh, okay. I Maybe they updated for 18.5. Maybe? Updated two days ago, okay. I'm the flight lead for the Legacy A4 team. Oh, this is amazing. Guys, Gorlo flies for the Virtual Blue Angels, right? And he was the... Remember, he was the pilot in Burt, uh, Fat Albert. The C-130 did an awesome job, flew with us here. Well, I flew with him here on stream. Do you remember that? 
uh, and flew the entire procedure. Me as his very inept co-pilot and him more than making up for my shortcomings. Um, did a great job. And he is now lead, lead on the A-4. The A-4 is an older aircraft, but it's an aircraft the Blue Angels used to fly. So for quite a while, actually, they flew the A-4. Um, and there is nowadays, obviously, a virtual Blue Angels squadron flying the F-18, but they also put one together flying the A-4. And they even get together. So Carrier Air Power Air Show, uh, that's what happened. The A-4s came in and they do. It's awesome. They end up doing a pass where it's all the F-18s with all the A-4s. And Garlo is now the lead. Oh, dude. Let's go, Garlo. Congratulations, buddy. What an upgrade. Oh, man, that's amazing. All right. So, Garlo, what's the next air show? When are we going to catch you and the rest of the team performing live again. That's amazing, man. Congratulations, dude. Hey, Dennis, what's up? Captain Slappy, what's up, man? How's it going? Arct Arctic, dude. Six months, let's go, man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Yeah, exactly, 8-Bit. That's a big upgrade, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so... Um, here we are, in Prestwick, right? But, oh, look at this, a couple of people here already. Nice, let's go. But, but, oh, it's new spawns. Nice, hey, buddy. Oh, all right, let's go. Thank you. Um, but let's zoom out and see if there's some weather. Ah, look at this. Yeah, there's some weather for sure. Now, lots of weather here. Man, look at this. Good thing this is, although, I gotta say, we probably had something like this when we crossed from Greenland to Iceland. Remember that? Because it was clouds a lot of the way. We actually had to go down to 6,000 feet eventually because of the icing concerns. Remember that? Um, so yeah, this looks kind of like that. Um, but today, it's Prestwick to Rotterdam, which is down here. Resubscribed for eight months. Hi. Well, hello. What's up, Brood? Thank you very much, man. Eight months. Let's go, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so yeah, it looks like a little bit of weather here, right, on our departure. Not much uh, over northern England. That may be a little bit, depends, I guess, on when we get here, because it looks like there's some weather here and some weather here, right? And there is a, an opening in between. But this opening is moving with the weather, right? So, because we, we're probably going to come down and then go east to Rotterdam. So if we catch this at the right time, we may be just in between the weather. But if not, if this gets here before we get there, then of course, we're probably going to see some weather. We don't know altitudes yet. We're just kind of, this is high level stuff, right? We just kind of start by looking at this. And of course, the weather could be closed up when we get to uh, Rotterdam. All right. So let's have a, a, a look now at the route that we're going to fly. So for that, uh, let me see here. I think, hmm, maybe not this one. Yep, this one though. So, this is one of the routes. Uh, let's see here. This is one of the routes that uh, that we had looked at last time. It was probably the route that we were going to fly. We had two routes that we looked at basically. And we had a whole departure out of there, right? Coming down uh, over, almost over Manchester. Menzazu just resubscribed Ooh. for two months. Menzazu, let's go, man. Thank you very much. Two months. Prime, appreciate that. All right. Um, and then we basically cut just north of London, right? We kind of come straight south to just north of London. This is because of the way the, the airways work uh, over England and over the channel. For seven months. Oh, Arwako, let's go, man. Seven months. Thank you very much for that Prime sub, buddy. Appreciate that very much. We kind of cut straight east. Uh, fly offshore here and do a little zigzagging because of the arrival procedure, which is basically a straight line, but it is part of the arrival, the Redfa 2 Alpha, I think it was, um, into Rotterdam. Rotterdam keeps you south here because Amsterdam is right here, right? So huge, huge airport in Skipo over here. Uh, so they kind of try to get you in and out via the south. Helps that the runway is already sort of oriented that way, right? That's what we had. Uh, we'll see if today this is going to be a good route or not, depending on the weather, right? Depending on the winds, too. Uh, this is, uh, let's see here, how long is this flight? Yeah. Oh, this has got the DC-6 here. Let's load up a different aircraft. Like the Turbo Arrow. There we go. 
yeah, it's a three hour flight. That's what we were estimating last time, right? Three hour flight if we fly at the current altitude of 11,000 feet. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. We'll see. But what I mean by that is uh, because it's a longer flight, we're going to be more exposed to wind or we're going to be exposed to wind for a longer time. So if there is a huge amount of wind at the higher altitudes, whatever, 16, 18,000 feet, which we could go to because we have an oxygen system, right? Uh, it may pay off to go much lower and go slower, but because we're not going to fa face as much wind, we may actually get there quicker. So we'll play with the altitude to see. But next, that's what we should look at is winds, right? And for that, we have a beautiful website that we like to go to called Windy. Windy.com. Uh, it's an awesome website with very, very accurate winds. We can put our route here through some plugins, but we don't even need to do that because it's pretty straightforward. We know we're coming down back from down here. So just south of Glasgow is Prestwick. So we're going to come down over England. Uh, turn east basically and hit Amsterdam that way. So this is what we're interested in. So surface wind looks like a bit of wind from the west right now. And by the way, Sposs, thank you so much for that, man. Four month streak at tier one. I appreciate that so much. Uh, Bryce, you absolutely can. You're going to be a little faster than me, but you absolutely can. Uh, you're just going to get to the destination a little faster or you can slow down, you know, during the flight. It's up to you, man. It's up to you. Not yet, Ewald. We're just talking about that right now, buddy. Look, we're just just deciding on the route. I don't even know if this is the route we're going to use. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so let's go up now in the altitude of the wind here and see what's happening. For eight right? months. Eight oh, months Mephiston, what's up, trips. buddy? Eight months. Tier one. Let's go. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. All right, let's go. Oh, get rid of this. Let's go up from surface to, say, 10,000 feet. There's fly level 100. Ooh, some awesome tailwinds here, huh? Literally, and look, not that bad of a, a crosswind until we get to about the time to turn anyways. So this is looking amazing for us uh, at 10,000. Let's go up higher. Here's 14,000. It's even better wind up here. But then you start to lose some of the tailwind down here. Look, if you go to 10,000, that wind reaches a little further to the north where we're going to be and blowing towards Amsterdam than at 14,000. At 14, you lose a little bit of that wind. Let's see if we go to 18. Wow, it gets a lot bigger or a lot better down here, but not as good on that corridor that we're going to be. We're not going to be as far south as London. Remember, we're going to be north of London going to Amsterdam. So we're just missing out on some pretty good winds here. Look, 42 knots. Whereas over here, you know, so north of London to there. Yeah, we're going to be about here. We're going to get 26 knots. Not bad. Not bad, but not as good as, you know, 40 something. All right. Um, just for my curiosity at 240, oh, 240, you get better here, but a little too high for us. We can go to 20,000 with this aircraft, so it's not going to make a difference. So that tells me that actually 10,000 might be the better altitude today. A little bit more crosswind here at, than at 14,000. So 14 is a little calmer here, right? But when we get here, let me see something. Hold on. Yeah. I mean, the difference is not that much. Look. So 26 at 14, because we're going to be just over here, right? Flying this way. 26 at 14. If I go to 10, that becomes 30. Four knots. I don't know that it's enough to go at that altitude. Now, let's look at the clouds and see, because maybe 14,000 is going to clear the clouds, whereas 10,000 might not, right? You guys remember how we do that. There's an awesome plugin in here for this. So install Windy plugin, right? We go down here to... Uh, I think sounding was actually the one I liked better last time. This is a skew T diagram. And so now, whoa, okay, I guess it decided to zoom in a lot. Interesting. Okay, so uh, let me put a uh, marker here. There we go. Ooh, all right. This is telling me, hmm, looks like clouds starting at 3,000 feet and going up. Okay. Okay, I can also, you know, it already shows clouds here, but I can turn this on without this plug-in. You can at any time just go to clouds, right? Okay. Hey, Schnars, what's up, man? How's it going? No route just yet, DC. That's what we're deciding on, right? Okay, uh, so looks like some clouds down here. Uh, I can animate this a little bit. Yeah, they're moving to the east as expected, right? But it looks like there's always going to be a little bit of rain, a little bit of clouds here. I like how this is adjusting. Look at how well this is adjusting with playing forward here. That's really cool. 
That's really cool. So I start with clouds at around probably 4,000 feet. Yeah, 40, 40, well, 4,100. Look, clouds come back down to 33, 31. Then they disappear. Okay. I don't know if they should have disappeared so quickly, but maybe because it looks like a hole there, right? Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All right. Uh, and out of uh, here, out of Prestwick, which is down here, I believe. I, th I thought it was around here. No, just south of Glasgow? Yeah, Prestwick, right here. Okay, cool. Yeah, I thought it was this little bay just southwest of Glasgow. Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, we're going to basically go this way. So let's look at the heavier stuff here. And let's see, we got heavy clouds at 3,000, but look, at uh, 12,000, no more clouds. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that's a little bit later, though. Ah, right now. Yeah, there we go. So, it does look like at 14,000, we may be a little more clear of clouds, doesn't it? Let me move it over here. Because I'm just... Clouds don't bother me as much as icing does. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Then down here. Yeah, then you get a little higher clouds down here. Uh, as we move down, let's see. Yeah. So I think 14,000 is going to be my, my altitude today. Because I every time I see these, I'm getting, if not clear of clouds, closer to being clear of clouds than, uh, than the other one, right? Hey, Aki, what's up, man? How are you? Oh, AK. Damn. Damn. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go, AK. <laughs> Maybe we should put a time on it. Maybe it should, that should only be for five or ten minutes. Ah. Okay, banned words. Banned words of the day. Clouds. All right, now, I could easily, easily be a pedant and say, well, you said clouds, which means I can use the singular version of that, right? And I, I know I'm saying the word, but let's not turn it on just yet. So technically, cloud, I could say. <laughs> yeah, Ninja, exactly. But I, I'm not going to be like that. So I can't say cloud or clouds. Canaron. All right, Kateron, that is a one-minute timeout. Oh, gosh. Ooh, interesting. That timer's a little too low there, huh? All right, all right, all right. Let's put it up here. All right, here we go. See you guys in a minute. And there it is. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Perfect, perfect. One, one minute gone. All right, so let's go. Uh, let's get Prestwick here. Where's that little bay? Here. Prestwick. Departure. Rotterdam. Arrival. Destination. And now we're going to use a little magic router here, right? Uh, to, let's see, all airways, and don't avoid our nav airways, because remember, we had a GTN 750 installed in the aircraft. Um, let's try this. All right, 
same route. Same route as before, but we're going to vary the altitude now just to confirm our expectations. I think 10,000 would be a little quicker um, than 14,000, but let's see. So the way we do that is I'm going to go to fuel report here and there's two hours and 56 minutes. This is my estimated time for this flight plan in the Aero 4 Turbo, which is what I have loaded, right? So let's change the altitude now and see what happens to 2 hours and 56. This was at 11,000. Okay, let's go to 10,000. All right, there it is. Errors in flight plan. Click here for details. Like the DCS violates... Uh, oh, okay, so there's a couple of altitudes. Uh, or Sorry, a couple of airways that whose minimum altitude is 11,000. Interesting. So that's why we can't go at 10. Another reason to go at 14. Let's just see what happens if we go at 14. By the way, I know I can't because I'm going east. But let's see here. 2 hours and 57. Okay, so yeah. A couple minutes slower, right? Not much. Collusion, thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate that very much. Um, Yeah, Bryce, uh-huh. No worries, man. How much were the fines for how long it was kept at press tweak? <laughs> Sin. Yeah, you're right. You're right. If you're going to mute yourself, please at least change the filter to sepia so it resembles an old silent movie. Oh, Captain Sepia, that's a great idea, dude. That's a great idea. Okay, Sticks. Okay, Sticks. <laughs> okay, Sticks. All right, so um, flight plan-wise, I think this is good. We just have to get a departure going now and an Purple arrival. Kona, and for that, Purple Kona. Let's go, buddy. Ayo, actually, actually, let's, go. let's do this. Let's do this. Purple Kona, thank you very much for those eight months at Tier 1. Let's go, buddy. And hey, yo. All right. There you go, Sticks. There you go, buddy. Hey, Riss, what's up, man? How's it going? It's good to see you, buddy. Ah, how do you change the altitude, KC? Are you talking about uh, flight... Or, sorry, little nav map? In the meantime, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click the airport and go show departure procedures for Prestwick. There we go. Uh, we need to check the wind. Uh, I can actually see the METAR just by hovering here. You guys can't, unfortunately, so I'm going to go to Sky Vector, but... You can do this in little nav map, uh, which is awesome. It uh, it's reading uh, METARs live, and it shows them to you. Um, so I already know what the wind is, but let's go to Sky Vector and have a look there. It's only fair that I show this to you guys, right? So there we go. Uh, we also have to put our flight plan in here, but we'll get there. So Prestwick currently winds two five zero at fourteen. Okay, what does that mean? Two five zero at fourteen. We're definitely going to use runway three zero. Right? And uh, let me see here. I want a departure. I can't remember which one I had. So I can just click here and see what they are, which is pretty awesome. Right? Ah, it was this. It was the Luco 1 Kilo. Yep. It was the Luco 1 Kilo. So let's load this. So I'm going to add this insert into flight plan. And now it's part of the flight plan. Little nav map. Amazing, amazing piece of software. Ah, Saladex. So um, right here little nav map you can go download it there it's free and it's amazing it's free and it's amazing by the way you know what i wish they would show here maybe they can and i just haven't turned it on look remember the red line here is our minimum safe altitude for terrain right it'd be nice if they put a minimum altitude for the airways that we have here so instead of having to change my flight plan altitude i could have just looked over here and seen Hey, there's a uh, airway over here that uh, has a minimal altitude, 11,000 feet. That would be pretty cool, I think. Maybe I can already do that, and I just don't know that it's a feature. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Samesies for Rotterdam. We're going to put an arrival in. I already know the arrival from last time. But let's again check on the weather and make sure what's happening is what's happening. So, back to Sky Vector. This time, we're going to look at Rotterdam. And winds 2-2-0 at 1-2. Okay, well, look at the runway. By the way, Sky Vector, I don't know if you saw, updated. So now you can zoom in a lot more than before. Yeah, it does make stuff grainy. But man, it's really handy sometimes, like this. So with this kind of wind, 2-2-0, we're definitely going to land on this runway here, right? Uh, which I don't know exactly what runway it is, but that's why we've got a little nav map. So we go over here, right-click, show arrival procedures. There we go. Uh, runway 2-4. Okay. So, uh, there you have an ILS, 
two ILSs for 108.24, so I believe that's one of those that we're going to fly, right? So let's pick one here or the other one. Looks like this one. Um, okay, just to see what kind of waypoints we have, because next I want to look at an arrival that gets us onto there. So looking at arrivals, look, you have a lot of different ones. But the one I wanted last time was Redfur, because we're flying past Redfur, or Redfa, sorry, up here, right? Um, and there is no Tulip or Tasha. So let's see this here. And look, it doesn't go all the way to the airport. Why? Probably because it's the only arrival coming from the West. Uh, this Redfa arrival, Redfa 2 Romeo. We'll look at the charts to be sure, but it's probably the only one from the West. And because it has to work for both runways, instead of deploy or delivering you like on final for runway uh, 06, they deliver you far enough, it's still south enough of Amsterdam that it's easier for ATC to handle that. But it gives you the flexibility of going to either runway. So we'll see how we need to link this to landing at runway 24. All right, let's look at charts then and figure that out. Hey, Char Day, what's up, man? Thank you very much for the follow. And the Burner King, what's up, guys? How's it going? Naga Bongia. How much fuel? I don't have unlimited fuel on. Uh, Bryce, I don't know what you need on the King Air. I would say in the King Air, uh, probably 60-70% fuel should do it. Not really sure, though. Not really sure. Hey, uh, Apit, press the sixes button on the toolbar in LLM. Uh, it's on the far right of the app. Okay, so... the Okay, are you talking about these here? So you're talking about turning on airways and seeing that down here. I know I can see it here. But will it show it down here? So let me see. Victor Airways. I don't think they show down here though, right? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. I don't know. I don't know. So let's go look at the charts and figure this out. There we go. There we go. Come on, baby. Don't need you need you okay okay there we go so rotterdam uh down here right you see england or the uk and france netherlands belgium germany so rotterdam is close to amsterdam so it's over here all right so let's click on it look at those charts don't need this anymore. Although, look at the elevation. Minus 14. Yeah, below sea level. Does anybody know Rotterdam's? Minus 11. All right. Okie dokies. So, uh, let's look at stars then, right? Show the overview. Yeah, okay. So, definitely coming from where we are. Basically going over Redfoot. There's only one way to get in. Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And the airport is over here. So it's definitely going to be this. So let's look at that chart and uh, figure it out. All right, here we go. So let's do one of these, right? Actually, why don't we do this? Even better. Even better. Okay, I'm not going to do the full briefing now. I'm just kind of looking to make sure that there's no way that it shows a connection to an approach. Looks like there isn't, right? It drops you off at Mesos and that's it. But Mesos is an initial approach fix. So I have some hope that we're going to see this in the charts, approach charts. So let's see. We're talking runway 24. Let's look at this first one, the ILS. Oh, and then there's a rot one right ILS. Oh, okay. Well, interesting. We'll look at that. All right. Let's see. Aha. Mesos right there. Right? So they link Mesos to the VOR. From the VOR, you do a procedure turn, interesting approach, and then land on the ILS. Hey, I like this. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Haha, <laughs> Riss. <laughs> Damn you. I, I look. You made me look. You made me look. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Dog's Breath. What's up, buddy? Sorry if I'm missing some hellos, guys. Um, You live close by to what? Rotterdam? David Lewis, what's up, buddy? Dikey Decimus is here, too. Uh, 6S button. Fourth from the right, I think. Okay, let me have a quick look. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. No, it doesn't. So, it does work on the main map, 
but it doesn't work for the flight plan. Real quick, guys, what we're talking about is, hey, I have a minimum altitude of 11,000 on a couple of airways early on in this trip, so basically right here. And I would like to see if there's a line that can be drawn here, just like the red line for terrain clearance. And this would be for airway clearance, however you want to call it. Um, and there's a 6S button here. So sorry, whoever suggested it earlier, I didn't understand. That's actually 6.5 um, because it's 6,500. What this is, is more of the minimum... Um, Actually, I forgot what Mora stands for. It's not minimal obstacle re... No. Minimum receiving altitude. I can't remember that. Anyways, it's these numbers here, which are some minimum numbers, but they don't have to... Uh, they don't look at terrain, I believe. Right? If it's a Mora, they don't look at terrain. Can't remember Mora, guys. Help me out. Minimum off-route altitude. So it is terrain. Okay, thanks, thanks. So it is terrain. So that means this here is the grid minimum grid altitudes for terrain clearance, just like these here are. Look right there. One 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 one. Let's get a, let's get a different one. One seven one six, right? One eight. You go to a mountainous area. You get five nine, right? That's what those are. But it's not airway minimal airway um, altitudes. Okay, still pretty cool. And uh, again, that tells me this is then the arrival for us, right? We're going to link it to the VOR ourselves if it doesn't here. Uh, and I think it might not, but we'll see. So I'm going to right click on it here in this list. Whoops, in this list and go insert into flight plan. Uh, arrival at six or arrival at two four. It even asks me. So it's arrival at two four. Oh, and look at that. Look at that. It already linked it. Oh, no, it did not. I thought it linked it with the VOR. That's actually what we're going to be doing, right? So let's take this route here. Oh, I thought I could just drag it. No, I guess not. OK, let's just add the VOR. Uh, let's see. Add VOR to flight plan. Oh, not there, though. <laughs> not there. All right. Oh, you know what? Hold on. If I look at the list here of options, I have add the VOR, uh, append. Nope, that didn't work. That didn't work either and got rid of my arrival. OK, never mind. Let me do that arrival again. There we go. All right. Uh, real deal. This is little nav map uh, exclamation point LNM. Here in chat is going to give you a link to go check it out or download and use it. It's pretty awesome. <clears throat> oh, really, Neil Test? What happened, man? Uh, exclamation mark, Dalmatian. There we go. A pick got it. Add the arrival and then add the approach. Yeah, let's, let's try that. Let's try that. So uh, it was the ILS 06. Sorry, uh, the ILS 24. Not the Yankee, although I want to look at the Yankee one. Remember that? Um, let's see. Insert approach. There we go. There we go. And now perhaps I can drag this to the VOR. I thought I could just click on it. I guess not. Did they get rid of that way to edit? Maybe weird. OK, I haven't changed my settings, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah, so does anybody know? Well, I suppose I could add it here, couldn't I? Or move it around? Let me see if I grab one of these. Can I move it around? No. Can't move it around. Can I move it up and down? No. Huh. OK. And by the way, we need to change this altitude, right? It needs to be like 15 or 13. Uh, considering the winds, 13 might be best. So let me quickly go to 13 here and see what we get. Three hours and seven. Whoa. Uh, let's go to 15. Oh, wait, 14. Three hours and seven. OK, the trip got longer because of the departure and arrival. That's why. And 15, three hours and seven. So it doesn't matter. So let's go 15. Let's go high, use our oxygen. Why not? Oh, right click and move up or down. OK, cool. So let's try that. So let me add the VOR to the flight plan. All right, there we go. It's not where I want it, but then I can come over here and move it down. Right click, uh, move selected legs up. Oh, it does not allow me to move it down. Interesting. It's control up or control down. 
But because I guess this is the arrival and then there's an approach, it doesn't allow me to input that in there. Hmm, that's interesting. Interesting. So, you know, by the way, this is the same thing in an aircraft's FMS or GPS. It doesn't allow you to change an arrival or an approach. Now, I know what we're trying to do is neither, right? What we're trying to do is after Mesos, which is the end of this arrival, and before EH-253, which is the beginning of this approach, we're trying to add a waypoint. So we're not actually editing the arrival or the approach. It's just an in-between. But I guess Little Nav Map doesn't see it that way. Maybe? Yeah, exactly, Mechanical. I, I saw the shortcut, but if you do that, uh, you guys can't see it here, but when I right-click, it also it's one of the two options in there, right? Move selected legs up, which is control up, or move selected legs down, control down. But the control down for moving legs down is grayed out because this is an, an arrival and then an approach. So it doesn't let me do it. Wait, the vertigo. Which one is that? Nice attack you. Expand the approach and right click and add the transition. So, okay. Let me see here. Uh, expand the approach. There it is. Transition. Oh, I see. So. Do I then... Ah, insert... Oh! Living and learning! Look at that! Look at that! That is beautiful! Oh! Whoa! 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 Thank you very much! Thank you very much! Uh, Sander, appreciate that, buddy! That was awesome! Yeah, it's, it's an amazing bit, piece of software. All right, so I think we have our flight plan, right? Looks to me like we do. All right, cool. Let's save this and uh, put it in the bot. Oh, look at this. I have to create a new folder because now we have August. August, woo! Gonna celebrate one year of stream. What should I do? What should I do to celebrate one year? What do you guys think? What do you guys uh, think? Uh, hey, I'm also going to save this as a Microsoft Flight Sim uh, 2020 flight plan. I'm going to put a start close to mine here. So it looks like 55 or 56 or 57. Okie dokie. Uh, when you save as a Microsoft Flight Sim plan now, it uh, allows you to select a start position, which is always nice. Okay, let's go with uh, 57. Perfect. Perfect. August. And save it right there. Cool. Yeah, Riz. What, uh, what event is that going to be? 24-hour marathon stream. Kilo. Could do that. Could definitely do that. Giveaways. For sure. For sure. Turn up. <laughs> the whole stream auto-tune. Transatlantic, Kyber, that's a good one. We could do a 24-hour one with the DC-6 using Celestial Navigation. That's right. I'm about to start teaching you guys how to do Celestial Navigation. Anybody interested? Hot tub stream? <laughs> oh my god. All right. All right. Review of old streams and highlights. Sin, that's a good one. That is a good one. I got some early ones we could look at. Oof, some early ones. Circumnavigate the world. Ooh, man, in 24 hours. Or maybe not, maybe just do it in however long it takes, right? To anyone gun salute. Uh, Kaitak flight must do as uh, it's the a Paralympic starts in two weeks' time. Oh, Skippo in Hong Kong? Oh, that's awesome, Captain Seppi. Hey, were you able to do it? Like, did you find it? Did you find it? That's always, always. Always going to be a question when you do Celestial Navigation and you're going to an island, right? It's like, eh, did you make it? Hey, listen, it's hard, man. It is hard. You guys are going to enjoy learning it because it's so satisfying when you get it right. But I mean, even uh, Amelia Earhart and her navigator got it wrong, apparently, right? And didn't find the island, Howland Island, that they were flying to and uh, were lost forever. Forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see here. 
Okay. How about we do a... Um, like this. I'm getting the file ready for you guys, all right? We're going to have a zip file with both the little nav map and the flight sim flight plan for you. Um, this is from EGPK to E... HRD. There it is. Let's upload it. Now, um, actually, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't know that I can upload to the site yet. I haven't tried uploading a pack myself to the new website. Rock. Uh, or Kirkness, if you're here, Kirk. Can I do that? Or do I just give it to you guys? Which uh, one do I do? In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go update the bot, our bot, for mm -hmm, um, the route. The reroute. There it is. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, plane is correct. Maybe? Maybe that's the... Oh, I think that's the normal arrow. Hold on a second. Let me get the... Let me get the route done. All right. Don't need this. Okay. That's all correct. Looks good. All right, everybody. Route is on. You can do an exclamation mark for route. Please. Let's see. Which one is this? Yeah, okay, cool. This works. No, so plane is also... Oh, route not working. What? Stream elements, come on. I saved it. What do you mean? What do you mean? So route not working. Let's wait a minute. Oh, no, it did work. Oh, weird. Wait, when Curious and Dextinator did it, was it too close to the previous one from Naughty Gnome that it didn't display that? Is that what happened? Is that what happened? Okay. Too soon. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I thought the timeout was shorter than that, but... Whoa, Bryce, that's a lot of crashes, man. I hope, uh, I hope it goes better today. There we go, Lefty. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, scenery is a default scenery. Uh, so I'm turning that on too, just in case somebody gets here, hasn't heard it, or uh, isn't paying attention right now. Hey, 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 you out there, not paying attention. What are you doing? Are you working or something? Shame on you. I'm not going to use this uh, for now, at least. Okay. So... Uh, Rock, I didn't hear, man. Can you update uh, or upload stuff to our website? I wasn't paying attention. Sue me. Okay, you asked for it. Sorry, I'm doing my AM updates. Everybody's apologizing. That's Hey, come on. Seriously, guys. That's a joke. Oh, Dalmatian is retired. Yay, good for you, man. Misco. Guys, it was a joke. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes, we are, Scots. That's why, that's why we keep looking at live weather, right? Speaking of which, speaking of which, let's uh, let's see something here. Okay, let us have a quick look at this amazing website avwx.info uh, Let's see here Sanjay, what's up, man? Are you talking to Captain Sappy? Hold on. What is Captain Sappy doing here? Or are we talking about Celestial Navigation? Ah, yeah, we're talking cell nav. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, sounds like you found land then, Captain Sappy. Riss, seriously, you made me... I read it again. I read it again! 
Haha, <laughs> Riz, there we go. Bom dia. All right, so we don't need any of this stuff, but we do need stuff from here. Okay, so let's look at uh, significant weather. Uh, flat level, yeah, there we go. This sounds pretty good. Let's choose here a uh, what time. Uh, well, it's going to be the 12 Zulu for sure. For sure. Okay, cool. So a little bit of weather on departure like we expected. Maybe some over the channel and that weather. Remember, that was just west of the UK. Well, I mean, it's already touching the UK, but west of where we were going to be, which is moving in, uh, isolated, embedded thunderstorms, never fun. So another reason why we don't want to be in clouds today, if we can avoid it. Um, but there might be times where we can't avoid it, right? Okay, and then, uh, yeah, for sure some weather on arrival here. Same thing, isolated, embedded thunderstorms, uh, starting at whatever altitude up to 30,000 feet. Yeah, so 32,000 feet on these. So. We hope not to fly into one of these today. And honestly, in the real world, if you don't have weather radar and XM weather and all that stuff, uh, yeah, you sometimes go without knowing. It's not wise, but people do it, right? Okay, uh, let's see. Anything else interesting to look at? Yes, icing. Okay, let's have a look at icing. Uh, select time. It's going to be, let's look at 12-hour forecast. Uh, flight level 100 to 150. Hey, not bad. Okay, a little bit there. Light to moderate, there. We may not see that, but uh, nothing then over here, which sounds pretty good to me. Oh, here we go, Rock. Okay, yes, you can upload. Okay, cool. Let me drop the file in Discord for you. Uh, it's going to be mods. Please. There it is, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Scott, yeah, site's free, man avwx.info uh it's there's not a better site for european aviation weather that i found this was recommended to me by a viewer here so thank you very much for that let's see turbulence sure we'll look at turbulence 12 hours and flight level 100 to 150. yeah okay okay not too bad not too bad i mean a little bit here and there but not too bad <laughs> and hanging horizontal. So, not that great weather now in Rotterdam. Yeah. Oh, are you in Rotterdam? Yep. Are you in Rotterdam, buddy? Volcanic Cash Advisory. Uh, I mean, probably not, but always good to look at. No reports from London. No reports from Toulouse. Great. Storm forecast. I mean, we can look at it, but it's going to be what we expect it's going to be. Right? Oh, maybe not. I thought they were going to expect storms here with those isolated CBs, but I guess not. Okay. Okay. Lightning, turbulence, icing. We looked at all this stuff. I mean, didn't look at lightning, but don't have to. Interesting notams, huh? Um, don't have to look at METARs. That was Sky Factor for us. And that's it. Okay. All right. I'm good there. Let's load up. Oh, nice. Lots of you guys already here. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Uh, here, I'll pick maybe... Can I pick here? Here? Oh, before. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can still do it. Look, even though the dot is under this dialog, you can still pick it. Set as departure. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. All good here. Hey, hey. Gerald, what's up, man? And Ricardo. And Ewald. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your uh, your invites there. Let's go. Bom dia, Sil. Tudo bem? I'm digging, digging the music, digging the music, digging being back, man. This is great. This feels right, you know? It's great. Oh, hoo hoo, hoo 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 hoo. As promised. Oh, nice. I love these, these early cameras, you know, where before you, the, you hit ready to fly. I think they do a great job. Peter, what's up, man? Hey, Jefferson is here. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Actually, Jefferson, I was going to fly out of Falcon Field today, but today's ferry flight. We got to get this done. We have two more legs to go before we get to Zell, I'm say, right? Uh, today's to Rotterdam. Next Monday, we're doing every Monday, all the Mondays we could. Um, and so, two more flights. Today's and next Monday's, and we're done. But I wanted to fly out of Falcon Field today because I know you updated for SU5, uh, or at least I thought, it, I thought he did, right? 
No, I, I. The root is here on the bot, right there, just up on the chat. And Rock is uploading it to our website. So it's going to be on the website in just a couple minutes. And what's on the website is a zip file with the Little Nav map and the flight sim flight plans in case uh, those are useful to you. Yeah. So, anyways, I want to go back to Falcon Field, man. Want to go back to Falcon Field. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be appearing on stream soon, and I'm gonna find some sort of good excuse flight to go in or out or both uh, of Falcon Field. And mucho te quiere exactly. Hence my concern for icing, but it looks like icing is not gonna be a problem for us in the levels that we're gonna be at. Which reminds me, you know what's wise? We looked at icing for our flight levels. There was almost nothing. Why don't we look at icing in different altitudes, right? Especially, especially altitudes we're going to cross on the way up and down and see if that's a problem. Okay, great. No problem here. Maybe a tiny bit there. Uh, not bad. If we go to fly level 100 to 150, there's a little more there. Yeah, yeah. And what about above us? And no icing there too. So, okay, we're doing great. Icing-wise, we shouldn't have a problem today. Nice. Nice. A few fixes. Okay, that's awesome, Jefferson. Actually, Jefferson, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, can you tell us what, uh, what they are? Like, what, as a scenery maker, what did SU5 affect? What did you have to uh, to do? So guys, welcome. By the way, I don't have my red, look, my red flashlight uh, installed yet. I, I've i been keeping the mods as uh, minimum mods just to make sure there's nothing causing a crash, right? I know that's just changing a DDS. That ultimately, that's what that mod does. It changes the DDS to a different DDS to allow you to have a red flashlight instead of a white one. That's more appropriate for nighttime. Pilots usually carry a flashlight that you can do both, right? There's a little red lens that you can retract, so it's white during the day. That usually works better during the day for dark places. And then you can put the lens on and boom, it's now red for nighttime. Or nowadays, you just have different LEDs, one red and one white, right? Anyways, it'd be cool if we could have both here in the sim, but we don't. So there's a mod that makes it red, but I don't, I don't have it on right now. Ah, interesting, Mort. Okay. So, even scenery LODs were affected by this. Uh, maybe one of the mods could post a link to Falcon Field on Sim Market here on Twitch chat. Yes, it's really great and worth every cent. I fully agree. I fully agree. Um, Rock, I know you're uploading to the website, but if you can, buddy, can you go get that link from Sim Market and add it here to Zbot? Ah, Ewald, yes. Uh, default, I think it's left alt l turns it on same key turns it off okay in a whoa whoa rock listen um let's not mixture or mix pleasure and 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 work buddy let's <laughs> oh weird ninja weird falcon field is so good so good uh Jefferson here on ch in chat is the guy behind Falcon Field. Yes, the author is here. We had a whole stream where he showed us Falcon Field. He actually even included my logo in the little uh, sort of TV screen that's Either at the entrance of the airport. And he just keeps just rotating, you know, different two images. Runs better than mine at yeah. The moment. So frustrating. Oh, Dieter, I'm sorry so to hear, man. Uh, listen, I was there all of last week, buddy. All of last week. Uh, finally was able, literally... Uh, was up most of last night working it, trying to get it to work for today, and finally was able to get it to work. Um, so I know I know your pain, man. I hope yours resolves quicker than mine. I really do. I really, really do. So thanks again, by the way, for the uh, two months of uh, tier one subs. Thanks, man. Teddy, Hancock, and Leonard, or Leonard, probably Leonard. <laughs> hey, thanks for the follows, guys. Yeah, that didn't do anything for me, Purple, but I'm glad you're mentioning it here because it seems to help some people, so maybe it'll help Dieter. Right? Yeah, I know. Triple Seven, it's incredible, man. What he did with Falcon Field is incredible. All right, guys, look. Here it is. Right, remember, as the aircraft was stopped for quite a while here in Prestwick, it got an upgrade. Um, this is to meet some of the, the requirements, actually, to fly in Europe. So remember, this aircraft was in the United States... Old school radios were installed, right? Uh, old school navigation, basically. And uh, 
Europe has more uh, requirements and stricter requirements than the FAA. Some of those requirements the FAA is going to get to, and they have dates, right? Because, look, a lot of these things require planes to be modified. And when you, when you do stuff that requires a large fleet to be modified, you have to stop and think that, for example, let's say that uh, the PC-12 is going to have to be upgraded, right? Um, typically, that upgrade is going to be offered by the manufacturer. So Pilatus themselves, they have service centers that can do this. And often, uh, two or three uh, um, FBOs, uh, not FBOs, but maintenance centers, the big ones, because there are some out there that are big, right? And they handle all kinds of different OEMs. Um, kind of like a, uh, uh, you know, a car shop that can work on many brands. It's harder to do that with aircraft because there's way more specific stuff to that plane that you have to know. You have to have mechanics trained on. You have to keep parts for. But they're out there. And so some of these big ones will do it too. So let's say that for the PC-12 fleet, there's five to eight places around the world that can do this. And let's say that each mod is going to take five days, right? They can only do one plane at a time. It's five days. Then they get the next aircraft in. Well, I don't know if you know, but the PC-12 fleet is in the thousands strong. Well, it's not 2,000, but I think they're getting close. I remember when they passed 1,000 a long time ago. So there's a lot of PC-12s that need to be upgraded. And let's say that this is going to be mandatory, right? The aircraft is going to need a mod. And let's say that, look, the newer ones already have this. So it's only half the fleet. It's only 900 aircraft, but there is only eight service centers that can do it. They can only do one at a time. It takes five days. You start to see a side of aviation that a lot of people don't think about. And that's why some of these mandates... They become mandates, but they have a clock on them. And they say, listen, it's going to be mandated January 2024. That sounds like a long time, but that means the early planes have to start the upgrades now to have enough time to get that upgrade done, right, before that date. And of course, these dates, for the big ones, the regulatory authorities tend to work with the manufacturers, not just the manufacturers of planes, but manufacturers of avionics, to make sure that they can meet these dates too, right? Are you going to be able to rock or call it? Are you going to be able to have an upgrade for the PC-12? In that case, it's Honeywell. Um, to have enough parts to do the upgrades in the timeline that we're considering. So, pretty amazing stuff if you think about a side of aviation that a lot of people don't get to, to think about, right? Or even be a part of. CMDR Commander Decode. Decode. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Nine, nine months. months! Welcome back, Fabio. Thank you, man. Thank Hello, you, thank you, thank everyone. you. Oh, a hype train is closed, is what it said. Oh, nice. Ooh, a second hype train. Nah, uh, it's too much all right so not only do we have a gtn 750 which can meet all of the yasa requirements that are were missing for the aircraft but he also installed a gtn 650 so we have two gps's now but it also means uh more control of the radios i believe i believe than before easier control at least we still have an adf old school adf and a dme um but other than that, all of our comms and nav are now going to be done via GTN 750 and GTN 650. Pretty cool. Pretty cool that we got to fly the plane with the old stuff first, get it to Europe, and then Europe's like, yes, welcome in. Now you can't fly, right? So get the upgrade, um, and now we can. Pretty awesome. So, yeah, Kozaki. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, eh, there comes a time where stuff like that doesn't, doesn't work anymore. It's like, listen, you need to upgrade. Yes, Commander. Pretty awesome. It's beautiful stuff. Uh, thanks to Pi Mark. Uh, this is a press copy that I have. Uh, so, Mark, thank you very much, man. I think your name is Mark. Uh, I'm a big fan. Um, the community has their thoughts uh, in uh, the subscription model, right? Or the one-time price. Um, but I, again, I don't really comment on stuff like that. I typically just show what the instrument can do or whatever mod, plane, add-on can do what the limitations are, what some of the issues are. Uh, and, you know, different people have different pockets and they can decide for themselves if it's worth or not what uh, what is being charged. Uh, Bryce, they're from the southwest, buddy. So we're going to go um, runway, whatever this runway was. I can't recall now. Looks like uh, runway 30, maybe. Yeah, I think it's runway 30. Uh, sorry, it winds from the west, not southwest. They're from the west. I think they were 250. Let me see here. What are they now? 260. So yeah, they're only 40 degrees off of runway 30. All right. All right. Thank you, gamer. Appreciate that, buddy. All 
Yeah, DC, I agree. This is, again, back from a time where human factors wasn't even a set of words you could use. I mean, you could, and people would be like, what? What are you talking about, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lefty, I think that's right. I think that's a lifetime. Uh, right, 25 a year or 75 forever. So, we'll put our flight plan in it now, and uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you'll get to see how, how cool uh, this can be. And it's not for everybody. It's, it's everything, right? It's not for everybody, but I think it's pretty pretty darn cool. And I think it's cool that there's a lot of OEMs. Uh, OEMs, right? Just fly to me as an OEM. Anybody making aircraft out there, I see as an OEM, just like in the real world. Cessna is an OEM. Dassault is an OEM. Boeing is an OEM. So for me, Just Flight is an OEM. And there's OEMs supporting this stuff, giving you that option. Uh, which, by the way, if you don't know, you can have it all changed. Uh, oops. You can have it all changed over here. Right, so you have this page here that, look, GPS GTN 750, but you can change it up. Here's the old school stuff that we had when we arrived in Europe, which I love that this option is there, right? Then we have the 530 with the 430, uh, dual GPS, just the 530, or the GTN 750 with the GTN 650. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome to have these options, and I keep clicking the wrong switch. Lefty, uh, same way as before, buddy. When you're in the, the world map, there's an option on the bottom to load or, uh, or save. <laughs> Steve. Oh, Derpex, wouldn't that be cool, man? Wouldn't that be cool? That jukebox was for this, these two instruments right here. This is the GTN 750. Let's get it on. And you'll see, there it is. Initializing systems and the 650, which is basically... The smaller version of the GTN 750. It's the same stuff in a smaller screen. Normally, you would have one or the other, depending on how much panel space you have. They're both as capable as the other. Uh, but obviously, this one is easier to use because it can show more. The map looks nicer because it's bigger. And some people will have this with a secondary, smaller because it's cheaper, as the backup. I love it, Iceberg. It's great. I love the real thing. Guys, I've been flying the GTN 750 since the prepare days. Remember that Flight 1 had this out and I had it on the uh, on the A2A Cessna 172. Remember that? Or 182? I don't remember what it was. I think it was 182. I don't know. But I had it in that aircraft and so I used to fly over Orbix, amazing Orbix. Remember large region scenes that they had for the sim? And I'd fly over in California because uh, it made the sim look amazing. It made the sim look kind of like what Flight Sim does naturally, right? It was all satellite pictures, really worked well by Orbix. And, uh, and they had a lot of objects, like antennas, you know, stuff that you didn't have in Prepared without that. So I remember using the GTN 750 that Flight 1 had uh, for that. This one is completely self-coded. That one used to use the GTN 750 trainer, the real trainer that Garmin had available for you to download. You could download that for free, because it used to be free. And then that would be what Flight 1 made work in the sim. Today, Garmin charges for that trainer. It's no longer available, so I don't know that how Flight 1 is handling that. Yeah, right. So, you have uh, COM and NAV 1s here, and COM and NAVs 2 here. At least I think you have NAV. Yes, you do. You have to push to get NAV. Okay. All right, so... Uh, it's eating up our battery, right? So, we could start the engine or... Uh, well... We're not doing ATC today, but normally you, you know, get the battery on, get your IFR clearance um, and do those things. Then start your engine when you have clearance because you're in Europe. You can't just start your engine whenever you want to. Or I believe that also depends on the country. RIS. Seriously, RIS. God, every time I haven't been looking at chat that much. And every time I look, there's a RIS message. Uh, yeah. Bryce, there's a MSFS pics and vids in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Live weather, Lefty. This right here is live weather. Yep. Yepers. I do have uh, Unreal Weather installed, and I believe working. I haven't tested that. But live weather seems to be doing the job. All right, so why don't we just get the engine started, right? And uh, we'll go from there. And we're going to use the in-sim checklist, which is really, really good. So, parking brake is set. Okay, gear selector down. 
avionics are well these i don't know but i i don't think you can turn these off i think when the battery is on they're on um but everything else is off the me is off uh ndb is off or adf is off okay mixture is lean magnetos are off okay battery switch to on because we were going to check a few things fuel quantity is one we need to add some fuel how much fuel let's look at little nav map little nav map has a pretty good prediction nowadays for what we need so let's see uh, okay, looks like uh, usable fuel. Okay, here. All right, ten gallons. Uh, it takes a few. If we start with forty-nine, so it looks like forty-nine gallons is what we need for this trip. So let's do that. Let's put in forty-nine gallons. Twenty either side. Uh, we're a little short. Yep, a little short there and very short there. Okay, so twenty gallons on either side. Let's do that. Twenty. Oh no, 49. Sorry, I need 25. 24 and a half. 24 and almost a half, so that works too. There we go. I'll go I'll go with that. All right, cool. I want to use minimum fuel just to check and see how accurate this is going to be. What do you mean by that? Well, look, little nav map says fuel destination 10 gallons. So let's see if that works. Let's see how well our aircraft performance file for the turbo arrow for little nav map is working. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, uh, fuel quantity should be, yeah, just over 20, about 25 either side. That looks good. All right, I should probably be doing this, right? All right, uh, annunciator panel check. Yeah, there are three are working. Let me press the key here. Yeah, five are working, perfect. Battery switch off, because uh, now we're going to do the walk around. We're not doing that today, so I'm going to keep the battery on. Flight controls free and correct. Let's make sure. So... Okay, and down. All right, they're definitely free. Up and down. Okay, good. And the tail. Up and down. And my rudders are free. Very good. All, all working. Ah, flight plan is uploaded. All right, Rock. Thank you very much. Guys, if you haven't done this yet, you need to go to our website and check it out. Our website is awesome. Website is awesome. Created by the mods, uh, Kirkness is the big voice behind it, uh, or the big brains behind it, but uh, all the mods have helped tremendously with the website. It's theflyingfabio.com, looks amazing. Go to downloads, uh, and you can go flight plans, and look at this, ferry flight, flight plan, EGPK, EHRD, it's there. It is there and ready to go. Maybe we need to order this by date. Huh, Rock? I don't know if that can be done or not. Yes, yes, Rock, I agree. I agree. But hey, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Yeah, Larger, uh, are you looking for the route? I have a command here for route if you just want to read the route. But if you want to download the files, just go to the website. Ah, Rock, yeah, I figured you were, Betty. That's why I, I asked that way. Okay. Thanks, man. Appreciate you trying that. Free and correct. Flaps. Flaps are going to be zero. Huge runway for takeoff. I'm not going to use flaps for takeoff today. Elevator trim, neutral. Yeah, neutral. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Hey, look, it's done. Let's go to exterior flight plan. Not really. We're not going to do this. But I want to make sure that I don't have... Hey, this time I remembered. Tie downs and tow bar are disconnected. Very good. And chocks also. So all that stuff is good. Control surfaces. I checked from the inside. I'm going to say okay. Lights gonna say okay tie downs removed chocks removed tow bar removed engine actually hold on i didn't check tow bar where was the tow bar ah there i did check tow bar okay i just didn't know it was called tow bar engine oil door that's up there it's closed and it's also on the little tablet right oil quantity so we have to look over here because we can't look out there right oil quantity 6.6 .6 quarts it's not full not full because it remembers right from last few flights that we've done but, in that case, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Do, 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 do. Hey, anybody out there enjoying Windows 11? I'm enjoying Windows 11. I haven't used it that much yet. Really brand new to it. But, so far so good, man. I'm really enjoying it. Um, there's a couple of things I can tell still need to be optimized. It's nothing crazy. But, uh, man, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <clears throat> Wanna wait it out until release? Okay, yeah. 
<coughs> oh, Tulix, yeah? It's tempting, I know, right? Hey, two cats, what's up, man? Deadhead. That's awesome. So, guys, what are we talking? We're talking looking at the manual, right? <clears throat> oh, no bookmarks for this one. Okay. So, where do we go? We go to limitations. Limitations, usually, uh, section one, I believe. So, let's see here. Engines, okay. Uh, fuel, oil. Oil capacity is eight. Okay, so that's one of the things I wanted to know is because I can see I have 6.6 .6 quarts, right? But out of what? Okay, it's out of eight. All right. So now let's look at limitations and see what the minimum oil should be. And look, if you have the option, why not add oil right now, right? But what I'm saying is let's say that oil is too expensive here in Prestwick or you can't find oil and you didn't have any with you. On a crossing like this, you would always carry oil with you. With you. Um, but I'm just saying, right? You need to know these things. So where do we go? Power plant limitations. Okay, maybe here. Oil pressure, oil temperature. Okay, fuel pressure. No. Okay. It should be by itself, but I don't know for sure. So I'm going slowly over the options here. Okay, maneuver limits, flight load, types of range, fuel limitations, no. Noise level, placards. Okay. Okay, hey! Hello, my dude! Hey, Two-Tone, what's up, buddy? Great to see you, man. Great to see you. Uh, okay, nothing here. No, no. 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 Okay, maybe... Oh, no. Okay. All right. Wage, all default scenery today, buddy. I mean, the bot told you that, but I just saw you ask it. I, li I like to answer those things, man. You know? All right, guys, I may have missed it. <clears throat> I didn't read every single thing in here, but I didn't see it. Uh, it is an older manual. It's from 78, 79 revised. Um, it's possible that... You know, back then they wouldn't list it, because normally you find that stuff in here. But it's also possible that I'm just skipping too fast and not seeing it. Yes, I, I'm just looking at the units, right? Because if I see gallons, that may be it. I'm going to stand pad. Yeah, DC, that's always what I do. Oh yeah, I passed it. Where? It's always what I do, DC. This time. I didn't have a choice. Well, I suppose I could have reinstalled Windows 10. I figured it might be better to go to Windows 11. Uh, so not here, right? No, it's unusable fuel here because I'm talking 2.5 gallons, like too little. I'm expecting like six, five uh, gallons or something like that. Oh, sorry, quartz, not gallons, it's quartz. We're not flying a radio engine. That would be gallons of oil. Hey, lazy pilot. What's up, man? I don't see it, guys. Okay. All right, fine. Uh, in that case, I'm going to refill just to be safe. And let's see. It should get to eight. Yep. There it is. Wait. Did that little noise? Did that happen when I refilled? Ah, do you hear that? That's awesome. All right, Bryce. Sounds good, man. How does the detail work in handling uh, the plane? Wage, pretty much the same. We've talked about this before. Pretty much the same as um, as the regular tail, the standard tail. Um, you can get in some high speed stall angles where the T-tail gets in the shadow of the main wing, aerodynamically speaking, and that could be a problem, but it should never be in those conditions. And it's really unusual for a plane like this to get into those conditions. If you're an F-16, it's easier to get into those high, uh, high speed stalls. And people are like, wait, what, you have to be slow to stall to be stalling. No, stall just depends on angle of attack, not speed. Think about that. Usually, the easy way to get to the angle of attack that stalls a wing is by flying slow. That's why you associate stall with slow flying. But you can, all, you can stall at any speed. If you have enough control authority to get the plane into the angle of attack that stalls the wing. Oh, there we go, Mountain Man. Yeah, I hear you, man. All right, battery's coming down, guys. We got to get this engine started. So, cabin door. 
Cabin door is definitely closed and latched. And, whoa, and latched. Okay, cool. And baggage door is closed also. I can't really see it from here. I'm going to take the tablet's word for it. Yeah, it's closed. All right, so now I can do the before engine start. Let's get rid of this guy. So all circuit breakers are in. Yes, looking very nice. Alternate air is off. That's up, so that's correct. RPM, uh, full forward. And fuel selector, fullest tank. I don't think, yeah, we have it in off. So let's see, fullest tank is going to be either or. Let's go left as we usually do. Okay. Um, fuel selector is on. Okay, engine start. Cold engine. So throttle, half travel. All right. Battery switch is on. Alternator is off, so let's turn it on. There we go. Hey. I forget that you have to manually advance this. Beacon coming on. Any collision light comes on together with it. Navigation lights on, so let's turn nav lights on. There we go. Ah. Fuel pump, low or use primer button. I like to use the primer button. So we're going to use the primer button and watch the fuel uh, pressure here. We're going to use it today. Uh, what's the outside air temperature? It's 20 or so. Yeah, 18. Yeah, we only need it for about three seconds. So here we go. Okay, now move the mixture to rich. There's our fuel pressure. And three. Okay, cut off. Clear prop. Nobody out there. Okay, let's do this. Crank it. Feed it fuel. And she started. Okay, very good. Very good. Let's keep that RPM close to 1,000. Or 1,200, actually, is what they ask for. So that's done. Uh, I actually didn't use the fuel pump, remember, because of the primer, right? As she warms up, the RPM is going to creep up, so we got to bring it back. Okay, we got this, we got this, ignition start, oil pressure is present. Okay. All this, oh, 1500 is what they want, okay, alright, that's a little high, but okay. We check the oil pressure, so that's it. Next is going to be taxi. There's 1500, watch that uh, oil temperature starting to come up, very good. Oh, interesting, the click spot is only here now. I thought you could come down here and click this to close. I guess not. All right. Okay, so now with the alternator on, we should be producing power. And we're going to see that here in the alternator amps. And it should be about 35. So, yeah, looking good. I'm also going to get the uh, instruments lights on because it's raining. I'm going to definitely enjoy having some lights there. And now we need to put our flight plan in, right? So leave the engine at uh, 1400, 1500. So she warms up nicely. She's almost there. And while that's happening, it also ensures that we're providing enough electricity via the alternator. Um, we can see that here in the A meter too, right? But this ensures that we're providing enough electricity to be charging the battery too. It is wage. Uh, it's definitely going to tax the battery a little bit more. But there's a lot of planes. I would say most aircraft out there can be started with the avionics on. All right. So, we don't need this checklist for a while because we're going to be putting in a flight plan, right? So, let's go to flight plan and start typing it in. It takes a second, by the way, look, to that set origin button to become available, right? That's normal for my usage of uh, this avionics. So, EGPK says Prestwick right there, so that's correct. Set destination. It's going to be Holland, Rotterdam. Duplicate found, so hit enter. And it's going to say, which one? Interesting that it found two. I have Navigraph installed, so perhaps it has to do with that. They're both the same, so it doesn't really matter. Right? There it is. Now, add and route waypoints. Okay, so now we need to look at our route. Can somebody do route in chat so I can just copy from there, please? <clears throat> I know we're going to have a departure, but we're not going to type in the departure just yet. We're just going to type the waypoint where our end route portion starts. Waypoint where our end route ends, and then we'll link uh, arrival or departure and arrival after that. There it is. Thank you very much, DC. All right, so we go to Luco is our first waypoint. Although, yeah, that does have the, the airways. Perfect. Luco uh, in the United Kingdom. That's correct. Enter. There it is. Then we're going to pick up an airway from Luco, Zulu 248. So to do that, click on Luco. And then go load airway. This is a feature that only the paid version, because 
there's a free version of this GTN 750 out there for you to use. But the paid version allows things like, for example, using Airways, which is huge. Now, we're going to take this to Osmag. It's the only other option. Okay. There it is. We're going to load this. Then, at Osmag, we're going to hop on Tango 256. So, click that. Load Airway. Tango 256. Look, other Airways going through it also. But it's Tango 256. And we take that until DCS. We know that acronym. DCS. And there it is. It linked again. Load. Now, from... Whoops. Gotta scroll down. From DCS, we're gonna hop on November 57. Load Airway. November 57, one of the many airways that go by DCS. And this one has a several options here. We're gonna take it until POL. There it is, which is Pole Hill. VOR. Load that. Scroll it down. At Pole Hill, we're gonna hop on. Uh, let me see here. Mike 605 to DTY. Load Airway, Mike 605 to DTY. There it is. Okay, that's looking good too. Load that. From DTY, Lima 608. Several Airways. Lima 608 to CLN. Actually, it's going to be to Redfa. But Redfa is not here because I guess Redfa isn't part of the Airway. I thought it was. Let me look at that real quick. So I'm going to put our uh, our route in here. Let me do this. Flights, new flight, manual input, Prestwick, Rotterdam, don't auto-generate, just create. And then I'm going to go into type route and put in our, there we go, save that. All right. So CLN is over here. That's why from Clacton, we need the Redfa, which starts at Redfa. But look, there's also the airway. Uh, L620, I think it was, or no? Tulip, where's Redfa? I thought Redfa was over here. No? On 620? Hold on. Hold up. Redfa. Yeah, look, it's on the uh, 071 magnetic, right? Which is this one, I thought. Yeah, Redfa right there. Okay, cool. So we actually have Lima 620 to Redfa. Oh, sorry. I forgot to uh, turn it back on. There we go. So look, from here, we're going to take Lima 620 to Redfa, and then we're going to do the Redfa to Romeo, I think it was. All right, cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. Colorebo. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate that tier one sub. Hey, by the way, SARS, Matty53, Naslin, and Run Leovit Run. Thank you very much for the follows, guys. All right. So let's put that into Lima 620, right? So it is to CLN. This one is to CLN. Whoops. Nope. CLN. There we go. That's more like it. Load that. And now from CLN. Lima 620, yep, to Redfa, yes, yes, me likey, load that, then, then, uh, we can save, by the way, this is pretty cool, look, you see how it offsets all the waypoints that are under a certain airway, that's because you can click here and collapse uh, all airways, look at that, isn't that cool, that's pretty cool, I think that's pretty cool. Now, too bad you can't just open up one. You have to collapse all of them. But I like that. Me likey. <clears throat> hey! Cold Nebo! Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that sub again. And uh, yeah, thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the support. Pretty close, huh? 777, not bad. Not bad, buddy. Not bad. All right. Um... Departures and arrivals. So to do that in the GTN 750, you don't do it on the flight plan window. There's a whole dedicated procedures page from the main menu, right? So let's select our departure. Um, so again, it takes a second for these to load. I think it's looking at databases. Or maybe not. Maybe you just have to hit it. 
Yes, that's the airport. Uh, I could set a runway, and then it would only show, I think, the departures for that runway. So let's see. Maybe not. No, so it's the Luca 1 Kilo. There we go. That's our departure. It already says runway 30, because it's only for that runway. Load this departure. And there it is. Now it has a departure loaded, right? The Luca 1 Kilo. Um, and it shows here until Luco, and then we start the end route at Luco. Pretty cool. Hey, J Lab, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. Oh, cold. Thank you very much, man. Cold Nebo. Thanks for saying that. Hey, there's the Buenos Aires, Argentina. Chris, como estamos? Como estamos en Buenos Aires hoy? Hmm? Muy caliente. Por aquí no está muy malo, eh? Okay. Check the service manual for the turbo air and didn't find oil quantity specs. Oh, okay. Maybe someone else can. I'll post. Oh, nice. Taurus. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. All right. So are we loaded up here? Yes, we are. We're loaded up here. Let me make sure my charts are working. They should be. Yes. So we can select the airport uh, info. Yeah. There we go. Um, should show our position here. Not sure why it's not showing our position. That's interesting. And it's not this airport briefing. No. Okay. So this is linking to Navigraph and using Navigraph to show my charts in there, which is pretty amazing. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah, this is just briefing stuff. Now, I have it set for nighttime. Uh, you can change that here. And you have to change the chart again so it loads, right? But that's uh, for daytime. This is how you should be looking at charts, right? Um, and you can also control the uh, the screens are t turned down right now because uh, last time I tried this, I was at night. So you can change that uh, brightness in here too. Oh, there we go. I guess we're missing the arrow here. So full brightness and that makes it better. Hey, Dazza is here. What's up, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Everything seems to be working. I'm doing great. How are you? By the way, engine is already warm. We don't need that 1500 anymore. She already came down to. Let's come down to about a thousand. I don't want to be spending a lot of fuel uh, warming up what doesn't need to be warm anymore. It's already warm. All right. The arrow missing an arrow, right? Uh, that's right. Okay, so I guess my uh, position isn't showing here, which is odd. It was working before. Maybe uh, something happened with this uh, build and it isn't working. Okay. But let's. I want to look at the departure, right? So let's look at the um, Luco. Um, oh, wrong airport. That's why. <laughs> so, by the way, I find this weird, right? You have a loaded flight plan. You would think that it would know your origin and destination, and you could just select it here or type something new, but it doesn't. It's a bit odd. Now, if we go to info pages and select the airport diagram, we're going to see our aircraft there. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. All right. <laughs> AK. Seeing Chalu by upgrading to Windows 11. That's the final thing that seemed to work. All right, departures. Let's look at the Luco 1 Kilo. And uh, another thing you can do is go full like this, because it makes it easier to read it, right? Definitely makes it easier to read. Okay, so this is an RNF SID for Prestwick in the UK, chart 10 3 Bravo, uh, issued 22nd February 19th, uh, effective 28th February. So it's not a very new chart. For Prestwick, EGPK, that's correct. Uh, airport elevation 65, which reminds me, I got to do my altimeter setting. Let's see what the altimeter setting is right about uh, now. Oh, also, I've updated Sky Vector to show our route. And let me see something here. If I do this, will it? Uh, no. No. I was trying to show my position in here, too. It should be showing. Not sure why it didn't. Mm, okay. Okay. Is it not running? I thought it was running. Maybe it's not running. Okay, let's run it then. Veered, but let's run it. Yes, and you. 
Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's not working. Could be that it... Oh, I think it hasn't been updated for uh, Sim Update 5. My little mod that shows my position in Sim Brief or Sim Sky Vector. So, okay, fine. Let's just go get the altimeter setting. So, altimeter setting 1007. 1007, let's get that in here. Uh, we're in inches, so let's change that up. Let's go to, nope, hybrid. All right, 1007 coming up. About there. All right. Now, are we showing about 65? We are not. Should be 65 feet. This is very off. Why would it be off that much? Let me hit B and see what happens. Oh, so live weather is quite off. Oh, no. It was 1007. I'm an idiot. Look, 1007. And I set it to 1017. See why it's good to do the altitude check? Is to make sure that you're not an idiot, which in my case is going to be a yes. There we go. This is way closer to 65. And 1007, which might be another click this way. Yeah, still. Very, very close. I'm showing, what, 30 feet? Should be 65. I'm fully, fully good with that. Fully good with that. Ah, <laughs> new test. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's why don't just put in uh, a pressure in there. Put in the pressure, but then read and make sure it agrees somewhat with a little bit of tolerance with the airport elevation. Okay, cool. So let me get a little closer here. There we go. All right. Transition altitude 6,000. That's when we're going to go to standard altimeter pressure. RNF1, DME, DME, or GNSS. That's what we're doing. GNSS with this. So mwah, it's ready to go. DME, DME only procedure. Critical nav aids are DUD at 115.45 and TLA 113.8. Okay. So if you're using DME, DME only, those are critical. Those VORs have to be working and being received before you can take off and do the departure. RNF-1 SIDs are available only for approved aircraft that are either GNSS equipped, yay, or they have DME, DME, and INS IRU with automatic updating capability. Okay, we qualify. Luca 1 kilo, but it's also the Daunt 1 kilo, the TRN 2 kilo for runway 30. RNF departures, that's a speed max 250 knots below, flight level 100 unless otherwise authorized, checks, right? Uh, let's see here. PKW01 is max 220, shouldn't be a problem for us. We're going to Luco, so down here, so from here we're taking... So it's basically, fly over this waypoint. Ah, hey, guys, 500 points and a chance to get into the bonus round. What does this waypoint mean? It is a GPS waypoint because it's a four-pointed star, but it also has a circle around it. What does that mean? Ha! Huh. Yeah, 30, right? Triple seven, yeah, I think so. Yes! It is a compulsory... Well, I mean, these are all compulsory waypoints. It is a flyover waypoint. That is the term, flyover. That's right, Icebird. Good job. Meaning, and this is for your FMS, because you're going to fly this with FMS GPS, right? But it's to let you know as a pilot, the, the coding of this departure, when you selected it from the database, already tells your GPS to do this. But you as a pilot need to make sure that the GPS is going to do that. Do what? Fly over. Look, the next waypoint is over here, right? Draw a straight line from here to there. It's almost a 90 degree turn, isn't it? That's not what they want you to do. They want you to fly out here and do the turn. So how do they do that? They tell the GPS or the FMS, whatever is going to be driving your uh, flight director, that it's a flyover waypoint, meaning you cannot cut the corner. That's what it means. You have to actually fly over this waypoint before you auto sequence to the next waypoint, which is in this case is PKW02, right? Okay, cool. So that's why you see this drawing here instead of a straight line from here to here, because a straight line would mean this is not a flyover, right? And therefore your FMS is going to cut the corner, start this turn, so that by the time the turn is done, you are on that next leg and not fly over to then do this and come back to that leg. So pretty amazing. Um, and that's what that circle means. 
two PKW02, uh, which is the Luka 1 Kilo, but also the TRN 2 Kilo, looks like. And it looks like it's a bearing of 191 or heading 191 to PK0, PKW02, max to 20, and finally something that applies to us between 4,000 and 6,000. No higher than 6,000, and no higher than 6,000 at Luka. At Luka, we have to be at 6,000, right? The floor is 6,000, the ceiling is 6,000, you're clamped down at 6,000. So, 6,000 is the altitude we're gonna stop at. We do not have an altitude selector in this aircraft, so that's something you're gonna have to, st to, to store in your memory, short-term memory, because you're gonna delete it later. But for now, that needs to be something in your mind. If you had an altitude selector, you would set 6,000 right now to make sure you're not going to blow through that altitude. Azevedo, thank you very much for the follow. And Doobie, thank you for the follow too, man. Appreciate that. Hey, Curious, what's up, man? How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Purple Kona. That's another thing. If you have the paid version like uh, I do, you get integration with Navigraph. That only comes with the paid version. It's so nice, though, to have it here, because you can see your aircraft on it. It's super cool. Super cool. All right, and then after that, so really, the only thing we need to make sure is that by PKW02, we're at least at 4,000. Um, let's see here. They don't have any climb rates mentioned here. Every time you see a departure like this with altitudes, but without climb gradients mentioned down here, that's because a standard climb gradient will suffice. Standard climb gradient is 200 nautical miles or sorry, 200 feet per nautical mile, or 3.3%, you want to talk percentages, right? That is what every IFR departure is designed to be flown at, unless they have some terrain or some airspace or something that they have to clear by climbing faster than 200 feet per nautical mile. In that case, they will indicate the climb gradient down here required for this departure. If you don't see it, all you need to do is 200 nautical miles, 200 feet, per nautical mile. Now, in this departure, let's just figure out how many feet per nautical mile we think we can do, right? We know this aircraft. This aircraft climbs at about a thousand feet per nautical, or a thousand feet per minute. Jeez. Climbs at about a thousand feet per minute. And on the departure, we're gonna be doing about a hundred knots indicated, which means just about two nautical miles per minute, because 120 120 knots, 120 nautical miles per hour. If an hour is 60 minutes and you divide the 120 by 60, you get two nautical miles per minute, right? Well, we're going to be doing slightly less than that. So it's slightly less than two nautical miles per minute. But that means that if we're doing a thousand feet per minute, then for every two miles, we're doing about 500 feet, right? which is way higher than the 200 feet per nautical miles needed. So that's just quick math you can do in your head to be assured that you can meet this altitude, right? The fact that, first of all, there should be a climb gradient down here if it's not standard, and then Jeppesen will indicate for you, depending on your ground speed, how many feet per minute you need to be doing. We don't see that, so that tells us it's standard climb rate. Standard climb rate. Uh, or climb gradient for an instrument departure is 200 feet per nautical mile. And we just figured out we do about 500 feet per nautical mile. So we're easily gonna be able to meet the 4,000. So I don't have to worry about the 4,000. I have to worry about the 6,000. So 6,000 committed to our minds. Make sense? Did that make sense, guys? I hope that made sense. Hey, Lopox, what's up, buddy? Bunch of friends flying C-172s and I followed my plug sitting at Adam for too long. <laughs> I may be doing that right now. Nah, just at a thousand. I should be good. I should be good. All right. So no, no worries on this departure. Pretty easy departure, right? It's all programmed in here anyway. So we expect the flight director to be able to fly this. And so we're going to turn our autopilot on. But it does mean that we're going to use, whoa, GPS. So make sure this switch here is set to GPS. This is what the autopilot will try to follow, right? Is what source are, is driving the lateral movement of the aircraft? Is it the nav radios or the GPS? It's the GPS in this case. So make sure it's the GPS. Good. And let's put the aircraft or sorry, the um, airport information screen up so that we can taxi to runaway 30. And in that case, it looks like, let me do it full. All right, right here. So looks like it's going to be 
Romeo uh, to here. Looks like we don't need the entire runway. It's almost three kilometers long. We are fine taking off from Quebec. So we're going to take Romeo. So it's a left turn out of here, right? Right turn on Romeo uh, all the way until Quebec. And then we're going to turn left on... It's Sierra or Quebec. Quebec it could be that holding point and Sierra is the taxiway. But it's the last taxiway before the other runway. So it should be easy to see. Okay, so I'm going to leave it the page on that as we get ready to taxi. Finally got me the Aero Turbo, says Colonel Jakes. Congratulations, sir. Are you, are you flying with us right now? Are you going to try it out right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I could. I could. But, 777, one of the things I learned is use as much runway available as possible, as, as practical, right? You can never have too much runway. Uh, and you never know what's going to happen. Uh, how to land in the rain if it's raining uh, where we're flying to. So Bryce, we're going to use instrument approaches and those have minimum visibility requirements. So even before we shoot the approach, we're going to look at the METAR, we're going to see what the visibility is if it's raining, and we're going to see if we think we can get in. If we, if the visibility is larger, higher than the required for the approach, we can feel pretty confident that shooting the approach, we're going to see the airport before the missed approach point and allow us to land visually from there. So you start the instrument approach or the, the approach via instruments, and then you transition to visual at a certain altitude, a certain distance from the field. Yeah, 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 of course. 777, of course. Yep, exactly, exactly. All right, let's start this taxi. So, quick check of the checklist here, because we have a taxi checklist, right? Landing lights, that needs to come on. So, boom, that's on. Avionics, well, we haven't turned our ADF on or our DME. Don't know that we're going to use it, but it never hurts. Use all the equipment that's available to you. So check that, check that. Radios, I don't need any NEV or COM radios for this departure, so I'm going to leave them as is. Transponder is set to our last one, 0470. I'll keep it there. Altimeter settings checked uh, once, but not twice. Oh yeah, B did both, okay. Head indicator, so uh, 157. And we're showing 157. That's looking good. Taxi area clear. Let's see if it is. We're going that way. There's a couple of people there. Okay, we got Bryce over there. Hey, Bryce, what's up? And somebody else there. Okay, so it's pretty clear. Parking brake is released. We're going to go left. Adding a little power here. She's moving. Okay, testing our brakes. Our brakes work. And flight instruments, we're going to test that on the way out. So, let's go, guys. Okay, so, flight instruments. So, I already checked my heading indicator, but it's nice to see as you taxi that it's following your magnetic compass, and it is. My altimeter is indicating correctly, my VSI is on zero, my attitude indicator is level, as it should be right now. We're coming up onto Romeo, so we're going to take a right here on that taxiway. Clear left. Okay, very good. Look. Some openings. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it looks lighter that way too. Okay. Look, turning bank is turning to the right and the ball is to the outside of the turn, so that's correct. I'm going to actually pass through this taxiway so I can do it to the other side and check that too. Alright, so past it. I have to correct, right? And now I come back to the left and look. Left turn and ball to the right. So that works too. My vacuum gauge. Let me add some power here. Yep, it's definitely working. Okay, oil temperature is a little low, but that's to be expected at idle, so that's okay. Oil pressure is good. Fuels, uh, fuel tanks indicating correctly. Let me see here. I have manifold pressure indicating, fuel flow indicating. We're coming up to that other runway, but not. Oh, it's actually we're not gonna cross it. I just remembered. Okay, uh, and RPM is definitely working. Let's see. If, whoa. Let's see if EGT is working. Hey, Evox. I've been trying to fix my sim, man. Been trying to fix my sim this whole time. Finally got it done um, last night and uh, got a couple hours of sleep and here I am. Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to set this chronometer, see if I remember to do it for this takeoff, right? That's it for our instru flight instrumentation avionics check. So, ground check. We can do this as we stop over there or we can do it on a roll. 
right? So we don't need the parking brake set if we're going to do it on the row. I'm going to just take that item. Mixture is full rich. Prop RPM is max, okay? So now we need RPM to 2000. So obviously, I need to hold her on the brakes as I do that. Otherwise, she would start speeding up a lot. We don't want that as we're taxing, so bring it back to 2000. There's 2100. There's about 2000, okay? Quick check here, mags check. Okay, left mag. Let's see. About 100 drop, not bad. About 100 drop. I'm gonna go to both, let it recover. Come on, baby, recover. She takes a long time to recover from these, I've noticed. Not sure why. And if you got time and you can pay attention to other things, this is totally fine to do as you're taxiing. It does require some expertise, though, to make sure that, you know, you're doing... Paying attention to this as you should. Oh, look, this is a bigger drop. Oh, so the right mag isn't working so well. So I think we started fouling the, uh... We started fouling the, uh... The plugs, maybe. Okay. Let her try to recover. So, I did that. Don't like the drop on the right mag, so I am gonna run her, uh... At a higher RPM now, and I'll lean the mixture, which is also gonna allow me to check the EGT temperature. Okay, so I'm gonna go to about 2500 right there. And I'm gonna go lean here. Look at my EGT. And I'm gonna go as lean as I can. There we go. And hopefully this will clean the plug. It, interesting though that on the right mag, the plug would do that, but not on the left. But it can happen. Okay, let me set my parking brake on. Okay. So, vacuum gauge I can check right now. I need to do this for about a minute, a minute and a half, so I can check vacuum gauge. Magnetos, I checked both, but the right isn't doing so well, so we'll go back to it. Um, oil pressure and temperature. Oil temperature is high because we're on the ground using a lot of power, so that's correct. Pressure is holding steady. Amp meter, I'm using a lot of stuff right now, so it looks correct at about 50. Annunciators, let's test them one more time. There we go. Propeller, exercise, then full forward, okay? I'm not going to do that right now because I have uh, the engine in a different condition than I should for prop check. So, let me just finish up this here. See if there's any other checks I can do. Uh, aux boost pump, it is off. And remember, I think this checklist is lacking turning it on for takeoff, so we'll try to remember that. But fuel pressure is doing well with the pump off. Want to do alternate air, I can check that too. There we go. And no, no drop in RPM, which is nice. Okay, engine idle, we haven't checked yet, so I can't do that yet. Oh, alternate air, that's what I did. Alright, so now let me go back to full mixture. Back to about 2000, and I'll check the right mag. Sometimes, we've seen in the past, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. There's 2000. Let's go to the right mag. Oh, it's too big a drop. Should be 150 max, it's gonna go 200. So it didn't clear. Okay, well, in real life, this is probably a no-go, right? But for me, I'm going. Let's see if that results in any other issues during the flight. Let's check engine idle. Should be between 600 and 650. Yes, Ewald, it is. All right, so we got eh, about 700. She's still coming down very slowly, I think, but... So it looks like a little fast, but I'm happy with that. I prefer 700 than 6 or 650. Okay. Let's go back up. They say 1200. Maybe I should keep it always at 1200, not 1000. Maybe that's what's following the plugs. Alright, before takeoff. So, let's do our last checks here. You guys can start lighting up if you like. Wind's gonna be from the left crosswind uh, coming up. So you guys, go ahead if you like. Whoa, hold on. 1,200. Alternator is on. Strobe lights are on. Landing light is on. Aux boost pump off. Why do they have it off? Shouldn't we have it on for takeoff? I'm going to have it on. I'm going to have it on. Okay, fuel selector. I'm going to put it on the right because we've ran quite a bit on the left. So let's go right. Engine gauges. We've just checked them. Let's check them again. Okay, temperature is down. Makes sense. Mixture is full rich. Prop RPM is full max. Flaps, zero. I like them. Trims are set once and twice. Cabin door closed and latched. Closed and latched. All right.
Hold on a second. Hmm. I thought there was one thing I didn't do here. But that wasn't battery switch, wasn't it? I thought there was something I didn't do. Ah, the propeller checks. Yes! Propeller checks. 2,000. All right, here we go. Okay, there's a 400 drop. Timing problem, all right, Meg. I don't know if it's timing or... Yeah, I mean... Yeah. If it's the spark plugs, I should get that drop on both, shouldn't I? Here we go. Hold on. 2,000. Once again. Okay. Big drop, as we expect. And we'll do it one more time before we call it good. Man, slow recovery on that governor. I don't like it. I would have this looked at. All right. Whoops. Just past 2,000. Okay, here we go. One more time. Yep. Governor is working just fine. Just fine. All right. Hey, BD Short. What's up, man? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it is, BD. All right, people in front of me are moved, so I can move. Not going to need this. So for climb, though, uh, prop speed is 25.75. I normally bring it back to, like, 25. And do not exceed 41 inches. So for climbing uh, and for takeoff, we'll use a lot of power, but we won't exceed that. Okay, you guys want me to go first or you want to go? If you want to go, go for it, guys. Otherwise, I can go. It's up to you guys. Hey, nice to tech you. The mayor, however, sees some hot water. <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to go then. Sounds good to me. So, entering the runway, we have... Altitude reporting on our transponder. We have landing light on, we have strobes on. And I'm going to start my timer. Didn't forget it. Yeah, right? A bit. And I'm going to start my timer. Oh, it looks like this is the beginning. Oh, no, the beginning of the runway is back there. Never mind. So we could backtrack, but I'm not going to backtrack. Yes, this is current weather. This is live weather mode. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I was looking at Sky Vector. I missed the runway here. All right. So now that I'm ready to depart, what I can do is I can either have my flight plan shown here, right? Or I can have the map. Or, notice by the way, look, the map shows the waypoint being cut. Ooh, let's see what happens. In real life, that means I would fly heading just to be sure that I'm going to fly over that waypoint. But I think, I think the GTN 750 cannot handle that just yet like a flyover waypoint because it should be in the database by the way i have xm weather turned on so those green and orange are clouds around us so it looks like it's going to clear later on in the trip or i could also have um whoops this chart being shown as departure this chart being shown so it's up to you however you want to have your avionics i want to have it this way um and see see what happens. I am going to be in nav, so I want to see if it's going to actually cut the corner. I think it will. Um, but let's see. Yeah, it's via next red that I'm getting that weather. Okay. Well, here we go. Let's advance throttles to 2,000. Okay. Gas in the carriage mixture prop. Okay. There's 2,000 or so. Engine is looking good. Start the chronometer. Can't believe I remembered it. Full power. Not full power. Sorry. 42 inches. There we go. And off we go. Engine still looking healthy. 60 knots. Where's that crosswind wanting to meet weather vane? 70 knots. We're going to go flying. All right. Still got a little bit of runway. So I'll keep the gear down for now. And I am yawing into the wind here to keep my track over the runway. Climbing at 90 knots. Let's go gear up. Okay, and I want to be in autopilot because I want to see if Nav is going to do that that uh, cutting the corner or not. So 
Let's just go autopilot on and it's in nav already. So it should be flying that first leg. It won't turn this for me, so I can put this whatever, wherever I want. But I should have this, meaning the yellow needle, right? I should have that as my desired track of 309. So this should be a 309. Like that. Okay. All right. Let me go back on... Let's go 35 inches for the climb. That should be sufficient. And that means I'm going to bring my prop back to 25. And look, let's see if she's going to... Oh, she's not cutting the corner. Oh, is she? No, she's not. So it's not showing as a flyover, but it is respecting it as a flyover. Climbing a little too fast, and I need a little bit of right rudder in. So let's add that bit in and change my pitch here. It's not doing the pitching for me. I have to do that myself because this autopilot doesn't do that. So I have to change my pitch trim so that I stay at about 100 knots for this climb. Okay, so she's already gone. Next one is 227. So let me set this to 227. 227 is about there. Okay. I'm going to go back to the chart. Yeah, see, so... It doesn't... You don't have to stay there. You just have to fly over that waypoint. Once you fly over, if you're in a, a slow aircraft and turn, you are going to be where we are, which is fine. You just have to make sure you fly over that one. Okay, speed is looking good. I have to now keep feeding it power. Ooh. Ooh, that was scary. So I stay at 35. And I can do my uh, climb checklist now. Oh, hello. Hello, friend. Oh, we're coming out of the clouds, too. I see a lot of rain, but look, it's still 10 degrees out there, so I'm not too concerned about icing. All right. Let's do the climb checklist. So wait, after takeoff here, everything okay? Yeah, right? All right, mixture is rich. Uh, it, we're about 2,500. I'm okay with that prop speed. Manifold pressure, 33. I'm at 35, so let's go down to 33. Should be about... About there. 33. Okay. And I'm doing... I can do one, one less click here on the prop to get closer to 25. They say 2450. Why don't we do that? Might as well, right? Might as well. He's almost there. There's about 2450. Okay. Airspeed should be 104. Uh, okay. Let's pitch... Pitch down a little bit. Hey, hello, clouds. Oh, man. This is beautiful looking. Beautiful looking. Okay. Speed is getting there. And fuel pump, low if required. Well, we don't need it right now. Normally, you have it on for takeoff and you turn it off in the climb. So, interesting. Next is going to be cruise. Actually, let me finish this up then. There we go. Keeping that on 33. So I have to add a little bit of power here. There we go. Speed is a little too low. Still pitching down. Pitching forward. Or trimming forward, I should say. We're almost there. And remember, 4,000 was the minimum, right? Look at this. We just passed 4,000. Although, I would have expected to clear it by more than this. Interesting. Interesting. There's 33 again. Let's see our altitude by the time we get to it. 4,500. It's going to be about 4,500. Yeah, beautiful but dangerous. You're right, Pedro. Especially with embedded thunderstorms, right? Hello, friends. Hello, everybody. Let's go. All right, I'm going to start leaning now because we're passing 4,500. I'm definitely going to get more power if I lean. So there we go. Let's go to peak. There we go. It's about good right there. And she's just started the turn. So yeah. 4,600, 4,500 is what I had at that waypoint. Let's go back to the map. 193. Damn, closer and closer 10 months. 10 months. What? What? I think that's about 193. Looks like it. Dude, 10 months, Luke's. What's up, buddy? How's it going, man? It's good to see you. I know, man. Can you believe it? Can you believe it's going to be a year? Right? Oh, little, little fish eye, too fish eye for me, so I corrected that. The angle of, a, or the angle of attack looks really high. 
doesn't it? Oh, it's coming back down, okay. We're about to get into the soup again, though, so let's see what's happening here. Now, speed is okay. Climb rate is okay, so she's doing all right. I still need to pitch forward a little bit, or pitch down, I should say. I want my speed closer to 100. Wow, Luke, so what's going on, man? What's new in Luke's life? Wage, that comes with. Comes with. All right, she's on the turn, right? For the next waypoint here. Oh, remember, I got to stop at 6,000. Oh, I almost forgot. Almost forgot. That's why I like always looking at the chart. Yeah, we have to be at 6,000 all the way to Luco. Whoa, leveling off. Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. All right, 6,000 feet. Now she's going to gain some speed here, so I have to keep on trimming. But I also want to adjust... Hold on. I want to adjust my uh, desire track. 131. I hear the speed of the wind. The wind sound is getting louder, which means we're getting faster, right? I'll put this to 131, and I'll try to put my heading bug there, too. That's about 131. Trimming, trimming, trimming. Always... Whoa! Guys, I just got a light blink over here. My power didn't go out, but the light blinked. Just FYI. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We just got on a big, big down, uh, downdraft from these clouds. That was crazy. Oh, sounds good, Bryce. Okay, man. We'll see you on arrival then. See you on arrival, buddy. Look at this, guys. Look at this. <laughs> this is beautiful. By the way, 6,000 also the transition altitude, right? So uh, once we clear Luco and we start climbing, Luco is coming up. Then we are going to go to 1013 on our altimeter setting for both altimeters. <clears throat> so we're not doing cruise checks because we're not at cruise yet. We just stopped our climb momentarily. All right. Everything is looking pretty good. Engine is happy. We got good leaning. Good RPM. Manifold pressure is going to be 33, so let's adjust that already for the climb. Whoops. She started climbing a tad. We're too early to climb. Colonel Fork, Old tier 2. Six months. Six let's months. go, buddy. How already. are you, man? I haven't seen you in forever. I feel like it. How's it going, man? It's good to see you. Six months, my friend. Wow. Hey, hype train is closed. Let's go, guys. Full change. What do you mean, gamer? Oh, fuel tank. No, so I'm I'm gonna do that based on takeoff. Remember, I changed my fuel tank right at takeoff, right? So that's only been eight nine minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna do it from there on out. They're not gonna be exactly the same because I used I taxied around and idled the rail for uh, on the left tank, but it'll be close enough. It's okay. All right, almost at Luco, not Luke's, but Luco. We got one mile to go. Then we can start our climb. So, Luke's, what's up, man? That's part of the experience. It was peculiar. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. What did Luke say? Been a while. How you doing? Ah. Came back from a week in Amsterdam today. It was good fun. The city is beautiful. Back to work tomorrow. Hoping to score a better job in the next couple of months. Hey, good luck with that, buddy. Amsterdam. That's awesome. What a great place to be. And great place to go. All right. We just passed Luke's. Let's change our pitch trim. Not our power. We're already at 33 inches. But we're going to change our pitch trim to bring our speed back to about 100 knots. We're going to climb at about 100 knots. Polish pilot, what's up, buddy? Great to see you, man. It's been a while. How are you, man? How are the streams going? I haven't seen your streams in a while. Things are well. Have my third interview for a job today. Colonel Fork, third is a charm. Third is a charm, buddy. You know how that goes. Oh, been a while. I was in Poland for over a month. Oh, nice, Polish finally able to travel right oh that feels so good man feels so good i went to florida on vacation and man it was awesome it was awesome there's 100 knots let me see if i can get her trimmed up up here i'm gonna have to start adding power yep there we go back to 33 and that crosswind look at this that crosswind from the right is happening remember we thought that might happen we're looking at windy right and if we go back to wind i mean you can see wind there but yeah we're coming down uh, let's see from up here coming down and there's that right crosswind right 
We're going to be at flight level 140, so it's going to be a little less than at the lower altitudes right now. Look, at the lower altitudes, you have a little bit more. Well, we're going we're gonna to be 150, but you get my drift. You get my drift. Let's continue leaning. Keep that engine at peak lean performance. There we go. Make sure our power is set exactly at 33. All right. Very good. Very good. And yeah, we're, we're coming out of those clouds, which is awesome. Remember, we thought those clouds might top out at like 13, 14, 15. Looks like they might. Looks like they might. Let's see. Work takes up most of my time, but having been on a plane, uh, on a plane this morning, I'm dying to play flight sim right now. Oh, that's awesome. My week starts tomorrow, luckily. Hey, not bad, dude. You got Monday off. Look at this huge updraft. Our speed went down to 75. I'm, I'm helping. I'm helping correct it. Um, there we go. By pitching up and down a little bit, right? I just don't want it to go too much roller coaster here. No, gamer. Uh, I'm. You can. You can do whatever altitude you want. I. I'm gonna be at uh, fifteen thousand for today's flight. So we're gonna have to turn oxygen on, which we can do in a little bit. Okay, there's my hundred knots or so. She's getting back to it. Nice. Looks like some more weather up ahead, but we're gonna clear some of that uh, if we can climb fast enough. Oh, Kozaki, are you using different weather, buddy? <clears throat> Never trust the weather, says Bryce. Yeah, I know, right? Ah, Wage, you missed the beginning of the stream. So we did some flight planning today, and we talked about the altitude. Mainly, well, a couple of things. There, there were two airways on the route of Little Nav Map, right? So Little Nav Map, by the way, awesome, awesome program, and we're using it to do the flight planning and the flight tracking. There's our departure. Look at that. Look at how... Look, it did fly over that point. It did not cut the corner. And then it went straight to this waypoint. This waypoint here is not real. It's just what little nav map does. But it's not real. The, the triangle waypoints are the real ones. So, actually, yeah. The GTN 750 followed the requirement exactly for this departure. Anyways. Um, so, we looked at this, right? We looked at this flight plan. And there were a couple of airways that needed 11,000 feet. So we knew that, okay, well, we have to at least be at 11,000 feet. Then what we did is we went to Windy and had a look at different altitudes here. You can change the altitude. See, it says flight level 140. I'm gonna change that to 10,000. The wind changes a bit. I'm gonna change it to surface. And then the wind changes again. So at above 11,000, we looked at, I think, 10,000, 14,000 and uh, the real difference, it was all a little bit of crosswinds over here until we get to north of London. The real difference was here. At 10,000, we expected uh, the winds going where we want to go. It's going from London to Amsterdam. That's pretty much what we're going to be doing. So it's a tailwind. That's great. But at 10,000, it was a little bit better than at 14,000. At 14,000, it changed a little bit now. But it wasn't a big difference. It was like four knots of difference. So uh, considering then that we looked at clouds... So if I go, oh, actually, I already have it here. So if I go uh, better sounding, there we go. And then I look at clouds. There were some clouds here on the departure from Newcastle. Uh, oh, sorry, Newcastle <laughs> from Prestwick here. Um, and we looked and said, oh, look, the clouds kind of end around 10,000, 12,000. It, it depended, right? So we said, let's go as high as we can to get above those clouds. All right, let's get back in here. We need to lean again. Otherwise, that engine won't stay producing the amount of power we want. And more importantly, we need to keep 33 inches of manifold pressure. So there we go, back to 33. And look, we're climbing over most of that weather now, just like we expected we might. Pretty cool. Pretty darn cool, isn't it? I love it when a plan comes together. Ah, Bryce. So for that... Come over here, come to Sky Vector, and you can look at these grid minimum altitudes here. Minimum off route. Um, I guess it's just off route route. The R is for route. Uh, 3,700, 3,400, where we're flying, right? 2,900. Then it gets a little higher 4,100, 3,900. So, 
for you guys that are maybe staying lower today, be careful with these. For us, it's not going to be a factor at all. And then, of course, lower here as we get into England. And then, of course, as we cross into um, Holland, the Netherlands, uh, we don't have to worry about altitudes at all, right? All this stuff is really, really flat around here. So you're talking 1,100, 1,200. And we're going to be on an arrival and, there, and then a approach. So we have obstacle clearance guaranteed there too. All right, 12,000. 300 feet or so um, and we're going to 15 but we need to turn our oxygen on I wonder can you turn it on now by clicking on it no because remember we have a key oh here we go maybe this yes okay cool we're now using oxygen and if you notice our oxygen pressure is right at uh, 1800 where it should be for a full bottle and as we consume oxygen, we're going to see this go down. But it should last us for a long time. It's just us. It should last us for a long time. Uh, there's a little leaning going on here. And I think it's because I have too much right rudder. So I'm going to take some of that right rudder out and see what happens. Also, altimeter hasn't gone to standard just yet. So let's do that. One, zero, one, three. Set once and twice ah Peter at the airport um, so you need an FBO that has oxygen and they basically can connect to the bottle and refill it that way or some of these bottles are set up so that it's easy like this one it's easy for you to unstrap it from the aircraft you undo this valve and then it can actually take it in uh, into a shop, for example, that can do that for you. So yeah, they you take it somewhere where they can come to the aircraft. More often than not, you take it somewhere. But for example, in a business jet, those bottles are not designed to come out all the time. So in that case, they basically have a oxygen tank that they'll connect to the aircraft. They'll come to the aircraft, connect that oxygen tank, and refill the aircraft there. Oh, you mean in the sim? <laughs> yeah, in real life, that's how you do. In the sim... Oh my gosh. In the sim, uh, it's in here. I think it's under maintenance. Yeah, refill oxygen right there. Yep. Very, very cool. Very cool. Okay, guys. 1,000 to go. Leaning, oops. Leaning a little too much. Let's find that peak. Find that peak right there. Don't have enough power, so let's add more power. 33. There we go. Meant in real life. Cool. I read your mind, Peter. We're, huh? We're there. State saving means it remembers a lot of things. The state of the aircraft when you turned it off. Actually, when you went back to the main menu. So, if you close the sim right now, even with state saving on, it won't remember anything. You can't do that. They're talking about hitting... Sorry, if someone is flying formation. Real quick, I'm going to pause. Hitting escape and then going to the main menu. That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. To have state saving work and then you can close the sim what does it do it remembers if you had avionics turned on or off the position of all the switches it remembers for nine months a y o o o um your selections for chocks tie downs tow bars remembers a bunch of stuff so basically it's a realistic way to leave the aircraft and then come back another day or later that day and the aircraft is exactly like you left it if you forgot some switches on they're gonna be on booms Hey, yo, buddy. Nine months. Let's go, man. Thank you very much, Booms. I appreciate that so much. So much. Man, I'm enjoying the performance. It's sweet. Oh, I just passed 15,000. Whoopsie daisies. Ah, munchies. I love to explain stuff, man. It's in my genes. I can't help it but explain. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm going to go down to 15. Ah, Juke, we tried by running the engine lean. So when a spark plug is fouled, that means it's dirty. It accumulated some uh, gum, is what we tend to call in it. It's a combination of byproducts from combustion and uh, uh, if you're using leaded fuel, right? Lead can accumulate there too. Anyways, um, it gets dirty and uh, the spark doesn't happen as strongly as before. So the combustion is not as good as before. 
So you can run the engine at high power and lean the mixture all the way until the engine is about to quit, and that tends to clean out the spark plugs. If not, you got to pull the spark plug off and physically clean it. All right, let's get the cruise checklist out as I'm descending to 15,000. So throttle max of 75%. Yeah, and we have some markers here that will show us. Look, 75% is this green range from about 11 to 15. Then there's a 65% range from about 9.5 to 13. Then there's a 55% range from way down here to about, uh, oh, to about there. So we're going to be at 65%. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower our fuel consumption here uh, in fuel flow until we get to about 10. And that's going to be our cruise setting. I still need a little more pitch trim down to get to 15,000. In the meantime, I can take power out. I'm already leaned at peak, I believe. Yeah, I am for this altitude. I'm going to go back on power. I don't really care what manifold pressure is. I care about my fuel flow because I want to do 10 gallons per hour. There we go. And I'll take whatever speed and manifold pressure that does. So we're at 10 now. There we go. We passed 15. Let's go back to it. But I'm going to consider my throttle is set. Propeller RPM. We're going to go... I'm going to leave it at 2450. So maybe one more click back. Mixture lean for altitude. Yes, it is. Getting back to 15. Elevator trim is set. I'm setting it now. Ox wheel pump low if required. I don't think I required. At 15,000 feet, I might, but I don't think so. And switch tanks. I'm doing it at every half an hour. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, motor overhaul. So, Juke, in the sim, what you can do is this. On the next page, you can repair the engine, even though it doesn't show engine damage when your spark plugs are fouled. I believe that it will foul the plugs and you can repair that by going repair engine. I believe. Not 100% not sure. All right, need to get back to 15. And I'm going to zoom out a little now that we're in route so I can see more of what's happening around me. And also, because we're above the weather, I don't need next red turned on. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, next red off. There we go. That allows me to see the map and the route a little bit better. I also have air spaces here. Don't need that on. There we go. That's a little nicer. Okay, definitely got the, getting the trim wrong here. I need to get back up. I need to get back up to 15,000. So let's go. Yeah, Juke, of course, man. It's my pleasure. My pleasure, buddy. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Now, of course, there's 15,000. Of course, nice. Keep in mind, DCS is not aimed for the same crowd that prepared and Microsoft Flight Sim are, right? There's that too. You have to think about that. By the way, the next thing we need to do here, guys, is we need to set up our true airspeed setting now that we're at cruise. But first, I want to get the trim right. So let me just make sure that as she speeds up, as we leveled off, now she's, you know, we were on a climb. We leveled off. She's going to speed up a little bit. And as she speeds up, she produces a little extra lift. So I have to keep trimming forward. Otherwise, she's going to start climbing as she gains more speed. And eventually, she'll run out of energy. Um, and that will be my cruise speed. I extra energy, right? That'll be my cruise speed. And then I'll find the correct uh, setting for my pitch trim. Oh my god, Booms, that's going to be amazing. Have we heard uh, release date yet for the Twin Otter? Have we heard? What tablet do I use? Evox, the tablet that's in the aircraft in this case. Um, I, it looks like an iPad, you know, but it's the tablet that comes with the aircraft. I don't have an add-on for tablets. I have an add-on for the GPS. This is a, an add-on, the GTN 750. But other than that, um, I just use the tablets that come with the aircraft. The DC-6 from PMDG comes with a tablet too but you know it's again it's the uh, the tablet that these guys program themselves luxionica is here hello luxionica how's it Just going thank you for that two months of prime months. let's go thank you i haven't flown in real life for a while now evox so i don't use a tablet because i don't fly i would probably use my ipad load up whatever you know for flight or something like that on it um but i don't fly in real life anymore Don't know, Jukebox. Great question. Great question. All right. Let's start adjusting our true airspeed. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Let's start adjusting our true airspeed, shall we? Just seeing if I can see anybody else. No, down there. Oh, hello. Somebody there. Look, I can use the... Uh, look how good this works. I can use... Okay, so 
put it down and I can see more people that have their lights on. All right. Nice. Nice. Okay, so temperature currently minus 14, minus 13 or so. Okay. And we're at 15,000 feet. All right, so minus 14. That's minus 30, minus 20, minus 14 is going to be in between minus 20, minus 10. Then I need to line up 15,000 feet with that. Let's go 14, 15, minus. There we go. 15 and minus 15 or so. Wow, trailer speed 155. That's exactly what I planned the trip on. That's great. That is great. Exactly what I had planned on. How nice. How nice. Hey, Gamer Taurus with 500 bits. Buddy, thank you. Well, it's been fun. Got to scram now and I'm out of the house for the next few days. Oh, for a short vacation. Nice, dude. Made it just before the next, most likely to arrive lockdown. Yes, gamer. Get out there, man. I'll see you Friday if you stream. I'll be streaming. Hey, thanks, buddy, and enjoy your vacation. Have fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, with those 500 bits, you kicked off another hype train is closed. So, hey, if you're considering subscribing to the channel, uh, this is a great time to do it because you can kick off a hype train. Um, and this is my full-time job. And I'll be honest with you guys. Abby is in between jobs right now. She's changing careers. To a career she's dreamed of she's gonna be a real estate agent which is super exciting but for the moment the stream is my only source of income our only source of income so if you consider subscribing to the channel i really appreciate it but only do it only do it if i've earned it only do it if i've earned it same with the follows la nuit bell thank you very much for the follow appreciate that by the way zuikas thanks for the follow rui with the follow alpha game with the follow for Baffa. Cam Cam Jelly, Thomas Ralph, uh, Maxi, or Max, Maxi Fee, Max EFT04, what's up? Munchy Strike and the Soul Warrior. Thanks for all the follows, guys. Really, really appreciate that. Really helps the channel out. Munchy Strike with a Prime subscription. Thank you very much, Munchy. Appreciate that, buddy. And look at that. Did we kick off a hype train? I think we did. I think we did, buddy. Live weather actually acting well. Yeah, Bryce, it is, isn't it? Yes! We're almost done with the level one hype train. Let's go BT Monster with five subscriptions. Let's go, buddy. I think that's what took the, the hype train. No, no. Now we're just going to go into level two. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Surge. Thank you very much, man. Oh, a pleasure to support you. Honestly, you deserve it more than any streamer I follow. Buddy, that touches me in the feels. Thank you, man. Can I still use that? Is that too, too 2018? Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's really nice to say. BT Monster, five subs. Let's go, buddy. Thank you. New spawns gifting a tier one sub to Latin. No. Yeah. Latin Nuller. Wow. Hey, Geek Baggings with a tier one sub to Neon Tree. Thank you so much, guys. Really do appreciate that. It helps me incredibly. Incredibly. All right. It is almost time to switch our tanks. Oh, look at that. I am on it today. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Hey, Montana Pat, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Leo with 100 bits. Hey, Leo, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Rodopsin, that is very true. That is very true. I cannot be at the leading edge, right? Cannot be at the leading edge. Looks, buddy. Thank you, man. Nice to tech you. Look at that. They just got a sub from Luke's, man. That's awesome. JDS Fan Club. Uh, giving out a tier 1 sub to Wildest Weasel. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, my gosh. The Defiance, welcome, man. Appreciate that. Wingdings with a tier 1 sub. Thank you, Wingdings. Thank you so much, guys. The support is just second to none. It's unbelievable. Joey, right? Let's go, man. So incredible. Finsta Bebe with a Prime sub. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so, so much. And BT Monster resubscribed for seven months. Let's go, baby. Yeah, I think uh, I would be very helpful. Nice you okay, so Rui, let me go back to your original question, months. okay? Can't trim your buttons. Okay, so hold on. Hold on. Jukebox with 500 bits. Thank you, buddy. They have given two hey, Munchy Strike. Thank you very much, man. Jukebox. 500 bits. Appreciate that, man. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go back to Rio's original question. Hey. Leo Belusco is here too. Hey, buddy, what's up? 
I know, the support of this community, Leo, it's blowing your mind, maybe because you're new, because these people are unbelievable. Hi, right, Rui, there we go. Hi, I'm new. Can I ask what hardware you use to set elevator trim? Yes, you can. I feel maybe a control axis is better than buttons. I, it probably would be, Rui. In the real aircraft, that's what you have, right? In most simple aircraft, you have an, you know, it's a wheel, but it would be for us. In the sim world, it would be an axis. They can rotate forward and back or move, slide forward. Yeah, great. I don't use that. I use buttons. So I have a button for trim forward or trim up and a button for trim down, right? By the way, support doesn't stop. Citizen with 300 bits. Let's go. Thank you so much. Just got us to level five. Just My God. Whoa, I, I extending a tier one through August. Wait, we are in August. Wait a second. Did you just extend to next August, I, I? Is that what just happened? That is betting on the horse, man. Yeah, whoa! Buddy, thank you. I appreciate that confidence. Wow. August 2030. Wage squeeze. He resubbed. Resubbed. That's that's awesome. You're the greatest, meu irmão. Meu irmão. Meu irmão. Valeu, cara. Valeu. Wow, wow, we were. Ah, the support of this community, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Diabito, he's the best. Hopefully you're talking about someone else. All right, so Rio. Um, as I mentioned, Rui, sorry, Rui. As I mentioned, I use buttons, right? Now, it also depends on the aircraft. There are aircraft out there that are better at when you're using buttons than other planes. Some of the default planes, uh, I feel like using buttons, it changes the pitch too much for every click of the button. So it's very hard to find uh, the trim you want for any any airspeed. For me, look, I found one that works, right? And I did it with buttons. But I find that in the arrow, it's a lot easier. So it depends on the aircraft too. Joey Bolo, four months, let's go, buddy. Seven weeks until FS Expo. That's right. That's right. I am going to be at FS Expo in person all three days. Let's go. Abby's going to be there too. And a bunch of you guys are going to be there. So I'm inviting you to attend FS Expo in person. If you can in person. If you don't want to do it in person, you can do it virtually. It's all going to be streamed. And guess what? On Saturday, I think it's Saturday evening, I have my own talk. What? My own talk in one of the rooms, one of the stages. I don't know how that works at Flight Team X, so it's probably going to be like a like a closet, right? Because they probably know I, I'm not that famous. Uh, but anyways, it's going to be a great talk. I'm going to be talking about how I got to be where I am today, uh, both in aviation, but also as a a streamer right and uh, then we're going to launch into a QA, and a and i'll answer whatever questions you guys have about me about aviation about anything um and you know if whatever i don't know i'll bs my way through the through the guest answer no nah, I'm, I'm joking but it's going to be awesome to be there all three days and i've never been to flight sim expo so i'm super excited to just walk the grounds see all the the uh, exhibitors meet a bunch of people meet several of you guys in person i'm super excited about that I've only met one of you so far. That's Captain Seppi. Captain Seppi was on my route back from Florida for my vacation in Florida. So I stopped by a restaurant and me and my family got to meet him and his bride. It was really awesome. Um, and I'm, I can't wait to do it with more people. So if you're considering going, use the code FOF, Friends of Fabio, because that will save you 10% on either a live ticket or a virtual ticket. Hey, Turbo Bobo, me too, man. Me too. I agree, Pat. Flight Sim community is insanely good. Insanely good. But I forgot to change my tanks. So, probably good because I had used the left tank a bit, remember? So, let's go to the left now. We're going to go pump low. Switch to the left tank. Watch that fuel pressure. Hasn't come down. Pump off. Fuel pressure remains. We're good to go. And now, at one hour, we'll switch again. We'll switch again. By the way, what a great job this uh, texture, whatever did here huh because look i can see the clouds way better right it looks like real it looks like a real piece of plastic that's a bit a bit dark doesn't it S level five level five completed once again that's the second level five we do 20 subs 1400 bits let's go by the way kopi thank you very much four months at prime hey fabio hope you had a great time vacation was too boring on twitch without your streams thank you buddy i had a great time 45 Joes, three months. Thanks for that prime sub, man. Hey, stay pigeon. Appreciate the follow. 
Alex AQ Santiago. Thank you very much, man. Or gracias. No sé si hablas español o no. Hey, Slow Dev is here. I'm doing a world tour with the Cessna Skyhawk. Whoa. This one right here, buddy, is the Turbo Arrow. Whoa. Whoa. Not sure how that happened, but it happened. Oh, look, a little bit of a uh, little bit of mountains down there. This is north of Wales, I believe. Good old but amazing just flight Piper Arrow. All right, all right, all right. So, quick uh, stop here so we can monitor stuff, make sure everything is okay. So, we're going to be flying along until Pull Hill for a little while. Oh, no, that wasn't Wales. That's England still. Wales is way down here. Wales is down here. By the way, uh, if you go off map or off center from the aircraft like this, you're in pan mode, and it will tell you where this point that you clicked is from the aircraft. So, for example, it's pretty cool. Let me, uh, let me go in a little bit and show you. Let's say that you want to know, like, what's your bearing to um, whatever this is, EGNV. Click there and move, and look, it's bearing 097 for 60 miles. Now, if you keep on moving, it doesn't change those numbers. You see what I mean? It only works on the first click, but it's super, super useful to have that. And whenever you're ready to go back to center, just hit back, and she centers again. Ah, Jumbo's back. Welcome back, Jumbo. All right, let's see. This FPS is insane. I agree, man. I agree. Love that visor. I know that visor is awesome. Hey, Neon Tree's here. Hey, Neon. What's up, man? What's that AI that you have to get used to? Let me see. You kind of learn to like it. You're talking about Dobson. Let me see. Hmm. The trim was like in default planes, and it was a bit tough to live with. Interesting. I didn't notice it, but I only updated... Because I only got the sim working today. Well, last night. But... I only updated the plane this morning, but I didn't really fly it. Hmm, okay. After the update. So, it is the update that I have. Hmm. Hey, Julian, what's up, man? So, Julian, I don't know, man. This is pretty worn out. This is pretty worn out. We have some wear and tear here. It's not crazy worn out, but it definitely looks like a used aircraft. You know? You just want a little more, a little more wear and tear. I get it. I get it. Uh, Mephiston, I didn't have any problems with the trim. But I only flew today for the first time in the Arrow. Since updating to SU-5. Oh, so maybe the hotfix did it. Aye, aye. Okay, okay. Hey, friend to all. What's up, man? How do you feel about choosing both uh, tanks if the plane offers it or auto-select if offered? My preference is to use both. With different amounts in each tank uh, to balance load and give warning before empty. Yeah. So, I much prefer to use both. And I agree with the idea of leaving, you know, a little offset so that if it... Because you're in both, right? When one tank runs out, you want to have a little bit in the other tank if you're not paying attention. So, yeah, I agree with that idea, too. Ah, okay, Redoxon. So, it did change up. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Hotfix or whatever, but it worked. Yeah, Bryce, I should, right? Remember, we used little nav map to calculate how much fuel we were going to need. It thought I needed 49, so I loaded up 49. And it thinks that if this is correct, and it did weather forecasting well and all that, we should be landing with 10 gallons. Hey, hello, Sunny. So we'll see. We'll see how much fuel we have when we get there. Hello, little girl. How's it going? Any kind of wheel or buttons for trim? Yeah, so I use buttons, Julian. Still struggling a bit sometimes. Again, depends on the aircraft. Some aircraft are easier to trim than others. The Arrow now, I find it very easy to trim. Sounds like there was a problem there with SU-5, but they fixed it. Um, so yeah, for me, no problems in this aircraft. In some other aircraft, I find it too sensitive. Some of the Carinado aircraft, I find too sensitive in pitch trim. So I use buttons. I have a sliding button on my Hotas, and I... Slide it forward and it presses one button. I slide it backwards and presses a different button. Hello. Um, and it's spring-loaded to go back to the middle. So it works really well because a lot of trim switches in real aircraft, like 
like this trim switch right here because I think this plane also has electric trim. I don't remember, but I think it does. So you have manual trim in between the seats, that wheel that you rotate, but you also have uh, electric trim. In, in most business jets, you just have electric trim. And it's basically a switch exactly like the one in the Warthog. It's centered right now. When you move it, it goes off center and moves the trim one way. And if you take your finger off, it snaps back to the center, neutral. And if you move the other way, pull back, it slides back, starts to move the trim the opposite way, and if you let go, it springs back to center. Really looks interesting. I, I liked C Sharp because I knew C++. I was never a big programmer, but I knew the languages. I wrote some simple stuff. And I found C Sharp so much easier to use because of garbage collector, because of no pointers, a bunch of stuff that C Sharp did. And of course, if you're not a big time programmer, um, the position I was in, that stuff's a lot easier, you know? But C++ has way more control over everything. I guess it depends on what you're gonna use it for, too. You know, if it's a simpler thing, C Sharp can do it in such easier steps, depending on what it is, than C++, you know what I mean? Oh, for the DC-6? I don't know, nice and techy. What's your altitude, buddy? What's your altitude? Yeah, same with the honeycomb trim. Right, because that's a realistic trim from a real aircraft, you know? Okay, we're varying a little tiny bit on the altitude, so I'll do one click forward on the trim. Just see if we can fix our weight there, right? 10,000, trying to get to 15. Okay, yeah, nice. Yeah, if you can go up to like 13, 14, 15, you're going to save up some fuel. And don't forget, nice, you got to get off... Auto rich. Make sure your mixtures go to auto lean because you'll save a lot of fuel that way. Iron trim buttons always two separate buttons. Not always. Not always, Diabeto. They're only separate if you have two different trim se uh, systems. For redundancy, most jets will have two trim systems, right? Most airplanes that are of this caliber, if they have electric trim, like the Mooney, like this here, they'll have one system here and then it's just one switch because your secondary system is the manual trim wheel system <laughs> yeah josh that's true you won't get as far but you can save more fuel that way c sharp is much easier to use yeah and i would hate to do what i do right now in c plus plus i totally agree with you i just like handling things the way i want that's like looks you're like me and not using add-on linker it's like no i will control my add-ons manually every single time Yep. Game engines, you gotta go C++. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can build stuff with C Sharp. But C++ is the way to go. There's no question there. It is a strong west wind. As a matter of fact, I think I can display wind here. Yeah, there it is. Look, it's already been displayed. Ah, eight knots. It's less than I thought. But, is it accurate? So we're at 15,000 feet. Look, close to this crag over here. Let's look at windy and see if it's from the west at eight, eight knots. So we're right here. Let's go wind. We are literally right here. And we are at flight level 150. Yeah, we have 11 knots here. But if I go, look, I can't do 150, but I can do 180. At 180, it's 11 knots. So I guess it's a little stronger in real life. Oh, no, 11 and 11. Yeah, so it's three knots off. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'll take it. I feel that's very acceptable. Because it probably is delayed by a few minutes versus what Windy is using. You know, real deal, I don't know, but I don't think so because it's just looking at community folder, right? Yeah, real deal, but it's not actually using like the API from the sim, you know what I mean? As far as I know, all they're doing is they're just keeping track of what folders you have in the community folder and moving stuff in and out from a parking place somewhere. Interesting, larger. I haven't even heard of Kotlin. What is that? Ah, the map with clouds and windy. Yeah, for sure, looping. For sure. All right, real deal. Yeah, I may try it too. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so, Looping Bell is asking, hey... When you have the clouds here in Windy, let's get rid of this guy to have a full screen here. What, is, uh, what does this stuff mean? So, 
it helps if you zoom out because you can see a little more of what's happening. So you can tell that just by where these are in the world and knowing kind of what the weather is doing in different areas. The brown here means no clouds whatsoever. Clouds are white, okay. But then you also have precipitation mixed in with the clouds. So what's happening here is these green areas, you see, right? They have kind of bluish green. That's where you have precipitation. And if I go to rain and thunder, that's where you see the precipitation, right? So they're combining, they're combining the blue and green and yellow and red if it's really, really strong rain, like here. Oh, here, look. They're combining these with clouds, right? With the white of the clouds to show you. Because if you're looking at clouds, chances are you probably want to look at precipitation too. Does that make sense? So, wherever you see blue, green, yellow, red, purple, when you're looking at clouds, that's precipitation. And clouds themselves are going to be white. Does that make sense? All right, Jumbo. Enjoy your stream, buddy. Yeah, they do, Julian. They do. Uh, low clouds and cloud bays are good ways to find stuff like that, right? And then cloud bays. Look. Pretty cool. And you can see here on the bottom, look. There's always a legend here, right? So purple is zero. The clouds are touching the ground. There's fog. Uh, red is a thousand. That's usually what we use for VFR, IFR, and typically red is the color used for that. Uh, marginal VFR from 1,000 to 1,500 feet is blue, just like in Sky Vector. So look, if we look at Sky Vector, we can actually see those colors here over Ireland. Watch. Right? Oh, and even, even here in the UK, in Wales. Oh, although that's not matching as well. But, but... I have some blue because marginal VFR on the southwest, right, of Ireland. Ah, uh, there it is, some blue. Okay. Green means that uh, there's precipitation. There's clouds, actually. There's clouds, but they're 5,000 feet or so, so it's VFR. Are we sure raining where we are going? It doesn't look like it raining. Uh, I'm flying over blue skies right now. No, I wasn't sure, Bryce. You're the one that asked what, was, what would happen if it was raining when we got there. So I, I talked about it, but I don't know. Uh, as a matter of fact, in Sky Vector, I don't think it is right now. There was a chance of weather moving over it, and it's this weather right here. If we look at satellite IR, look, some of this weather is moving west. And so there was a chance that some of this weather was going to move over Rotterdam, and it still might before we get there. And so maybe the weather is going to close. Look, the weather is over here, over Stansted. It's hard, uh, uh, sorry, heavy rain, which means the visibility is down to 2,000 meters because of the heavy rain. So we'll see when we uh, when we get there. It's chugging it down in London. Yeah, that's the stuff we just saw. Just saw. Look, moving over London. This stuff right here, right? It's moving in from the west. And look, yeah, loads of rain there. More rain coming, and it looks like it's gonna keep on going. Very cool. Very cool. Very nice. Ah, sunshine and higher clouds. And Gerald, that makes sure that makes sense, right? Look, once again, right now, the sky is clear over Rotterdam. There is weather moving in from the west. This weather right here. It's moving across the channel right now. It may keep on raining and get there, or it may dissipate and nothing gets to Rotterdam. Hard to tell. If we look at the TAF for Rotterdam, look at that. They do think some rain is going to make it there. So, first of all, let's see what time we're going to get there. So we go to flight... Oh, there's a message here. Arrival wave... Oh, okay, yeah, I don't need to know that. So, let's go to flight plan. I believe... I believe I can figure out what time I'm going to get here. Uh, let's see. I don't remember how to do it. No. Wait, waypoint info? Comcast, you just no. Hello, Shadow. You sexy beast laughing face. <laughs> Tomcat Sky, what's up, man? Five months. Thank you very much. Tier 2. Let's go, buddy. Thank you so much. Hey, Precogs. Oh, good name, man. I like that movie. TTV Jeff uh, and uh, Sky West 4LK. No. Skywalker. Skywalker 006. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that, guys. All right. 
Uh, can't recall where I go to look how long it's going to be, like my estimated time of arrival. We're going to have to figure this out. Okay, maybe it's in flight plan and I can edit these guys over here. So, menu. Uh, no, 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 no. I thought I could edit those. I can edit these. Look, if you're at the map, menu, uh, change fields. That changes these guys right here, right? So, you can click on this guy and say, hey, I want something else there. And one of them is ETA. But then I have to go all the way to the other waypoints. Estimated time of arrival. No, there we go. There we go. Okay, so ETA. Uh, there's no progress page that I know of. There's no progress page that I know of. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so that's all right, though. 2032 is when we are estimating arriving there. Okay, so if we look at the terminal area forecast, that's the future weather forecast, right? Uh, second line, the one that starts with TEF. So EHRD, that's Rotterdam, 091052 Zulu. It was issued August 9th at 1052 Zulu, so a while back, right? And it's valid for 0912 slash 1018. From August 9th at 1200 Zulu slash until August 10th at 1800 Zulu. Okay. And they just say the wind is going to be 220 at 15 knots. Visibility is greater than 10 kilometers, scattered 2500. But then look at that tempo. Next line, tempo. Temporarily... From 12 to 1500, that's 0912 slash 0915, August 12th to August, August 9th at 1200, August 9th at 1500, doesn't matter, we're arriving there later, so let's go to the next one, becoming, okay, this one is from 18 to 2000, right, 0918 slash 0920, wind 2108, probability of that is 30, but look at the next one, temporarily, 0922 until 1012, until 12 o'clock the next day, 22015, visibility 7,000 meters, light rain showers. So the rain is going to get there, but they don't, they don't think it's going to get there until 2200 today, which is an hour and a half after we're supposed to get there. So we should fly through that weather, but actually beat it before it gets to Rotterdam. We'll see if that happens or not. Oh, Bedworth. Where is Bedworth? There is Bedworth in DC. DC? What is DC? No, I know Discord, but I mean, what channel? In real life? No, maybe not. Hey, Bryce, good picture there of you flying with us, man. Quite a few people. <coughs> okay. MSFS, Pics and Vids. Yeah, yeah, okay. I gotcha. Yeah, it's looking pretty heavy. It's looking pretty heavy. There's the DC-6, too. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Got it. Nice to attack you. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, cool. So, um, I don't really care not having wind here, so I'm going to leave the ETA up there. Does anybody know if I can look at that ETA anywhere else? Uh, and what about the windy sky section that enables you to find the right altitude to fly 14,000? So, that wasn't the sky section looping. That was the wind section. I basically looked at wind at different altitudes. You can cut the atmosphere in windy in different layers, in different altitudes. And then it shows you the wind just at that altitude, right? That's what we showed when we looked at wind here. And used this, this dragging slider over here to go from surface wind all the way to 14,000. You can keep going, by the way. You can go all the way to 45,000. See that flight level 450? And then you see the wind at that altitude. But we're not going that high, so you go look for an altitude close to or the same as what you're going to fly, and then you can see what the wind is. That's what helped me determine what altitude I was going to fly today. Hmm, okay. Yeah, Crimson is here. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Whoa, Daniele Brambilla is here. Como estai, mi amico? Or amico mio? If the 750 is similar to the Flight 1 one, it should be under utilities, along with a TOD calculator and a bunch of other stuff. Let's look. Let's look. Utilities. 
So there is VNAV. Oh, look. The other stuff isn't working yet. It would be trip planning, I believe. Interesting. VNAV does work, looks like. Yeah, target altitude. Uh, vertical speed profile offset before a target waypoint. Okay, so that's cool. We may use this for arrival. But the other ones don't. Interesting. Hey, something to consider if you're considering buying the product. Hey, Daniele, come stai? Ah, yes, Lupin, you're very welcome. No, not today, go hybrid. As a matter of fact, what are we doing here? Hey, look at this. Hey, hey. Right on the money. Not bad. Not bad. Let me center my heading bug. Always good. Remember to have that centered in case it drops out. Something happens. You never know. Almost over Pool Hill. Oh, the weather is definitely opening up. Look at that. We're leaving the heavier stuff behind and it's opening up SPK like we thought it would. House, right? Very months. nice. Very nice. Steakhouse. Eight months, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that Prime sub. Really appreciate it. Matoto and Kahir. Thank you very much for the follows, guys. Very, very nice. Uh, maybe. I probably should. You need some help? No, I can do it. I can definitely take a break right now. I'm not on vet sim. Guys, I'm gonna go help Abby uh, bring in some groceries. And uh, I'll be right back. All right, so in the meantime, we'll do the usual. We'll go to an intermission um, and I'll play some, uh, well, some videos that I've been accumulating to show you guys. So let me, uh, let me get there first. What's that? Yes, that'd be great. That would be great. Let me see here. Oh yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, it's new, don't know if you guys have seen it or not. Oh. But I think this will be a good one to play. I think this will be a good one to play. So stand by. Stand by to stand by. Actually guys, I'm gonna leave it here instead of going to intermission screen. And I'll just put it over. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Hey! SNK Industries, thank you very much for the follow, buddy. Appreciate that. All right, let's turn this on, and I shall be Phone right back. Let's do this, this. Hey, there you go. All right, guys, I will be right back. Enjoy it. November 43074, Philly Approach. If you are on this frequency, you need to contact me on 124.35. You're entering a uh, active TFR. November 43074, Philly. Philadelphia Approach, Local 01, I'm passing 11.5 on its intercept for TOI off my nose. 20 miles. Noble 01, Philly approach, Roger. Philly altimeters 3015, proceed as requested. Copy 3015, Noble 01, I'm a radar contact. Approach, Noble 01, uh, request location of uh, TOI. Uh, Noble 01 is at your 9 o'clock there in a mile, about uh, south of you there at 2200. Okay, Noble 01, I am visual TOI. Noble zero one, Roger. Point five, I need a block out the tube for that two to one of uh we'll call it two to four. Noble zero one, the block altitude is approved as requested. Four three zero seven four, fully approach near uh, the Messina VOR. Uh, you are being intercepted by military aircraft, are you up to frequency? Noble zero one, intercepted by heading. Noble zero one, Roger. Or four three zero seven four, fleet approach. If you're up this frequency, you are being intercepted by military aircraft. Uh, please turn north immediately and advise. 
Beer One, leaving your frequencies for guard. Approach Noble Beer One, leaving your frequencies for guard. Noble Zero One, Roger. Four three zero seven four, fully approach. You are being intercepted by military armed aircraft. You are entering closed airspace. Turn north immediately. Again, the number four three zero seven four near the Medina VOR. You are entering closed airspace. You are being intercepted by armed um, military aircraft. Turn north immediately. Contact Philly approach. Uh, no one two four point three five. November 43076, this is Philadelphia Tower on 118.5 and 135.1. If you can hear me, please uh, come up. November 43074, Philly Tower. November 43074, Philly Tower. At 43074, Philly Approach, you're inside restricted airspace. You're at 2F16 circling around you. Are you up to frequency? November 43074, Philly Approach. November 43074, Philly Approach. Uh, 12 west of Philly International, with Philly International. November 43074, Philly Approach, squawk 0217 and IDEN. November 43074, you are radar contact 10 northwest to the uh, Philadelphia Airport. Philly altimeter is 3015. Cleared into the Bravo airspace. Yes, November 43074, expect runway 17 at Philadelphia. And uh, you are cleared in the Philly Bravo airspace as well as the outer ring of the TFR. Yeah. November 43074, nope. possible pilot deviation. Advise, Advise to cut when you're ready to copy a phone number for when you're on the ground. Zero seven four. Stand by. Roger. November 43074, are you ready to copy the phone number? Negative, stand by. November 43074, the tower's going to give you a phone number. You do have the field in sight, correct? That's affirmative. November 074, roger. Continue inbound for runway 17. Contact Philly Tower on 118.5. Number 43074, Philly Tower, good afternoon, wind 250 at 12, runway 17, clear to land. Yeah, yeah, we'll take care of that when you're on the ground, 074, uh, runway 17, clear to land, you familiar? Okay, very good. Noble 01, Philly. Noble zero 01, request. Noble zero 01, Philly. Request a vector and a climb back to the capital enable. Noble zero 01, you can climb, uh, turn left heading 330. You can climb to, what else are you looking for? Uh, eventually back to the cap, Noble zero 01, copy 330, I'm at 2,200 feet. Noble zero 01, you can climb uh, just 12,000, 1, 2, 12,000. Noble zero 01, uh, on heading a 330 and the climb to 1, 2, 12,000, uh, request that uh, expedited table. Yep, Noble zero 01, you can expedite uh, expedite your climb. Noble zero 01, expedite and climb. See, and Noble 01, I'm sorry, one more time, you just want to climb all the way back up, correct? A for Noble zero 01. Noble zero 01, Roger. <laughs> Noble zero 01, you can fly heading 220, and uh, you can climb uh, to the cap. Uh, heading 220, Noble zero 01, and uh, climbing back to uh, published cap altitude. Thank you, ma'am, for all the help. Appreciate it. And I'll have a frequency change for you here shortly for Noble 01. Say bye. Noble zero 01. Noble zero 01, contact Washington Center 132.52. Yeah. November 074, taxi Golf, Delta, and Alpha, and let me know when you're ready to copy the number. Delta. 
Rick, uh, 3670 fly heading 265 from a 27 right, clear for takeoff. Thanks for your patience. Clear for takeoff, 27 right heading 265, you're welcome. Brickyard, 367. King Air 400 Sierra Charlie, Philly Roma 27 right, line for weight. 27 right, line for weight, Sierra Charlie. Uh, the number is area code 215-492. Okay, Upon, take care. Hello, everybody. Hello. So, uh, wow. Huh? Wow. That was unfortunate. Or unfortunate. Well, Pugstone, we never know what happens. Um, that's going to be between the FAA and him or her, whatever happens. Um, so we never really know. Katie's, what's up? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, look, I don't think it was intentional, right? Uh, I think it was just lack of situational awareness. Um, I was surprised. I was shocked, actually, that when he called approach, when he finally got on the radio and called approach, um, approach didn't say anything right away, right? Approach just asked or acted like everything was normal for a while and then gave him a phone number. Um, I thought in that situation, as soon as he got on the radio, people would be like, dude, you know, but they didn't. Uh, so yeah, who knows? It's whatever the FAA is going to determine, but because I don't think it was egregious, uh, I don't think it was severe, right? Um, I think they're just going to probably have a stern talking to uh, maybe put a letter in their file. I don't even know if that's a thing. But as far as the FA is concerned, they're pretty old school, so maybe that's a thing, right? Hmm. Off schedule descents here. What's up, buddy? How's it going, man? Good to see you. JP with JP three months. Let's go, man. Thank you. For three oh. Hey, Fabio, haven't been here for a long time. Have watched the VODs, though. I was thinking the same, right? JP, that's why I said that. It's like, wow, it's been a while. Thank you very much, man. Three months. And thanks for watching the VODs. That's really cool. Sorry you couldn't be here, but that's really, really cool. So it reminds me of one gorgeous Sunday morning. By the way, there's the 15,000. Let's try and retrim. Flying into Phoenix. Approach tells uh, the Delta jet to keep his eyes out for a Baron 58 in the Class Bravo without clearance. Not talking to anyone. Yeah, sounds, sounds about right. Sounds about right. Delta pilot responds, we'll keep our eyes out for the doctor. Ouch. Accurate, but savage. Accurate, but savage. Oh, man. Guys, Abby's got some music going on. Is that too loud? Again, I'm not, you know, getting great frame rates here on my my uh, OBS monitors. I'm checking to see if it's uh, if it's too loud. Can't hear it, they say. Okay, crank it up, baby. If they can hear it, she says she's in a she's in a feisty mood today, man. She said, well, if they can't hear it, well, then too bad. Not over two engines. All right. Yeah, we're dumps in mine and yours, right? Okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Try to keep it professional. But at the same time, you know, allow her to have her day the way she wants to have her day. Uh, turn up the game volume. Yeah, sorry. I turned it down for the break and forgot to bring it back up. There we go. That might be a little too much. Maybe right here. Maybe right here. Maybe this is a good compromise. All right. Thanks for the reminder there. Uh, appreciate it. Clark. Hey, Clark. How's it going, buddy? Let's see. Oh, interesting. Iceberg. You know, uh, I don't think there's like a crazy number of people around me. I don't have name tags turned on. I've been keeping them off just to keep things a little more realistic. I enjoy it that way. It's much harder to find people. Even though, you know, you can still see their lights, their nav lights stand out a lot. 
Um, but anyways, if there are too many people, it could be that it's rendering other people before it renders me. Depends on how far you are from me. Or it could be that the servers are just hiccuping right, right now. Right? Hey, I'm scheduled. Thank you very much for the 100 bits, man. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. How's the flying out there, by the way? Getting busier or not really? Oh, yeah. Fuel tank at one hour. Oh, yeah. Actually, almost exactly. Because remember, I was late a few minutes on the other one. So this should be working pretty well. Yeah, and look. Just under 20. Just under 20. We're good. So fuel pump too low. Eyes on that fuel pressure. Flip it. Fuel pressure stays the same. Wait a few seconds. Off it goes. Stays the same. That's a successful transfer. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, Pogzone, uh, there were some people in chat in the past that had tried it. I don't know if they're here today, though. I haven't tried it. I want to try it, but I haven't tried it. Black Diamond's here, too. What's up, man? Oh, off schedule. You're too much. Whenever Fabio streams, I stop everything I'm doing. Says, says the real 7-3 pilot right whatever man thank you but come on hey any chance to have a look at your flight sim setup just curious yeah adventure what exactly do you mean hey thor what's up dude how's it going man it's a great name thor eta is in utc yes it is as a matter of fact i think one of the things you can do here in one of these fields is Oh, time to top a descent. That's cool. Let's see what else we can do. Right off. Wind speed and direction. Next waypoint ID. Okay. GPS position altitude. Interesting. So GPS altitude. GPS can give you altitude. It's just not very accurate. So we don't normally use it. Unless you have WAS. Unless you have a differential GPS correction, basically. If you have a correction system like WAS. Um, otherwise, it's not very accurate. Uh, vertical speed, time to top of descent. That's pretty cool, right? Vertical speed required. Oh, so this is now sort of related to VNAV because remember, we can set up a top of descent or VNAV, right? Uh-oh. Weird. Uh, okay, it's back. My chat just went full black. Uh, Windows is just doing things to me just to be like, oh, I crashed. Haha, <laughs> psych. All right, vertical speed uh, required waypoint track angle error. How many degrees you're off from where you need to be to get there. Estimated fuel flow. Let's see if this works. 60 pounds per hour. That does not work. <laughs> that. Oh, yeah, no, 10 gallons per hour. That's correct. It's in pounds. That does work. And let's change our fuel flow here and see if it changes it up there. Ready? Let's, let's add some. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, this is beautiful. This is useful to have. Let's go back to 60. Wow. I can set it pretty accurately, too. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Uh, let's see here. Time to waypoint. Time of arrival. Okay. Waypoint cross track. Course to steer. Magnetic heading. Waypoint bearing. Distance to destination. That's pretty cool, too. Distance to waypoint. Ground speed. Ground magnetic track. And waypoint desired track. Okay, so I guess not. I guess not. Uh, your desk and the peripherals you might have. Okay, so adventure. Um, well, hold on. Hold on. Oh, flat ram broke in the 750. Oh, no way, Redopsin. Interesting. Did you have it saved? And that's how you uh, restarted. Is that what happened? So, Bryce, normally I set a timer on my iPhone. I just set a, a 30 minute timer and every time it goes off, I just reset the timer. Uh, today, I'm using the clock that's on the yoke, which doesn't have an alarm, which makes it harder for me to remember. Chat's helping as usual. So, so far, so good. <laughs> yeah, off schedule, exactly, adventure. You have to show yours first, buddy. <laughs> oh, that sounds so creepy. All right. GTN on, P on PMS50.com, yeah. Free version, right, right. So, yeah, the GTN uh, GLV pilot, by the way, hello, is at PMS50.com. Um, there's a free version and there's a paid version. 
Right, the paid version has more features. Like, for example, if you want to use Airways in your flight plan, like I did, uh, which is awesome, you know, but not needed, but it's awesome, um, then you can, uh, you can do it. As I have here, look, I have different Airways that I linked to different entry and exit waypoints. It's really cool. Uh, you can go to any waypoint and see the Airways that fly past it. Look, it will give you all of that, which is pretty awesome. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Guys, one second. We're trying to be professional here, guys, and uh, Abby was going to make some uh, less than professional noises. That sounds like it was farting. Well, I didn't say I what you were doing. The garbage disposal. Yeah, it was, a gar it was the garbage disposal, guys. It was the garbage disposal. I'm going to get myself in trouble today. All right. You get yourself in trouble every day. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? <laughs> She's right, too. She's right. 200 feet off. Let's correct. Hope the couch is comfortable, says a fit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, buddy. Ibunna said, Abby farting again. Yeah, Dalmatian. You're going to see, like, for three or four frames, you're going to see something entering the left side of my video so fast that it will only take three or four frames before it hits me, and then everything's going to go black. She's right. It's a great answer. Pick your battles carefully. So true. So true off schedule. Just posted some pictures in, uh, in real life pics, okay? on what I have been up to in the last days. Oh, JP. Oh, you tease. You tease. Let's see what's going on. Oh, oh JP. Dude. No way. No way. This is amazing. Oh, my God. Look at this rift rate. Wait. I'm going to guess. Can I guess? Hold on. I didn't read anything. Hopefully you didn't say anything. Hold on. Hmm. Wow, okay. Okay, is this Eastern Europe? Let's start there. What is this? Oh, thank you. Is this Eastern Europe? No, not Eastern Europe, okay. Hmm. All right, GeoGuessers, come on. Definitely a, a caldera here, right? An old caldera? No, not definitely. No, no, no. This could be just the angle. But I mean, look, there's another rim here, so I think it is. But you know what I mean? This could be just the ridge to another peak, and we're seeing it at an angle that makes it look... <clears throat> Okay, some people are guessing Norway. I mean, lots of... Ah, I don't know, man. Could be Norway. Could be Norway. Hold on. Let's look at another one. Let's look at another one. Okay, this one is going to help. Wait. 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 Is this... Olesund? Is this Olesund? Wait for it. Ninja is thinking, perhaps Olesund. It is! <laughs> it is Norway. It's Olesund in Norway. We've flown over this part right here, guys. Right here on stream. Do you remember this? The airport is up here on the left. Oh, man. Oh, man. What cool pictures are these? Tunser! With 25 bucks, Tensor, hello, sir. Thank you very much for the tip. How are you? I saw you went online yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday with a giveaway. I couldn't stop by, man. I was trying to get this thing to work. That's awesome, man. Thank you, Tensor. Great to see you. Wow, Olison. Now, this, I don't know 
Is it that close to Wallison? Because it definitely looks like a caldera. Is this really an old extinct volcano? Wow, in Bjordli. Okay. I don't know where that is, JP. I'll have to look. And look at this. This is pretty awesome, too. Look, it's an old 172. I think it's a 172. With some retrofitted Garmin instruments. Look at this. That's awesome, man. Old school stuff with new school stuff. How cool. How cool. Hold on. Let me look at my sim. Oh. Just make sure what I'm doing here. All right? Here we are. Everything seems okay. There's an aircraft right there. Hello, my friend. Going back to 15 because I was off trim just a bit. Look at the ground speed. Hold on. 125. Look at the indicated. At 8,000 feet. Oh, buddy. You got some tailwind. You got some tailwind. That's beautiful. That is so cool. Yeah, there it is. Lima November. Some Look, some wood over here. This looks very Norwegian. This looks very Norwegian. That's awesome with the rock mountains, right? That's so cool, dude. So cool. So that's why this looked wild, too. Right? Look at this valley over here. It's almost a rift. Not a valley. Right? Road right there. Going over the river. Oh, it looks like maybe some falls over here. From the other river. Maybe some tiny ones. That's so cool, JP. Thanks for sharing these, man. So cool. Look at this last one. Oh, look at look at this. Flat, flat, flat. Almost vertical. Almost vertical. Three thousand feet. Nah, it's probably two thousand feet. That's nuts. A glitch in the sim. Yeah, it kind of did look like that iceberg. Man, Norway. What a place. And what a great, great thing to have an opportunity to go fly over at JP. So cool, man. So cool. Hey, really glad you shared these with us. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And I'm happy for, uh, for you. Happy to have you go fly. That's super cool. Hey, who's on board next month? It's after cold. What about next month? Who's on going? Oh, to FSC. So, guys, Abby wants to know how many people here are going to be attending FSC. But put a 1 if you're going to do it in person, a 2 if you're doing it virtually. Let's get a count. Let's see how many people. You should do a poll. Let's go percentages. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let's do a poll. Yeah, why are we doing that? Hold on. Let's do a poll. Jeez. Hey. Pro streamer. That's right. That's what's happening. That's what you got. That's very true. <laughs> so true. All right. Okay, here we go. You're going to have two minutes to vote. Why am I doing two minutes instead of a minute? A minute sounds plenty. But hey, hello, hello, hey. For those of you out there not paying attention, doing your job or, I don't know, feeding your kids, anything useless like that, um, hey, hey, pay attention. We have a poll going. We're trying to figure out how many people are going to FSC. Hey, 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 you out there. Take 10 seconds off your day and come answer the poll. Thank you. This service announcement was paid for by the Rockford Brothers. Streaming. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Exactly. Exactly. Just calling you out, buddy. Calling you out. Sorry to bother you. I'm trying to figure out how to check the wind when I land. Ah, Bryce. Go to Sky Vector. Go to Sky Vector. Oh, look. Oh, look. What's happening? Clouds are coming down. It was green before. Now it's blue. Okay. Um, and. Uh, Hover your mouse over it to look at the METAR. Then you can see the wind. Look, that first line under the title weather station, Bryce. I'll teach you how to read this. That first line, the one that starts with E-H-R-D. Those four letters are the code for Rotterdam. E-H-R-D. So it just means the weather for Rotterdam is what's followed. Great. Next one is a bunch of numbers with a Z at the end. 
that's the day and then the hour and the minutes so august 9th they don't put the month in there because this changes so often you should know that it's the day of today or tomorrow or yesterday you don't need to know the month so just zero nine means august wait sorry august 9th right uh 16 25 is the time 16 hours 25 minutes but that's zulu time so you got to take four hours out of that for my case or however many hours you're off from that but i know this was 31 minutes ago right so in my case i take four out and that was 31 minutes ago then auto just means it's an automatic station that's generating this information right now it's not a human out there doing the measuring it's just a, a robot it's not really a robot it's just a sensor right but you could say it's a bot that has a sensor out there measuring the wind and a bunch of other stuff and then reporting it to the internet so uh that next set of numbers with kt at the end that's what we need to know for the wind that's two three zero one four well the first three numbers are the heading the wind's coming from so two three zero if you think about north right the east is 90 south is 180 two three zero is past 180 past south but before you get to west so southwest two three zero the direction the heading southwest and then one four kt 14 knots so that's how where the wind's coming from and how strong the wind is blowing that's how you read those all right so uh, i think you guys only see the one answer in here right so hold on oh icing how did this happen what happened i didn't even see this happening whoa 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 that's what happens that's what happens okay yeah all right so 15,000 icing what's the temperature man it shouldn't really be icing this cold shouldn't be icing but okay okay microsoft um i got plenty of altitude and the the ground below me is pretty flat i'm gonna proceed on and just see how much how much how quickly the icing is accumulating because maybe it just happened a little bit and it's not not adding anymore so let me just keep an eye out here for a second we still got plenty of airspeed we're not gonna fall out of the sky just yet so let me monitor one of these patterns here and just kind of kind of see what's happening yeah dc it is but i want to make sure it's not increasing before i do that i mean we're in the soup right now and it doesn't look like it's it's increasing does it to avoid uh when buying stuff from marketplace yeah i bought the c90 from bt studio so Augie, I don't know BT Studio or the C90. Um, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of what Captain Sim is doing right now. Captain Sim has done some pretty cool stuff in the past. Just in between here, I'm going to look and see. There's some people higher, some people far above me. Mm, it does look like it's increasing now, doesn't it? Now it's increasing. All right, so if I wanted to get to an altitude that was a lot warmer than this it would have to be positive for it to help with the icing right or i can go up i need to make a decision rather quickly here well if i'm about 12 degrees far from that and it's two degrees per thousand feet that would be six thousand feet that i'd have to descend to so from 15 down to nine i could do that or i can climb and try to get into colder weather but that means i'm going to keep the icing that i have accumulated already on the aircraft it's not going to melt it just will stop increasing after a certain altitude I think I'm going to go down and try to melt this off. Um, I hope that the airways I'm on here can do this. Of course, in real life, I wouldn't be able to do this unless I checked. Where do I check? Well, you can check right over here. Let's turn on our aircraft so we see where we are. And here we go. Minimum is flight level 70 for the airway that we're at right now. So we can do that. So let's go down to flight level 70 and see if we can get rid of this ice. All right. Yep, definitely more ice accumulating. So I'm going to take my power back instead of changing trim or anything like that, right? She's been going up and down. That's the up and down drafts we're experiencing. I'm going to bring my power back. It's currently at 28. I'm going to bring it back 10 uh, inches. I'm going to go back to about 18. There we go. And we're going to see what kind of vertical speed we're going to get on the way down. She's still going to fly at about 155 knots because that's what I had her trim for. But we'll see what kind of vertical speed that's going to give us. So... Captain Sin uh, is doing some uh, just, what do we call it? Not shady, 
because they're doing it out in the open. Um, questionable stuff of, of questionable quality. They're putting stuff out of questionable quality out um, in the world, and it's in Marketplace for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know if it's available for the Xbox. I don't know how Microsoft is handling that. We're definitely getting into heavier icing now. Let's turn our defrost on, see if they can help. Um, so I'm going to put the heat to on and the fan to high. There we go. And defrost is on also. Let's see if that will work. In the meantime, we're descending a little, little bit too fast for my liking. I know she's not stable yet on that speed, so this is still varying. But it's still a little too much. I want to go down basically 1,000 feet per minute. So I'm going to add some power here. I'm going to go to about 23, see what that does. All right, in between clouds. So we're definitely getting out of some stuff. There's some stuff below us, though. Okay. All right. Oh, pedo heat. Yes, thank you. Forgot the pedo heat. There we go. I wonder if that shouldn't just always be on based on the checklist, too, and if it's missing on the checklist. Anyways, so Captain Sim, I would avoid. I also don't like... Um, what are they called nowadays? Hold on. done ah black box simulations uh i'm not a fan uh, there's quite a few people here that have their products are happy with their products um and that's that's great i rather it be that way but they're known for some shady behavior and i'm from the time of sims where I was around for that behavior, so I'm not a fan of them personally. Therefore, I don't use their products. <clears throat> right. Nice. A lot of people seem to like their current products, and like I said, I hope they turn the corner. Um, so I hope it stays that way, is all I'm going to say about that. Um, looks like it's either getting worse or better. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um... What else? Any other... Ah, so I would say this is not one to steer clear of, uh, but just so you know, Carinado, and I'm adding a little power so we, we stabilize at about 1,000 feet per minute here until I get to 7,000 feet. Carinado makes some excellent looking aircraft. Um, some of them fly really well, like they should, like by the book. The only thing with Carinado is sometimes, uh, or all the times, they're very slow to update their stuff. Um, and they don't seem to listen to feedback as much as some other developers. So it's more about knowing what you're getting yourself into rather than, oh, don't buy this. You know? Yeah, price come. I have a couple of Carinado products that I really, I really love. No, Sticks, we kept it on. Thanks for reminding me. And look, pressure has come down some. So we're going to have to refill that um, at our next opportunity. Okay, let's see the temperature. Yeah, it's almost zero, so let's keep going down to 7,000. It should hit zero at about 9,000, right, according to our calculations, just about. Let's see what happens. I don't know, Augie. I don't know much about the Xbox side, to be honest. Yeah, cold. We, we flew over some area that, to be honest, was predicted to have a little bit of icing in that weather site that we looked early on remember there was a little bit of an area that was going to have a little bit of light light to moderate icing look 9,000 and yeah we're about zero degrees we're at minus one so uh or minus two maybe so very close to what we expected so from here to 7,000 we should start getting warm enough that we're going to see this ice melt i guess i guess this isn't doing much yeah exactly i love their mooney their mooney is awesome Right? So, again, I'm not saying, I'm not speaking badly about Carinado. What I am saying is, what is a fact is that sometimes they take a long time to update stuff and they don't seem to listen to feedback from the community as much. It's not that they don't listen. They just don't listen to it as much as some other, other OEMs, if you will, those people that make planes. No, Katie's, but I'm glad you mentioned that because I wanted to talk about this just so you guys know that it's out there because it's awesome. So we have on our Discord, uh, if you go over here under MSFS Lounge, 
we have a section here called SU5 Updates Only. And it's an awesome place where everybody in the community, a bunch of people, have been posting about the stuff that has been updated to SU5. It's an easy place to go to and see everything that has been updated. And one of the things posted in here is a list of what's coming for the CRJ updates that is set to be released very soon, but is not out yet. But here it is, upcoming CRJ update. Um, it's going to be to 1.0.6. So it fixed, uh, basically, uh, flag reset after engine school of PEX off light and cast messages. I wonder if this is, remember, when the lights were off and I complained about the PEX light being off when they were off. Maybe that's it. Fixed missing symbols on MFD. I wish they were more descriptive. I don't know what symbols were missing. Formula correction for IAS calculation. I wonder if that's because... I wonder if that's because the... Um, oh, you know what I just realized? Look, because we descended so much and I haven't pulled my power back, manifold pressure is back to 30, so she's almost leveled off. So I got to come back to about 20, 25, I think it was, that I had. So she'll continue descending down to 7,000. All right. So I don't know exactly why that happened, right? But it's there, okay. Uh, left and right selection in MFD menus... Okay, I didn't know that was broken either. Fixed audio panel volume controls for comm radios. Okay. Several fixes in aircraft config files. Airline names, call signs. Flaps indication 1 on ICAS for lever position 1. Oh, physical flaps position equals 0. So I guess it was getting stuck at 1 maybe. Fix the PA call emergency button push lights or push button lights. Okay. Dyslexic I am, apparently. Camera zoom increased for FCP and fuel defuel panel cameras. Ah, the default cameras that they program for us we actually have never used the fuel defuel panel i'm going to start using that because we're about to start recording the crj training that's right friends i'm about to start recording the entire series of training for the crj waiting for this update make sure everything we need is going to be working or at least for the early lessons and then remember i'm going to record those here on stream anybody watching it live will get it for free after that i'm going to edit that stuff take the vod offline and we're going to start selling the training course when we have enough lessons built up um so you can get it for free if you're here live, and that's a one and done. Or you can buy the course and watch it forever, which is pretty awesome, too. Up to you, right? Yeah, so off schedule, for sure. IMC and IFR, VMC, VFR, those are always, always important. All right, guys, let's just check here. Um, oof, my temperature is, you know what? There could be a little temperature inversion going on because my temperature is staying pretty much at zero. Just under zero actually and by 7,000 and I can't go lower on the airway here but what if I could go lower physically just not on the airway could I do that well you'd have to ask ATC chances are they would say no right and we're about to fly over Pole Hill though so maybe the next airway is going to be different so let me level off at seven and let's go look quickly at uh, the next airway here oh it's nine it's worse we have to go up well Although uh, that is the case, I am looking for... Well, I can't even see it here. But I'm pretty sure there's no, no terrain here for us to hit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to continue going down because I need to get rid of this icing, right? In real life, I'd be able to be VFR at this point because I'm under the cloud. So I could talk to ATC and get all approval to go below 7,000. But more important than anything, because I'm not talking to ATC, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to Sky Vector and look at the quadrant altitudes for where I am, right here at Pole Hill turning, right? And I want to make sure I'm not going to be close to terrain. I'm sure it's because of airspace, but I want to be sure. So, 1,700, 1,700, 1,900, uh, 1,600. Next one is 1,500, then... Okay, where is this one? 1,500 is down there. 1,400, yeah. So, as expected... 1,200. I can definitely go lower. So I am going lower, uh, pretending that I have ATC approval to do this, or that I am switching to VFR, and I'm going to proceed VFR under these clouds. All right. Cool, 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 cool. So back to 25. There we go. And I'm going to keep on going down until I have enough of a positive temperature. I am already positive, but I need a little more to start melting this stuff a little quicker. It's starting to melt. Starting to melt. So maybe let's level off at 5,000. And then we can even go up. 
uh, back to 9,000 just to follow the IFR routes around here. Um, and we should be able to stay out of clouds, right? While being able to gain that altitude. But we'll have no more icing on the aircraft, so that will work. Yeah, it's definitely melting, so that's good. Hey, yeah, Rock, I guess you just came back. Rock, it was much worse. Up at altitude, we iced up when we're in the soup, and so we started descending to an altitude where uh, we can melt this stuff and then maybe go back up to an altitude of 9,000. Yeah, off schedule, exactly. Yep, it's usually plus 10 to minus 10, right? Um, although what will happen too is, yeah, exactly. Sometimes you can ice up as low as minus 20. You have to be in the right conditions for it, but it can happen. Uh, but most, most of the icing is between plus 5 and minus 5. Because after that, as off schedule is saying, it gets too cold, which means, remember, it's only icing the aircraft because the water is in the transition state between being liquid and becoming a solid. And so it's kind of like snow, right? And it can be very sticky. Um, and so as the plane flies through it, it hits the plane and it can accumulate, or the water is below zero. It's super cooled, but it's still in water state, which, which can happen. If it doesn't have a nucleus to, um, um, or a, a, an impact, right? A physical force to kick off the crystallization, it can actually go below zero degrees Celsius and stay liquid. You can do this with purified water in your freezer, in a bottle. But then as soon as you hit it, as soon as you shake it, or as soon as that drop hits the aircraft or is hit by the aircraft and is shaken a lot, right? Here we go, at 5,000, we definitely have cleared up all the icing. So let's go back up, see if we can get to 9,000. So I'm gonna add power now. We're gonna climb at 41. No, no, 33, sorry. 33 is what we use for a cruise climb. There we go, adjust that mixture for the altitude and let's see what kind of climb rate we get and see if we can get back to 9,000. Um, so, super cooled uh, liquid droplets, SLDs, are the biggest danger in, in flying when you, when you talk about icing, right? But the other icing can happen too, where icing accumulates on the aircraft because it's that sort of slush ice that uh, is gonna stick because it's sticky by itself when it hits the aircraft. When you get below that temperature, all the water in the air has already turned into ice. Ice by itself, think about snow crystals, right? If it's very cold and the snow crystals are just pure ice, they're dry, they don't stick to anything, right? Have you ever, if you live in a place where you have uh, snowstorms, when it is cold enough, right, you get a lot of snow on top of stuff, but as soon as you blow it or, or try to brush it, it all comes off because it's not actually stuck to anything. If you're flying through that stuff in an aircraft, None of it is going to stick to the aircraft, right? It's uh, so flying through cold snow, dry snow, no problems. It's just you're going to see it going by, but it's not going to stick to anything, which is pretty awesome to think about the physics of all that, how that works. Peterman with a prime sub. Hey, are you new here, Peterman? Thanks, buddy. I don't recognize the name. Thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate it. Nitropic, uh, Zebra Fugazi, Jim, Volstead, and Peliceta. Thank you very much for the follows, guys. Appreciate that. Hey, Nitropic, hello. Hey, Carl's here too. Right, my a nuisance, but usually sloughs off with boots or leading edge devices. That's right. That's right. So you can tell I'm doing a climb here that's a little faster than a cruise climb, right? Cruise climb is normally 100 knots. I'm doing 120, just so we don't lose that much time on the trip. Uh, it's not going to make that much of a difference, but, you know, a couple minutes here and there, totally fine. Or totally fine, you know. To me, it makes a little bit of a difference. As we climb, I'm going to keep leaning, just to keep that engine operating at max power, right? Make sure I have 33 inches set. Oh, Ewald, mine were too. Mine were too, thank you. Oh, just got a posture alert from Abby. Rightfully so, rightfully so. Posture is important, everybody. Make sure you have good posture. Hey, baby, can I have a napkin for the sweating cup, please? Yes, don't forget, I have to fill my napkin. I'll give you uh, a... Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a pop. Okay. I have a pick I would love to show you all of the worst icing I have experienced. Oh, that's awesome. Plane is covered. Screw on the windshield wiper is the size of a grapefruit. Yeah? Maybe you should have a cluster under me. Yes, but I okay. just forgot. Here's a new wiper. I got it. And Thank you. Yes. 
Thank you, baby. Mm-hmm. You're awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, it would give way. Uh, oh, away who I work for. Uh, got it off schedule. Hey, and I, I respect that, man. A lot of people don't want that information out there. I get it. Thank you. I get it. I get it. Um, actually, CRJ update was the last thing I wanted to talk about. I'm looking at my stream notes, right? Um, let's see. We talked about that. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a prominent figure in the flight sim industry as a guest of the stream um, soon. Um, you don't want to miss that one. So stay tuned for announcements. Oh, Simoarg. I used to drink mate. Yes, pizza. They said they're about 75% of the way to start testing. Uh, so they still have work to do, right? As a matter of fact, look, it's in this update of the DC-6. I just didn't read it, but let's read it. In other PMDG news, right now about 75% of the development team's workflow is dedicated... Oh, sorry, no. 75% of the workflow is dedicated to getting the 737 into testing. We had originally planned to put the 737 into the hands of our beta team around 1st of August, but that timeline went up in flames when we learned through a blog post that Microsoft had their Performance Plus update coming for the base platform. I love how Rob is honest without having to punch people in the face, right? The new update sort of threw things into chaos around here, and we haven't made the sort of progress we had anticipated in July. But we are beginning to see forward progress on the 737 once again, uh, and I am just itching to begin the preview process. Not much longer for that now. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Got risk. How do you do it, dude? How do you do it? Seriously. Seriously, buddy. All right, guys. Look, we're getting to 9,000. It's getting to be the bottom of the clouds here. So I think... Let's see how the temperature is. Yeah. Yeah. I think 9,000 is going to be it. It's even going to get us into a little bit of clouds up ahead. But if we ice up, we can go down. But I don't know. I don't... I have a feeling the icing is towards the top of the clouds right now. So I don't think even... Uh, uh, if we get a little bit into the base of that cloud ahead, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna ice up. We'll see. Oh, look at that! Yes. Oh, thank you. Abby actually got me a mate drink uh, at the store. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All right, so here we go. On our last leg over the UK before we get to the channel. And then make our way to Redfa, then to the arrival, then to the approach into Rotterdam. So, might as well start selecting that stuff in here, right? Let's go back here, procedure, arrival. All right, it's for Rotterdam. What arrival do we want? We want the Redfa to Romeo, right there. And it's just that, yes. But it, we need a transition. Oh, it doesn't have a transition, okay. Let's load the arrival. Maybe the transition will happen. Interesting. The VOR just got picked up. And she's turning. Just hold on. Let me make sure she's turning wherever she should be turning to. Uh, she's not. See what happened there. Something happened when I loaded that approach or arrival. So, okay. Let's go to flight plan. And here we go. All right, I think Olney, well, in the meantime, I should just have gone to heading. I'm an idiot. Let me go back to heading and go back that way. But my next waypoint was Botan. Okay, so I can actually just do a direct to Botan, right? So flight plan, Botan. Uh, oh, activate leg. Yes, there we go. And now... I should be able to turn this to nav, just making sure, yeah, and it should intercept that, even though I'm very close to Poton, it should turn to intercept that and get to Poton. So, let's turn it back to nav and see what happens. She should continue the right turn, and she is. Okay, I think now it's it's better. Whoa, I passed 9,000 by a little bit. All right. Oh, yeah, and look, it just started icing up, so 
Let's go back to 9,000, see if we can get away with it. Down at 9,000. She's going back. Actually, should activate the next leg. That'll be a little better. Yes. Wait, it did not activate the next leg? But it did. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, no icing, so good. 9,000 I think is going to work. Sorry, guys, I got caught doing two things at once here. Interesting. Look, I guess it's not going to sequence visually here, the magenta, until I pass a beam poton. But it is actually following the next leg. I know this because it's on a 45 degree intercept in relation to that leg and not this leg. But watch, I think it's only going to go magenta when it gets past Poton. Interesting. Because look, see how it says Poton to Admis. Admis is in magenta. This leg should be magenta. Could be a bug too. Could be a bug. Man, I continue to climb here. Jeez. Alright, now she's turning to intercept that leg. There we go. Let's get back to 9,000. Hey, Merlin, what's up, buddy? Yes, me too. Uh, just in time to see the poor MSFS navigation system messing you around. Does that to me uh, uh, all the time when I load our armor procedure. Interesting. I thought we were past that. There's 9,000. I thought we were completely past that. With, uh, As a matter of fact, guys, let's be honest. Mark, the guy behind these avionics, remember, he first worked on the GNS 530, and he fixed that problem in the 530. So I'm surprised that problem is still here. And look, and now it went magenta, so... Okay, odd. Odd, odd, odd. Now, what happens if I load an approach? Is it going to do the same? So, the ILS-24. With a Mazos transition, that's it. And it's got everything in. Load, not a load and activate. Just load. Watch that altitude. And let's see what happened. I think the same thing happened. Yes, the same thing happened. Okay, so, flight plan. This. Activate leg, yes map and there it is it, we're back we're back we're back wow so that's a problem maybe mark is not aware of it i'm not sure i'm not sure okay i'm pretty much level here i'm not i know i'm 400 feet below but i'm getting back on it but what i mean is it's about time that i start um getting my power set for that 10 gallons per hour there we go. We're leveling at 9. So let's go back until it says 10 gallons per hour. We can also use the 60 pounds per hour there. There we go. Hold that 9. And now we're back. Ah, Bryce, at uh, Rotterdam already? Wow, that was much quicker, man. Much, much quicker. Well on you. So, I guess loading the arrival screwed up the flight plan. Loading the approach screwed up the flight plan. But all in all, it eventually got it all in. Yeah, there it is, there it is, and everything looking good. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy. So, I mean, that's something that needs worked out for sure, but I'm happy. Sorry, Chad, uh, that was busy. Did you guys uh, say something I missed? I mean, said everything I missed, but do I need to go back to something? <clears throat> hey, flying for ATC. Not for money. All right, man. Hey, welcome and thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Akadaka. Thanks, man. I watched uh, Austin Powers with, uh, with Abby uh, recently, and uh, it re Akadaka reminds, <laughs> reminds me of Austin Powers and the Spy Who Shagged Me when, um, when Dr. Evil is talking to his son. <laughs> and he goes, duck, 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 because he's, he's asking for a hug. Pog? <laughs> uh, is my mate's code word for his favorite after dinner drink? A bloody big port. But why Rotterdam? That's an interesting, interesting code word. Um, oh, because of the port. Got it. Hey, port wine, one of my favorite drinks, too. Oh, nice, Bryce. I saw one, too, on the way up. On the way up from, uh, from Prestwick. We also have to change our true airspeed now because we're at a different altitude different temperature so minus two nine thousand let's load that in well done let me uh, fight this updraft here nine thousand and minus two so there's zero so minus two and nine thousand is gonna be about there 
140 or so. Not bad. Not bad. It's actually going to be about 145 once we level off properly. Get this guy turned also. Now I don't have desired track anymore, but... And look, the ETA only changed two minutes with the change in altitude, so not bad at all. We got some rain over here to the left, but we're just skipping it. Oh, kitty. See you later then. Okay. Man, I really like the, uh, the fuel flow up there. I can be so precise over it because it's in pounds, not gallons per hour. Ooh, what a flight so far. It's been busy, but it's been fun too. Yeah, look at all that rain. England, rain, what? No, not in the summertime or ever. Yeah, Peliceta, yeah, I, I, I figured it out. <laughs> Had to bail out in land at Cranfield. Catch you on the VOD. Okay, hey, thank you, II. Take care, buddy. Hey, great to see you, by the way. Can't wait to see you at FSC. So, let's see the results. I never showed the full results of the poll, right? All right, look at this. That's awesome. Results are uh, no, 36%. Yes, virtually, 20 people, so 20 people in chat are going to be attending it virtually. What the hell is FSC? 14 people. And then 4 people are attending in person already. That's awesome. That's awesome. I can't wait. Abby and I can't wait to be out there. That's going to be great. Alright, so the up and down here, guys, are the updrafts and downdrafts from all this weather, right? The air is moving up and down. Of course, you can help the aircraft. Uh, but if it gets to be too much, focus more on attitude, like keep a level attitude instead of nose up or nose down, and just let her up and down. Talk to ATC, make sure it's okay with ATC, but if it's a lot of variation, don't fight it. You can overstress the aircraft if it's really, really a lot. Uh, this isn't a lot, so I can just help her with a little pitching up and down here to keep that 9,000 feet. Look how dark it's getting now that we're under all these clouds. The lighting system in the sim, second to none. Summer's the best day in England. <laughs> Go. Oh, I thought we were talking about economy, not expo. Oh, okay. I guess. I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. Okay, so. Maybe we need to do this again. Maybe we need to do this again. All right. Are you attending Flight Sim Expo? at San Diego. I won't put the alternative name for a anchor man here. Saint Diego. Um, yes. Yes, virtually. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again and you guys vote again if you have the patience because it sounds like some people may have not understood what the question was about, which is my fault. Tis my fault. All right, here we go. New poll is up. Thank you, guys. Rigged, says Bush. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Fabi, my neighbor's bunny has broken out and we can't catch it. Any tips? Teeter. You're asking the wrong person, man. Still not going, says 8-Bit. <laughs> Dieter, ah, oh, man, I'm so sorry to hear that, but I really am not the right person. To ask, yeah, escape bunny. How can they try to catch it? I think Abby's thinking about it. Oh, well, I'm putting carrots away. Oh, she was putting, Sorry. ironically, she was putting carrots away. I don't know much about escape bunny because my turtle ran away, so I can't really she only knows about runaway turtles, not runaway bunnies. You know what, Adventure? Um, I think Microsoft is going to be there, but I'm not 100% sure. Have they announced anything? Hey, Bryce. Okay, take care, buddy. It was nice seeing you. Vom Sky Reaper. Hey, buddy. Thanks for the follow. Runaway turtles. Yeah, exactly. New spawns. Exactly. Good point. Good point. <laughs> yes.
they said they aren't attending. Microsoft will not be at Flight Sim Expo. Okay. Okay. By the way, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, August 18th, 2020 was when uh, Flight Sim released. I remember that because I streamed that very day. Oh, look, a friend. I streamed that very day for the first time. Um, and it was awesome. It's how I got here, right? Um, <clears throat> which means we're about to celebrate one year of Flight Sim. That's right. The first year of Microsoft coming back to the Flight Sim Arena with a shocker of a sim, right? Um, to celebrate, Microsoft is going to have a whole week of special streams. And yours truly has been one of the invited streamers. How cool is that? How cool is that? So, you're going to see an announcement from Microsoft very soon. Um, if they haven't yet, actually. Talking about this. Uh, and I need to decide what I'm going to do for that stream. I haven't decided yet. Um, it's a celebratory stream, so I want to do something like a lot of fun, right? But also, it's a great opportunity to show off this channel and what we do here to other people. So, oh, July 27th. Nice, Bryce. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. When it released for Xbox. Yeah, that's great. Hey, Princess Pharmacy. Princess Pharmacy. Pharmacy. Hey, months. thank wow, you very much, man. Three months. I appreciate that tier one sub very, very much. Thank you. I know. Super cool, right? Super cool. I'm excited for it. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys and see what do you think? What do you think we should do? Because look, this channel is not me. Whoa. Is that an alert that's just stuck there? Is that an alert that just got stuck up there? Well, first of all, we have this guy stuck up there now for some reason. Shouldn't It should be disappearing, but it's not. And then we have... Oh, and the alert just, just went through. I see on the alert confirmed. He looks new to me, curious. Nice. Nice. <laughs> um, alert heater on. That's right. That's right. I do have a tendency for breaking software. I do. I do, Mort. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm gentle to it. But I do. So, anyways. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys and see. Look, look, that's what I was saying. It's not my channel. It's our channel. Right? That's how I look at it. That's how I feel. That's how I behave. This is our channel that we built together. Um, and so, that's why I wanted to come to you guys and say, hey, I don't want to decide this just by myself. I'd, I'd love to have your input. And then we can all sort of have a, you know, have a say in what, uh, what we end up showing off that day. I just thought that might be nice to have that chat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Captain Avilion, four months at tier one. Let's go, man. It's a three-month streak, too. Uh, vacation was awesome, man. Thank you so much. Pensacola, Florida. I highly recommend it. Or no, don't go, because it wasn't that crowded, and we should probably keep it that way. It was our... It was, the Pensacola is just that meh. Um, and thanks to HD Eves. Thank you very much, sir. Tier 1 for three months. Much, much appreciated. Oh, Greg, thank you very much, man. Okay. My great teaching abilities. All right. All right. I appreciate that, and I'll be honest, that is one of the strengths of the channel, right? So maybe we should incorporate some of that. Ah, yes, yes. Nice to tech. He was talking about uh, group flights. That's we've done that on Microsoft stream once, right? And we've done a lot here on stream and those are always fun. Oh, Josh, <laughs> are you serious? Well, I don't have that installed in my sim, so I won't be able to see you as an aircraft carrier, unfortunately. Yeah, Mechanical is talking about teaching, too. All right. 
promo your training courses. Hey, okay, so putting those two together, maybe, maybe we should do a quick lesson on the CRJ. Maybe. Maybe on the DC-6. Huh. Wait, Dalmatian on Discord. In, uh, in what? In real life. Dalmatian, let me know where, buddy. I've spawned... Okay, no, hold on. I, I read that already. Will it be a two-hour stream as they usually are? Uh, time flies when you start teaching. That's very true. Very true. Whoa, new spawns. Hey, hey, Natalia just got a subscription. That's awesome, new spawns. Thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate it. By the way, 9,000 so far. Beautiful for no icing. Beautiful. It's working great for us. So let's keep it here. Let's keep it here. Or you can extend the duration. Uh... Let me look, actually, at the message I have from one Jane from Microsoft. Well, I just asked her. Hold on a second, guys. Just uh, talking to Jane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Findle, thank you very much, man. To uh, stay, Kevin. No, STS, uh, Kevin. I don't know. I don't know. To Kevin. <laughs> and citizen with 100 bits. Thank you very much, guys. Ah, mechanical. That's true. That's true. That is very, very true. Okay. <laughs> Ninja. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. So, uh, Adventure, I don't know, she's online right now. But yeah, I did see that CD is now, uh, is he a community manager? What is he? I did see that he joined the, the MSFS team. Ah, Peliceta, so, uh, are you asking me, buddy? Oh my god, there's a hype train going, I didn't even notice that. Hey, two minutes, 20 seconds to go on the level two. Again, I'll say it again, guys. This is my livelihood, and right now, Abby's in between jobs, so it's the only income that we have. So... If you think I've earned it, consider subscribing to the channel or consider a donation. Colonel Fork with three subs right as I finish saying that. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think so, Findo. I think so. So I don't know what title they gave him. Um, community manager. Okay, assistant to community manager. Okay, so anyways, community management, right? Very cool. Very cool. Um... I heard that CD might attend. Maybe not as an official Microsoft no presence, but I heard CD might be a flight to Expo, so we'll see. So, uh, Peliceta, I have, uh, have not used virtual reality recently with this sim. I know it works really well, um, but every time there's a big update like the one we just had, it's possible that you're going to have some issues. Uh, I haven't heard of any in VR after the update. But, for example, the aircraft could potentially have, like, a third-party aircraft, like the one we're flying now, a non-default aircraft or a gauge or something. It could be that they may not be fully compatible to VR yet because something changed after the update. So every time there's a major update, it can break certain things from what we've experienced in the, every update in the past. But other than that, I've heard people being very happy with virtual reality in this sim. No doubt... 
no doubt somebody here is going to talk about in, in chat. Oh, yeah. Migs Field, man. Now, there is a great Migs Field at FlightSim.to. I don't know if you guys have seen that before or not. Um, let me see if I can quickly find it here. <clears throat> there it is. Beautiful. There's actually... Whoa! I didn't know this. There's There are three of them. Considering the downloads, this might be the nicest. But there are three of them. Look at that. In all its glory. Wow. Wow. What a shame. What a shame that this... Oh, look at the marina. All lit up at night. Nice. Shame that this airport went away. Oh, interesting change... I wonder if that's realistic, right? If part of the marina might be like LED lights uh, or just different lights that are a certain color and the, the east end is a different different color. Would a stock aircraft apart from that just be Fabio? Oh, BT Monster, thank you very much for the 200 bits, buddy. Appreciate that. And getting us to a level three. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you. So this looks pretty awesome. Flightsim.to is the place to go. If you're looking for an add-on for Flight Sim or free one, um, and man, Migs Field, yeah, you can get it. You can get it. All right, Dalmatian in uh, Picks and Fids, okay? Let's go look. Oh, <laughs> that is fantastic, sir. Now, is this uh, a scan of the box or the manual that you have or a scan of the box, maybe? Check out the amazing graphics. And by the way, there was aerial combat in the original flight simulator. That's right, that's the crosshairs. Yeah, pretty amazing. Look at this. A PC, PCXT, or a PCAT. 64 kilobytes of memory, one disk drive, IBM color graphics monitor adapter, or Hercules. Remember the Hercules graphics card? Optional joysticks or Microsoft mouse. IBM PC Junior. I had a, a, a Tandy PC Junior. 128K of memory. Wow. And one disk drive. <laughs> How awesome is that? How awesome is that? It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. All right, let's have a look here. Man, it keeps doing this. Weird. So weird that it does that. Look at this. We're coasting out of England. Right at the mouth of the Thames. Look at that. That's London down there, guys. That's the Thames moving its way into London. Past London City and into London. Now DDR5 is on its way, that's right. That's right. All right, so by the way, tanks. Oh, oh, it's been a whole hour. So yeah, we're much lower on the right, that's fine. We'll stay for the rest of the trip on the left tank now. Pressure's the same. Pressure's the same, good. Eight subs, 300 bits, let's go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. And Dalmatian, thanks for uploading that. That was super cool to see. Do a promo edition of your intended training video series. Must include bells and whistles and a special guest. George Clooney is free on that day, I believe. Ah, uh, Sydney OSB. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, you just missed it turning, has the camera view. Yeah, but new test, it shouldn't rotate. It should just rotate around the aircraft like this. That's what it did before. Maybe something changed. Yeah, Dieter, exactly. C colon backslash msfs backslash fs.exe. Oh, Chuck Yeager's test pilot. Curious, I've shown that on stream before. Maybe not all of you guys have seen it. I played that. I played that. It's Ace Combat, by the way. Chuck Yeager, Ace Combat. 
Oh my god, yes. Yes. You guys ready for this? I don't know if you're ready. I don't know if you're ready. It was awesome, Sin. The music's the best. Ah, KC, good question. I mean, look, they work, they end up doing the same, right? I prefer a stick in real life or in the sim just because I, I prefer to just put one hand on Welcome the stick and fly to that Chuck way. Yeager's Air Combat. Oh, you'll see. Wait for this abnormal. Wait for the graphics, buddy. Some people like a yoke because a lot of aircraft, business jets, airliners, general aviation usually will have a yoke, so it's more like the real thing. Um, I prefer a stick in real life, so I get a stick for my sim. And then I don't really care about what the aircraft in the sim is using. You know what I mean? I always fly with a stick. There are transport aircraft out there that have a stick in real life as opposed to a yoke. Yoke is normal for a big plane, right? But the C-17 Globemaster, it's a stick in between the pilot's legs. Um, there's a bunch of side sticks now that we have jet business jets with fly-by-wire. They have side sticks now. Look at these graphics. All the camera views. Yeah, Santi, remember this? Look at the map view. Ah, map view was insane. No, the frame rate is like five. Oh, nose up. Here we go. We're flying. We're flying, boys. Look at that physics. But, you know what was amazing for the time? This entire game is in 3D. There are no sprites. I mean, maybe the clouds. But you see what I'm saying, right? The aircraft is a 3D model. The mountains, the terrain, the trees. All of that is 3D. And that was already revolutionary for the time. Is this DCS? Yeah, it's the new... Uh, or not the new, the MiG-21. No, this is not a MiG-21. Is it? It might be. MiG-21. Uh, module for DCS. Yeah, Dalmatia, that's right. That's right. Look at the flight path vector. You see the little circle? That's your flight path vector. They had a flight path vector. <laughs> Sin. Watch, I'm going to show you guys some combat. I think there's some combat here. Oh yeah, look, we're selecting who's going to go against who. A P-51 versus what? <clears throat> Playing P-3D. <laughs> yeah, the panel was still 2D. That's right. That's right, Adnanso. Oh, here we go. Fuck Wolf. Tough, tough opponent. Expert. Oh, this guy, man. Or gal. Who knows? Oh, here we go. Oh, but they start, you start on their six. Come on. Listen to that Merlin engine. Yes, you gotta hit the turbo. Triple seven. Like, whoever turned that off, right? Oh, from the C-152 and C-172 and move up a level. Any suggestions on what I should try to learn next? Yes, Ernest. Yes. I would say one of the things you need is a constant speed propeller. That's a prop. Real quick, guys. That's a prop that will have a blue lever like this. And it means you can control the RPM of the prop for a certain power setting. Right? It's called a constant speed propeller. So I would say an aircraft with a constant speed propeller. I would keep it to one engine for now. Don't get two engines because that, if they're both working, that's fine. If one of them fails, if you play with options like that or if you make a mistake, it becomes really hard to fly a, a twin 
if if you haven't practiced it a bunch of times. So it can be frustrating. So I would say stick to single engine, right? Um, outside of that, anything you'd like, anything you'd like. Um, I think it's important, important to do the constant speed propeller because that is the next level of learning that happens in real aviation. It's when you, you start to manage not only the throttle, not only the mixture, but now you also have a third lever, the prop lever, to control. So I would say that. All right. I think we're done with Ace Combat. I think you guys got the gist. Got the gist. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on. Oh, no. Don't freeze. Don't freeze. Come on, Windows. You got this. Come on, Windows. You got this. Uh-oh. You guys can see me fine, huh? Everything is fine. Okay. Stream is still fine. So, it must be that it's not updating just my screen. Right? So, can I do something to fix this? Okay. Okay. And if that's the case, if I do... Let me see if Alt-Tab is going to work for you guys. Hey! Got it back. Got it back. Just Alt-Tab. Just Alt-Tab. Yes! Ernest, you knew it. You knew it. I actually just wanted to see if Alt-Tab was going to work for you guys. But it worked for me too. Now, if I go back to... Is it Edge that's crashing? What happened? What happened? We're about 500 feet high, guys, so I'm correcting for that. And there are new features. Probably Edge, okay. I'm afraid to go back to Edge now, but I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Here we go. All right. Edge is back. Can you guys see it? Yeah, I guess so. I was doing this. I was fast forwarding on the timeline. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh! This is amazing. So, Epic Gamer, I've used Chrome for the last few years. Somebody recommended Edge and said, hey, listen, Edge is Chrome, but better. And I was like, what? And they said, yeah, uh, Edge is uh, Chromium, the, the base for Chrome, right? Oh, there it is, okay. Uh, I'm just getting our, our sim audio back. And let me tell you, dude, I downloaded, I tried it. It is better than Chrome for me, right? It, uh, it's like Chrome with some added features that I really wish Chrome had. All right, let's bring this out so we can see. Okay, that's the beginning of our arrival. So let's brief the arrival real quick. So let's go in here and have a look at that chart. All right, we now... Oh, sorry. We now need to... Nope, split, yeah. Need to change the airport. Rotterdam. Duplicates found. Okay. Remember, we did this when we inputted the flight plan. Doesn't matter which one we choose. Let's select uh, an arrival. And it's the red fun. And let's go full. Okay, so here we go. Ah, actually, hold on. Let me check my uh, altimeter here. Okay, I still need to go down some. So let's go. So let's go. All right. Actually, I can get closer. There we go. Okay, so it's a star for Rotterdam Netherlands, not an RNF star. 
Uh, 10-2 Bravo is the chart ID number. 16 October 20th is when it was issued, and it's for Rotterdam, EHRD. Okay. Uh, altimeter setting hectopascals. Okay. Transition level by ATC. Expect radar vectors to intercept final approach. In our case, no, but we know how to get there, right? This is all four of these, but Redfa 2 Romeo is the one we're interested in. Four, because there's four different waypoints feeding into that Mesos, which is the initial approach fix. We're coming in from Redfa. Nothing here, but when you see Mesos here, look, there's a one here, right? In all four, and it says, when passing, COA, which is Costa, radio 019, you need to be a flight level 60 or below, unless otherwise instructed. So, we need to a VNAV calculation to get us to Mesos at 6,000 feet. We can do that by using utilities and VNAV planning. All right, so... Uh, the target altitude is 6,000. Okay. MSL. Vertical profile. Let's go 500 feet per minute. Offset. No offset. Zero on the offset. I want it to be at the waypoint. Before or after, it doesn't matter because it's zero offset. And the target waypoint is going to be... Mesos. There it is. Begin descent in 15 minutes. If we started now, we could just do the descent at 142 feet per minute and arrive at Mesos at 6,000 feet. But we're going to wait because we want 500 feet per minute. I want messages to be displayed, so that's all good. And because I'm not going to be on that page in the map now, instead of ETA, I want to have... Whoops. I want to have... Estimated time uh, to top of descent. Time to top of descent. There we go. There we go. Go back. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we're pretty much 9,000 feet now, so everything looking good. I don't know if it shows it on the map or not. No, looks like no. Interesting. Haven't really spent a lot of time figuring all the extra stuff out. Yeah, BD, I just figured out some of this stuff myself today. But it is pretty cool. It's cool stuff. <clears throat> Does Mitar Info work with API key? I couldn't get it to work. You know, Mr. 90, I don't know. I think it would be in utilities. Oh, weather. No, I mean this wouldn't be this wouldn't be METAR here anyways. This is a weather radar. So that's not it. So maybe in utilities. Um there's no METAR here, right? So where would that be? Does anybody know? Interesting. Here we go. That's nice to see. Uh you're using the paid version. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Can't get the 530 to work either. Oh, in Waypoint Info. Ooh, okay. Okay, interesting. All right. So, Waypoint Info. I guess we have to choose the airport and then do all from here. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, so there it is. It's already got the destination there, right? I can preview, like, the airport itself. Um, I thought I had an in it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I guess it doesn't show... should show a diagram of the airport. I guess it's not showing it. All right. Uh, procedures for it. I can look at that. I can look at runways. Ah, there we go. But that's kind of weird that it doesn't show the diagram like it does when you're on the ground. Let's check our altitude. Ah, okay. Adjusting trim a little bit. Okay. Um, frequencies. That's very cool. Very cool. Weather data. Let's see. Get data. Hey, there it is. Looks like it looks like it's working. One zero one four is the pressure. Wind from the southwest, as we expected, eleven knots. Okay, visibility is still good, ten kilometers. Uh, sky clear. Okay, there's no clouds over it right now. How about NOTAMs? Nah, not available. Nearest VRP is not available either. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Very nice. Just resubscribe for five months. Oh. Oh. 
Karib Twitch, what's up? Thanks, man. Five months on that Prime sub. Appreciate that. Hello to you. Hello. Macho X-Ray, thanks for the follow. The KC with the follow. BT Monster, thanks for those 200 bits, man. I really appreciate that. And Paul Pitt, thanks for the follow. Accordion tabs. No one needs that many tabs open. <laughs> you haven't seen nothing. You haven't seen nothing. Mucho very nice. Yes, wage. Hey, Mamonas Assassinas, no? Is that where that's from? I think so. I think so. All right. Let's see the results of that second poll that we ran. Okay. So, 30 people saying no, they won't attend. 13 saying yes, virtually, and two in person. We had four before. Now it's two. So, but I'm excited for this, man. It's actually quite a few people because I know not everybody's here today, right? That's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to see you guys. And can't wait for FSC itself. It's going to be awesome. Some clouds up ahead. Might have to pass them to then get to Rotterdam. And it's possible that by the time we get to Rotterdam, they're going to be on the ground. I don't know. I don't know. Rotterdam is over there. So I don't know. We'll see. All right, here we go. Maybe two more peekaboo. Yeah. Passing Redfush is going to turn right now. Yep, there we go. And uh, top of the sand in 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, Ninja, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome to see you there, man. That would be awesome to see you there. I think we're going to stay on this tank all the way until landing. I think. Because, look, the right tank is already below 10. It's like 8 or something. We got 15 here. And remember, we should have about 10 gallons when we land, right? So if we have 10 gallons, we'd have 5 here and 5 here. Perfect balance. We have 8. If I stay on this tank all the way until landing, we should have 3 gallons on this side, which is low, but should be okay. So maybe we'll do that. Oh, peekaboo. Hey, hey. Captain Seppi's wife is here, babes. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's peekaboo. Abby says, hello, Peekaboo. Oh, I think she heard you. <laughs> Hi. We have to connect on Discord. You are rocking the kitchen right now. Yeah, well, someone, I don't know which of you three, spilled a whole container of sweet and sour Chinese sauce in the back of the fridge and left it there. What? My guess is the boy. <laughs> My guess is the boy, too. So wow. I had to really scrub it up there. Oh, fridge. man. Well, thank you for that. Okay. He just had sweet and sour. It was Captain Sappy. It was Captain Sappy it was just had sweet and sour. Sappy. I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. By the way, Peekaboo, thanks for being here. That's awesome. Great to see you. Uh, so that's Captain Sappy's wife, who we met on the way back from Florida. Lovely. Lovely to meet both yeah, of them. They're great, great people. Uh, yeah. That was a great stop. Yeah, it was a great stop. Uh, and ah, it's just awesome when you meet great people. Oh, <laughs> hey, Captain Seppi just gifted a sub Aww. to Peekaboo. Aww. Lovely, lovely, Captain Seppi. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate that. Somebody was asking me about my setup before, early on in the stream, and I don't remember who it was, but I remember we never finished that conversation, so... Jay Shrew, thanks for the follow, man. Appreciate that. Who was it? Are you still here? Ah, Gerald. Yeah, hey, maybe next year, man. Maybe next year. All right, so uh, let me think here. We need to do a descent checklist, but we can wait until the top of descent because basically it's power and make sure, okay, we're going to constantly change those on the way down, right? But then... Elevator trim and altimeters. So it's really not much to do in that descent. I mean, it's the stuff you're going to do anyways. You need to change the power. You should remember to do the mixture. If you don't, okay, checklist will remind you. The trim is how we're going to descend. So there's no way I'm not going to be paying attention to that. And altimeter setting is going to have to be uh, what I remember to do. But looking at Rotterdam...
transition uh, level is by ATC, but transition altitude is 3,000, and usually the transition level is just above that. So I'm thinking 040 or something like that, which is pretty low, but I think that's common for Holland. So we're not going to do that until the very end of our descent, right? Roy? Roy. All right, seven minutes to go. And I'm so glad that the... Uh, hello, friend. So glad Windows didn't actually freeze on me. I mean, it did, but so glad we were able to recover. Channel has a lot of ships in it today. Really, Kozaki, are you talking about in the sim? Look at this. That's odd. Are you talking about in the sim? Man, it's a lot of water, isn't it? Especially going this way. We're not going the short way. The short way is Dover to Calais. Oh, Ryzen 7. Nice. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So, what did you guys think about that... Uh, Vast aviation video we watched when I was helping Abby earlier. The uh, the F-16 <laughs> intercepting, two F-16s intercepting, um, I forget, November, whatever it was, right? What did you guys think of that? That was pretty interesting. I mean, we talked about what I think is going to happen, not much, right? Just a, a stern talking to. But it's... To me, it's a good reminder that, hey, man, you can easily make that mistake, right? If you didn't check to see where you have restrictions today or you checked, but you forgot about it or you checked, you didn't forget about it, but you didn't quite know how far or close you were to it. You thought it was further down, inattention. I mean, lots of things can lead to that happening. Yes, I swear. That's what the weather was saying. So, yes. Gotta read notams, right? Gotta read them. This is going to be expensive. Yeah, Diabeta. Could be. I don't think he's going to be fine, but who knows? He might. Well, Ninja, that's what I say is I don't, I don't know that he knew. Did he at any point acknowledge or somebody tell him that that's what was happening? Because I remember that when he first talks to Approach, and I was busy talking to Abby. I didn't see the very end of the video. Uh, when he switches to approach or when he talks to approach approach kind of talks to him normally and then just give him gives him a phone number right i don't think he saw or even knew that they were there no it depends ninja if they're behind you and they normally are behind you because if they need to shoot you down they don't want to be flying formation with you right so they're usually in trail uh like one mile they'll pick you up on radar they'll come close do a visual identification but they won't be side by side they can do that from behind here right like this like this where you can't see them uh, and then they'll fall back I mean they have procedures for this I don't know exactly what they fall back to but they will fall back and get ready to shoot you if they have to no right ninja exactly but that's not what they do at first right eventually they will get next to you see if you're awake maybe they're you know you passed out they don't know but at first while they're trying to get you on radio and they are already scrambled they're gonna be behind you yeah Aki I'll uh, I'll put it down right now baby right now let me see I think this will do it yes No, no worries, Aki. Here it is. And anybody else that missed it. Oh, Kozaki, so what is the mod that you're using, buddy? Is it the one on flightsim.to? The one for the whole world? That's a cool mod right there. Cool mod right there. All right, two and a half minutes. Almost time. And remember, we got to do exactly 500 feet per minute. So I'm going to try and be exact on that and see how well this worked out. I mean, it should. It's very straight math that this is doing, right? I mean, it's geometry really is what it's it's doing. But I, it also will depend on my ground speed staying the same. So if my ground speed stays around that, then it will be correct. So I'm going to try and do 500 feet per minute down and stay 
I ran 163 on the ground speed. We'll see if I uh, if I succeed or not. Interesting. Yeah, it's like twisting the camera sometimes. Oh, look, I can see the coast. Hey, we're almost there, guys. We are almost done with leg seven, the penultimate leg of our trip. How cool is that? How cool is that? All the way from Florida, all the way from Florida. This was a great, great trip. Oh, Josh, nice. That's cool, dude. I haven't tried the Bell 47 yet. I heard it's good. Ah, Ninja South the Coast, too. Hey, we're thinking the same thing, buddy. We're thinking the same thing. All right, are we there? One minute to go. All right. So, let's try and be right on the money. The altitude is on the money. But it, it has been reading that because it's using my current altitude to calculate that. And let's try and hit right at zero. We're going to be at 500 feet per minute, 500 foot per minute down, and we'll try and keep 163 on the ground speed. <clears throat> let's see how uh, close to it we can get. All right, watch that altitude. Don't want it to drift. 30 seconds. Leveling at nine. Okay, looking very good. Very good, 20 seconds. Ten seconds, all right. Here we go. And down we go. Bringing that power back, there's 500 feet per minute. Right on the money, 164, bringing back power. 164, bringing power back just a tad more. 163, okay, watch, watch the vertical speed. 500, there we go. Now, I'm exaggerating how like on it you have to be, right? You could just kind of be close to it, but since it's the first time I do this and since I want to be sure that that calculation is working, I need to be very accurate to make sure that this is going to be very, a very accurate result. So 163 on the speed, 500 feet per minute. We are on it, boys and girls. It's looking very good. I found the right power setting, I think. Now, it's changing as we go down because we're getting denser air, but she's also slowing down. So I'm getting a higher manifold pressure, which means more power for the engine, but also higher drag because it's thicker air so she doesn't go as fast either. So for now, those are equaling out because I have one power setting that I got to. And as long as I stay at 500 feet per minute, that ground speed right there isn't changing. So they're perfectly balancing out the changing both air density and manifold pressure. Or better yet, drag and manifold pressure. That's what I should say. All right. We're coming up on 8,000 feet. And remember, if this is working out correctly, uh, I'm going to be at 6,000 feet. Um, was it 6,000? Yeah, 6,000 feet at Mesos, right? Which, weird enough, is not the waypoint that we're flying to. We're flying to like CO Alpha 29, but it is Mesos from what I could read. Oh, watch that vertical speed. Watch that vertical speed. All right. Um, but what I want to know is how long do I have to get there? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change up this TOD now to time to waypoint. Estimated time to waypoint. There we go. All right. So I got three and a half minutes to go and 2,000 feet to lose. I needed four minutes. Right, if I'm doing 500 feet per minute and I'm at 8,000 and I need to get to 6,000, that's 2,000 feet, that's four minutes. 
So, that is a little bit off, isn't it? A little bit off. I'm just compensating here beyond 500 feet per minute because I was slightly shallow there for a while. And so I just went steep to get back on that glide. Hey, Mr. Moo, what's up, man? How's it going? How's it going? Speed is dead on, 163. The vertical speed has varied a little bit here and there, but very little. It shouldn't make a difference at all. Interesting that we don't seem to be able to hit that mark exactly, huh? Let's see. Let's see. Alerts are freezing again. Not sure why, but Danny, thanks for the follow. Uh, Le Macklin, thanks for the follow. And DJ Aha, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it, guys. Very much nice. All right. That says two. Let's wait until two minutes. We should be at 7,000 at two minutes. We're going to be close. There's two minutes, and we're 100 feet off. So not as bad as I thought. Not as bad as I thought. Oh, no way, Daddy. Rotterdam is your home airport. That's really cool, dude. And it's, from what I've seen, it's a really good representation of it in the sim. Um, it was that... Uh, did that Rotterdam... What do they call it? Handcrafted airport. Did that happen with uh, one of the updates for Europe? One of the, the world updates? Because Rotterdam is a handcrafted airport, and I don't remember it being that when the Sims started life. Flying home and X-plane at Greenland to Scotland. When I get home, I'm going to try to download the MFS update and fly on. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, Mr. Moo. All right, guys. So we are about one minute out, and at one minute, we should be 500 feet above. Looks like we're still 100 feet high, so I'm going to steepen my descent here on purpose because I want to make that 6,000 by the waypoint. I don't want to be high. Ah, with update 4, with the Benelux update. Got it. Got it. Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. That makes sense. So the VNAV tool doesn't say anything, I think, on the tool itself, does it? Let me see. I don't think it does. Yeah, it, it does give me the required. Oh, by then. Little got a little too steep there. It does give me the required. All right, here we go. By the waypoint at 6000. Boom, she just started the turn. We were still 100 feet high. I'll take it. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Oh, hello friend. Oh, look at this. I have to activate the approach, don't I? I think I have to activate the approach. So hold on. Let me go to heading. And it's going to be a little bit more that way, I think. Okay. Go to flight plan. Oh, no. It is activated, but there's two mesos there. Interesting. Okay, now it is. Now it is. Why did that happen? Whoa. Whoa. I don't have to stop at 6,000. I can go keep going down, but I don't know. I have to see how far I am yet. So I'm going to stop right here for now and figure out first what to do here. So let's try nav again. See what happens. We're slightly offset, which makes sense. This should be about here. Looks like it. Just about. Not uh, Weather is not bad at all. Now, I still haven't activated the approach from what I understand. Right? I have to activate, don't I? Or because I'm on that leg, it already activated. It should have already activated when this happens. But I don't know if that's the case. Does anybody know? That was a police helicopter that was downtown inside the TFR because they were supposed to be there. For auto-activate approach, right. But if it's not auto-activate... Let me see, Iceberg. We'll check. If it's not, then where do I activate the approach? Oh! Oh, I got an idea. 
maybe I go in here, hit the approach, and then activate from here. Yeah, look. So it's already active. So let's make sure I have that in, uh, in options. I think I do. Approach auto activation, yes. So that's why she started going back, is because that bug of when you activate an approach, or apparently an arrival in this sim, or even when you add an arrival here, not even activate, right? Well, you don't activate arrivals, but you know what I mean. We weren't there yet. We were early in the flight plan. We're on the ground, and we, no, we were in the air. And we put that in, and she starts going back to a waypoint behind you. So it looks like that happened again here. Uh, in control settings, I didn't actually see any changes in control settings, Sefco. I wasn't aware there were some. I guess that's that's what I'm saying. I wasn't aware. I'm gonna put 10 gallons per hour again, just so we don't go too slow here. Oh, a bit. Are you talking about this here? The this is the GPS. It's the GTN 5 750, 750, and it is a, a mod. It's a mod that's free for the basic version, and then it's paid for uh, the full version. And here, I'm gonna post post the link here for you and everybody else in chat. There it is. That's the website. So you can get it for free. It has limited functionality, or you can pay 25 a year or 75 for lifetime and then you have access to the full thing this is the full thing that i have here um because they gave me a press copy oh interesting word option the gtn keeps breaking on you really just keep the basic radio stack and flight slash a yeah off schedule but it limits you right there's a lot of places like let's say you want to fly in fat sim there's a lot of places you're not going to be able to do stuff because they only have our nav departures or arrivals or um, you want to fly some cool approaches like our nav approaches that have RF legs into mountainous airports to get you lower. You're going to need something like this. Oh, and a renewal pay 50. Captain Seppi did not know that. That's easier on the pocket. You're right. You're right. Oh, weird reduction. Yeah. I, I gotta say, I don't know that these bugs were there before, Rodopsin, before the update to Sim Update 5, because I, I recall using the 750 and being quite functional without these bugs, including the bug of going back to a waypoint behind you. I think that was gone. Maybe Sim Update 5 changed something, and now that's no longer gone. All right, guys, we need to look at that approach, because we haven't briefed yet. Too late, really. We should have briefed that already. But let's go. So split. We're going to look at approaches. We're going to select the ILS or localizer runway 24. There it is. We never actually looked at the other one. Remember, we thought it was going to be interesting, right? So 3,000 is the minimum altitude here, and we should be at... Uh, let me see here. Whoa, 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 whoa. We should be at 2,000 by the time we're done with the procedure turn. So I say let's go down to 3,000 right now. Let's do that right now. So take some power out. I'm not worried about my ground speed anymore, right? And we're going to go down to 3,000. Okay, so. Oh, fit. There we go. ILS or localizer 24 into Rotterdam, Netherlands, chart 11 2, issued 16 October 20th for Rotterdam, EHRD. Um, altimeter setting hectopascals, and it was last we checked 1014. I'm going to get an updated one. Could get it here on the gauge, but I'm going to go to Sky Vector. 1014 continues to be it. Um, okay. When I get to 3000, I can already set that as my, uh, as my um, altimeter setting, right? Okay. Very good. Here, I'll go closer so we can all brief a little bit better. Runway elevation minus one hectopascals or minus 15 feet. It's below sea level. It even says you're below sea level. Transition level by ATC. We're going to do it at 4000. 040 flight level transition now to 3000 one dme is required to ils dme read zero at runway 24 threshold okay we don't actually need a dme i don't know about yasa but in the faa world if it says dme required but you got gps you can use gps in lieu of the dme we're coming in from mesos 3000 is the minimum here uh this says navigation in the initial intermediate approach segment is primarily based on radar vectors provided by atc given our nav eh waypoints beyond the final approach fix or supplementary information. Interesting. Hang on one second, guys. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> nice. She's cracking a joke. 
We're going to fly over the Rotterdam VOR, then outbound on the 086. 2,000 is our minimum, so we can start going down to 2,000 then. There's number two here. Let's see what number two means. Uh, okay. Number two. Two. By ATCR with calm failure. Okay. Um, otherwise, it's radar vectors. After that, when we get to DME 9.1, which will be a waypoint for us, we turn towards the Rotterdam NDB. After the NDB, left turn, 2,000 feet to intercept on a to finish on a heading of 267 to intercept the ILS. You see my altitude. Okay. We're still doing well. Hey! That might be the airport right there. Okay. Uh, let's see. We intercept the localizer then on a heading of 267 and a DME of 9.3 from... Um, no, sorry. 7.9 from the VOR. Okay. Let me see. Anything else here? No. No. Okay. Just altitudes, waypoints. Okay. We need to dial this in, 110.9, although, since I added it in, I don't know if it's going to do it automatically for me or not. Probably not, so let's put it in. 110.9, uh, there it is. Okay, uh, not receiving it yet, which is not unusual for the distance that we are from the airport and the side that we're at. Okay, let's look at the side view here. Um, 2,000 intercept the... Actually, stay at 2,000 until 6.3. So until 6.3, we're not on the glide slope. The glide slope is above us. After that, which is EH252, then we're going to intercept the glide slope at 2,000, go down, 3-degree glide slope. So if we're flying 120 knots or 100 knots, it's five 600 feet per minute. So in between 600 feet per minute or so, should do it. If we don't see or have to go around by the missed approach point, which will be a DA of 185, which is 200 feet above the ground. Then it's straight ahead to 2,000 on a 237 heading. Uh, and then after that, let's see. Climb on track 237 to 2,000. Contact ATC. Missed approach with comm failure. So basically they're saying if ATC is there, or sorry, if your radio is working, ATC will be there. There's not a time when ATC closes around here. So if ATC is working, just climb on the heading and this to this altitude, and then ATC will factor you around. If you have comm failure, that's how you get back to uh, shoot the approach again, is they have you turn towards the Rotterdam NDB, and then you hold at that NDB according to this hold here, which will be a direct entry. Okay, very good. 185 is our minimum then. Uh, visibility is way higher than this right now. We don't have to worry about it. All right, that's it. 4,000. We're pretty much over the air. Oh, no, airport is over there. Oh, what is this here? Is this an old airport? No, it's channels. These are canals. These are canals. Okay. Okay. All right. Bring up the mixture a little bit because we're pretty low. 4,000 for 3,000. Ah, there we go. We just showed up on the chart. Nice. And because we have this whole flight plan loaded, we go to flight plan. Look, we got all of that loaded up. Um, we expect all of this to happen. We don't have to be on the map page. We can be, but we don't have to be on the map page to see how that's going to happen. We can just look at the chart and make sure it's following the chart. Which I prefer. Which I prefer. There we go. Hey, BBJ, what's up? Cool name, man. I am approaching Rotterdam at the moment. Um, we've just flown in from Prestwick in uh, Scotland over the north of London, basically through um, the middle of England, through the spine of England almost, north of London, shooting east into Rotterdam, our destination today all right 3700 guys this is pretty much on the money because look we had to be at 3000 all the way until the vor right can't descend below 3000 because of that 3000 there until you pass the vor then it's 2000 that's what that 2000 means on that leg but i think we're going to hit the vor right around 3000 so perfect uh mcdreamy i don't think so i don't think i have i was going to ask you about those uh, Fabi, do you do the loop and then continue back towards the airport via the waypoints in your flight plan? Yes, 8-bit, because that is what this approach predicates, is that you're going to, pro from May Mesos, right, you're going to fly direct to the VOR, from the VOR, direct to this waypoint, DME 9.1, from that RTM Rotterdam VOR. From here, direct to the NDB, from here, left turn, heading 267, until you intercept a localizer, which is 237. In real life, you would never do this. ATC would be vectoring you around. But we don't have ATC going right now, or at least we're not connected to VETSIM in case somebody is online. So we're going to do the full approach, and that's why I checked to make sure the flight plan had everything loaded, and it does. 
All right, so we're almost over the airport. There's Rotterdam. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah, Nefiston. This is by... Well, here. That's their website. This is a mod. There's a free version of it, which is the more simplistic version. It's limited in features. And then there's the full version, which is paid. Whoa, that's a strong light over there. Oh, it's a POI. Interesting. I thought it was a light with a point, and this was the reflection of it on water. But no, it's a POI. There's Rotterdam. Nice. What is our altitude? Yeah, just over 3,000, so pretty good. We're doing pretty well here. Oh, Erasmus Bridge. Nice. Nice. Look at that cool structure. That's cool. Oh, Kozaki's crossing the VOR. Okay, so you're just ahead of me. I'm about to cross the VOR, but I'm still like a mile away. Maybe half a mile. What about the missed approach? Would you need to fly that loop before continuing back to the airport? Oh, by loop 8-bit, you're saying this right here, the racetrack pattern, right? This we call a hole. So on missed approach, if ATC did not give you instructions, or better yet, in this case, if you had communication failures, if your radio stopped working for whatever reason, yes, you would fly up the uh, heading 237, the dashed line here is the missed approach. You'd fly that until you get to 2000. At 2000, look, with com failure. Without 2000, you keep going straight and talk to ATC. With 2000, or with com failure, turn around, go back to here, and then enter the hold. And then from the hold, we're going to figure out what to do with you. And you can be saying, well, look, guys, 3000 over the VOR. Perfect. Now it's going to turn for that outbound leg. But you can be saying, okay, but if I do all that and I get back on the hold, how are they going to talk to me to shoot a new approach? They're not. From here, you have to be able to see the tower, and they're going to give you light gun signals. That's right. Light gun signals is going to be how you get clear to land again. No, no worries a bit. You don't have to apologize for that. I'm just teaching you what the word is, so it gets easier next time you talk about this with anybody. All right. So, I continue my descent. We have to go down to 2,000 now, but I have some time, so I'm not going to take all the power out. Oh, nice. I got some friends right next to me. That's pretty cool. Um, look, 3,000, I should already be on local altimeter, right? So let's do that. Let's go to 1014. Not much different than where we are right now, but we got to do it. There it is. Once. Twice. Okay. Let's look at our descent checklist. That was really the only thing we didn't want to forget, right? The rest we've done. So now let's do an approach checklist. The landing light is on. Fuel selector, fullest tank, it still is the fullest, the left tank. So we're going to leave it there. Ox boost pump on, let's go on high. Actually, isn't high up. No, high is down. Okay. Mixture rich, uh, sure, below 3,000 feet, yeah, I'll go to rich. No problems there. There it is. Prop RPM is going to go to max, so I'm slowly going to increase here the RPM to max. Okay, there it is. Parking brake is released, yes. Gear selector check down, not yet. We're going to wait until we intercept the ILS and are one dot below the glide slope before we do that. And flaps, we're also going to wait uh, until we're a little bit closer. Oh, what a beautiful approach. Look at this. Hello. Hello, my friend. What a beautiful approach this is. Let's have a, let's have a glance outside. Oh, man. Look at that. Perfect timing for this landing, huh? And the weather is not too bad. Weather is not too bad. All right. 2,500. I still... I'm going to take a little more power out because I still have uh, 500 feet to lose. And I have a whole turn here and more before I actually get to the glide slope. But no reason to stay too high. No reason to get there super fast either. So, again, right? 500 feet per minute or so. That's a little too much. 500 feet per minute or so is going to be just fine. Yeah, I saw one too, fake. It was over here. Don't know where it went. Oh, man, look at that. That's just beautiful. That's just beautiful. I'm assuming this is still Rotterdam. But I don't know. It could be another, another village already. Not that Rotterdam is a village. But you guys get my meaning, right? I'm going to put 
the uh, 237 inbound course. Looks like the localizer just came alive. 237 inbound course. About there. About there. Okay. There's 2,000 feet. We're going to be leveling off now. And remember, we only have gear and flaps on that approach checklist. Then we have the landing checklist, which is flaps. Make sure your approach speed is good. And then touchdown. So we don't really have to worry about that either. So we have to worry about putting gear and flaps down at this moment. All right, look. She's already turned this way. Now, after the NDB, we're going to turn. Let's see if she can do a heading of 267. I don't know if she can. I'm interested to see if that happens. Since it's going to be a heading of 267, I'm already going to set it here to see what happens. All right, there's 2,000 feet. 267 is about there. There's 2,000 feet. Let's stay at 2,000 feet. Okay, looking good. Man, a lot of water around here, huh? All right. All right, all right, all right. Staying at 2,000 feet. Don't let her drop too much. Remember, 10 gallons is what we're going to find in the tanks after we land and taxi in. If, if Little Nav Maps aircraft performance file is good enough, close enough for this aircraft. All right, so now what I'm going to do, guys, I am, look, it looks like it is flying a heading of 267. So it even did that properly, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to heading because I'm already on this heading. And I want to switch from GPS to nav because this needs to be the ILS, and it isn't. Right now it's showing a GPS leg. Let's switch it to nav. There it is. There's my ILS. It should be to my right, right? I should be on that heading. Look, it should be to my right. And it is to my right so everything is looking good right now staying at 2,000 feet oh Bryce that's cool man that's a good flight right there too and we're gonna wait until the localizer is alive and at that point we're gonna switch this uh, from heading to uh, localizer normal and she can also follow the glide slope which I am receiving and I am under right now pretty awesome stuff huh Pretty awesome stuff. Okay, I'm going to start slow. And actually, no. 140 knots is pretty good right now. It's pretty good right now. Otherwise, it takes too long to get there. All right. I think I'm going to start to see the localizer move here. Let's track that. Not yet. No movement yet. We'll see when it's alive because it will start moving. And it won't be too slow on the movement. My inputs have been a bit weird since SU-5. Sometimes not registering and I have to center and put the input back in. So, are you talking Xbox controller? There it is. Alive. See it moving, right? So let's go to localizer normal. Localizer reverse is for a back course. It's if you're using the localizer but from the other side. Is she going to turn? She's not turning. That's weird. What happened here? Autopilot. Do I have to take heading off? No. Okay, not sure what's happening. So, autopilot off. And we're going to hand flag this approach in. I'm almost on the glide slope, so I definitely don't want to be this high. I want to be at 2,000. So getting back to that and getting back on the localizer, because if I'm off scale on the localizer like this, the localizer is full deflection one way or another, I cannot descend on the glide slope just yet. There it is. Now the localizer is alive. So I can now, when we get to the glide, start descending. But for that, I have to slow down because I want to put my gear out too. So let's get back on the localizer. I'm going to zoom in here so I can see the instruments a little bit better. I'm not on the glide just yet. I'm almost there. But I'm slowing, look, gear up or gear down. Gear down actually is 133. So I can put the gear down now, which I want because I'm intercepting the glide slope. So gear down. 
Let's start down at 500 feet per minute or 600 or so. Okay. Uh, for flaps, hold on a second, that's a little too steep. A little too steep. Let's go back here to 500 or so. Uh, where's my flap placard speed? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The trim is completely off. Hold on. Let me get back on the glide. The trim was completely off for this setting here. There we go. Back on the glide, and now I need to be 500 feet per minute down at 110 knots. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm getting off the localizer, so fixing that. Trying to get everything trimmed here properly. Still off the localizer. Let's go get it. Let's go hunt it. Now, remember, my altitude, minimum descent altitude, is over here. It's 185 feet, so I have a ways to go still. But I want to get back and accurate as soon as I can, right? Inawawa, what's up, man? Oh, she's turning left again. So I need a little bit of right rudder with this much power. A little bit of right rudder is going to fix that left turning tendency. Getting away from the localizer. Two dots. Let's go back to it. I'm on the glide, so the glide is good. I just need to get that localizer back, so don't be shy. Let's be aggressive in getting it. And then as aggressive as we turned in, we're going to turn on. And now we're going to find a heading that works. I'm hearing the outer marker. We're passing the outer marker right now. Hey, I passed my heading once again and got too steep. Okay. And I still don't know where my flaps placard is. I wish I did. I wish I did so I could see my flap speeds. But I'm pretty sure... Whoa, 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 whoa. I need to focus on this approach. I'm pretty sure I can do flaps 10 right now. So flaps 10... Watch for that ballooning. She wants to balloon. We're going to pick it back down. There we go. And now correct that heading. Correct that heading. There we go. All right. We just passed 1,000 feet, so we have 815 to go. Just watching my speed now. By the way, landing in flaps 10 is perfectly fine. The runway here is pretty big. Once again, I'm getting off localizer because I'm getting distracted. Let me get back to it. There we go. The closer I get, the smaller the corrections are going to be. Get back on the glide. It's a really shaky approach. I'm not doing too well on the approach, to be honest. But it's a safe one. It's not unsafe. It's just uncomfortable. Okay, there we go. Back on the heading. That flap change required a lot more trimming than I expected. And I'm not back on the heading yet. I'm going to stay in, guys, because I want to show you how you can have a bit of a shaky approach like this and still nail the missed approach point because you're not there yet you got time to fix it 500 feet get back on that heading watch it's getting off to the right a little bit let's go chase it don't let it get too far see if this heading is enough glide slope's looking okay slightly low quick correction 300, we're about 100 feet above. Watch the heading, watch the glide slope. Fix the glide slope, fix the glide slope. All right, I'm going to consider this pretty much close to minimums. Look out, there we are. Not too bad. And it is a little uh, gusty, which is uh, not why I had a hard time on this approach. That's just bad piloting. But it definitely looks a little bit gusty. All right, we can slow down now. We have flaps 10, that's plenty for our landing here. But I'm going to carry a little extra speed because of that uh, having only flaps 10. Roll her in. Just pre-stall. There we go. Alright, lower that nose. There we go. You can go flaps up. Yeah, thanks a bit, that wasn't bad. That was not bad. Hey, Psycho Thug, thanks, man. Appreciate that. So, yeah, shaky approach for sure. By the way, look at that negative 15. We're at negative 20 here on the altimeter. You don't see that that often. Don't see it that often. All right, here we go. Let's get out here. We can also go back in here and start looking at the airport chart. There we go. Let's go full. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we can see what's happening. Ah, perfect. We're going to be right here for our parking anyways. So that's great. 
All right. Coming off of the runway, uh, we would probably at Rotterdam, it's a pretty, I would say, pretty advanced airport. So we'll probably keep our transponder in alt for uh, ground monitoring. Landing light and strobes are going to stay on because landing light is my taxi light and strobes are my beacon. So flaps are up. Let's do an after landing checklist here. Also, we need to check the fuel, but we need to stop first. Three hours and 15 since we took off. So um, slightly more, I think, than what uh, Little Nav Map expected. No, Little Nav Map expected three hours and 11. So wow, pretty, pretty darn close, guys. Pretty darn close. Yes. Me too. And I'm done with the flight, baby. So, oh, look at this beautiful line of people landing. Abby and I are hungry. We're going to go eat very soon. Very soon. All right. So, as far as parking goes, uh, let me see here. Is there ground movement parking stands and coordinates? Okay. Let's look at this. Okay. So, these look like big stands. I think General Aviation is probably elsewhere, but that's okay. We'll park over here. That's fine. We'll take a big gate. Ah, to end and then left, says the Pixie. Okay, okay. To end and then left. Uh, on Juliet or on Golf? This is... Uh, we're on Yankee right now, which... Uh, Yankee or Victor? Yankee. Yeah, here. So we have Juliet and Golf. Oh, okay, Danny. Thanks, man. Uh, let's see here. Maybe there. Maybe there. Let's go to the next one. Oh, there's the Erasmus Bridge, guys. That's cool. That's cool, 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 cool. Bring up our uh, after landing checklist. We don't really need this. But after landing. Flaps are up. Landing light is on. Strobes are on. Aux boost pump. That can come off. Let's turn that off now. Oh, I see. I see. There's some GA over here. Some GA over there, too. Okay, so... Tick, 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 tick. Elevator trim reset to neutral. We'll do that now. Yeah, pretty much neutral. Okay. Oh, yeah! I see. I remember now. I, this is actually where I wanted to stop, guys. So, perfect. This is perfect. Wow, 400 viewers. This is insane. Hello, everybody. Hello, 400 people. You guys are crazy. Next will be shut down. We don't need that just yet. Hey, there's a couple of planes here. Look at this. Rienmond Air Services. BV. BV is Netherlands for Limited Liability Company or Société Anonyme. Tell you what, we'll park over here by this hangar. Yeah, it was a great flight, wasn't it? I thought it was a great flight. I thought it was awesome. I'm just going to park sideways to this hangar, pretending that we're going to put it in there. And so, instead of turning all the way, you park a little bit like this. <laughs> nice. A little bit like this. Oh, interesting. Look what's happening to the shadow and landing light here, interacting together, right? All right, parking brake is on. So, because from here, it's quite easy to push it back into the hangar with, uh, even by hand, right? So, you get a little tow bar connected to the front wheel, turn it, and from here, you're already almost 45 degrees. You just have to keep on turning to put it into the hangar. Okay, so here we go. Shut down checklist. All right, parking brake is set. Avionics. Oops, tick item. Avionics off. Well, the two that we can turn off, we will. All right. Prop RPM lever is full forward. Engine idle. Let's check it. I mean, I can already hear the idle. I don't have to necessarily see the RPM. It's going there anyways, but it takes a while to get there. The RPM sounds about right. So, mixture cut off. Oh, that sound is amazing. Okay. Uh, mags come off. There we go. And now we do the securing, which is beacon comes off. Pedo heat comes off too. Nav lights, those are going to come off. Same for panel. Pedo heat is off. Alternator coming off. 
Uh, landing light can come off too because we're no, no longer taxing, right? Uh, alternator off. Let's see. And battery switch off is next. This is when, you know, Microsoft thinks we're done. And, did we? No, we didn't complete it. Alternator off. Battery switch off. Tie downs and chocks. We're not going to do that because we're going to put this in the hangar, right? But I do want to see how much fuel we had left. So 10 gallons is what we were expecting. Oh, I could do the math, but it's just easier to do this. Whoa, a little bit more than we thought. Look at this, 15 and a half gallons. 15 and a half gallons. Okay, so slightly better performance. And why do I say that? Because it's not just a five and a half gallons extra. Look, for a good chunk of the flight, we were lower than the expected. And the expected had, well, actually, no. No. In real life, you would obviously have different fuel consumptions down here and up there. But we capped our fuel consumption at 10, even at lower altitudes. And uh, Little Nav Map doesn't consider altitude. It, you just tell it, hey, for cruise, this is how many gallons per hour or other units that you consume. So that's why it's just predicated on time. But even then, uh, we are slightly better than, than, the, than the, uh, the aircraft performance uh, file from Little Nav Map. Very cool, but good to know that we're close. Knowledge bombs, that's right. That's right, a bit. Yeah, we went down because of icing, right. Oh, Obivala, there you go. Um, it is the Piper Aero. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing aircraft from Just Flight. This is the Piper Aero Turbo. There is a non-turbo version of the aircraft, which is amazing too. Nice, look at this. Look at everybody over here. That's amazing. Guys, what a great flight this was. What a beautiful flight into Rotterdam. Man, this was cool. What a great way to come back. Paneos, thank you for the follow. Tisiba, Dakuwaka, Alessandro, Glavina, Alima, Alessandro, obrigado. Gl Alima, DJ Doctor or Drago, no, DJ Drago, Big Black Zelda, Amraz, Spaniel Ears, Hamish, Suffixed Envy, John Beer, and Anacross. Thank you very much for the follows. RS747, I didn't even see that resub, dude. Eight months. Thank you, sir. And let's go. That's awesome, guys. Looking forward to the finish. Right, so we only have one leg to go. It's going to be from here, from Rotterdam, all the way to Zen Alse, where one lucky viewer is going to win a copy of Zen Alse. Yes, yes. Um, it's a great scenery to have. A beautiful area in the world to be in. And cool place to fly in and out of because of the Alps. So, um, you don't want to miss that. That's next Monday. Next Monday. And I wanted to ask you guys what we should do with the schedule for the rest of the week. Because I've been working so hard on getting the sim back to running that I haven't had time to test and plan the schedule for the rest of the week. So, I know the DC6 is working. We should definitely do something there. I would like to do some CRJ work this week to prep for the recordings that are going to start very soon, like next week, if we get an update. So, maybe CRJ later this week with the CRJ update. If there is no update, no CRJ just yet, right? Um, we can do Aero stuff, we can do Diamond 62 stuff, so we could do some IFR training using either of those aircraft, right? B-Mint! Oh, with the raid right at the very end too, hey! Hello, B-Mint. Hello, B-Mint viewers. Great to see you. Great to see you all. Uh, man, I haven't gotten a raid from B-Mint in a long time. Hello, everybody. I'm the Flying Fabio, if you don't know me. Welcome to the channel. We just completed our flight, B-Mint. Like, just completed it. We flew from uh, Prestwick all the way to Rotterdam. This was our, our route today, right? We finished... Basically, we're bringing a Piper Aero Turbo... This guy right down here from Florida all the way to Zemalse in Austria. And uh, this is leg seven of the flight. So we did the whole Oceanic Crossing. We actually started in Florida, flew up the East Coast, stopped in New York, stopped at Bar Harbor, stopped in Goose Bay. From Goose Bay, we crossed to Narsaswak, from Narsaswak to Reykjavik. Uh, no, Keflavik. That's right, Keflavik. Keflavik 
Prestwick, and today we did Prestwick to Rotterdam. Next Monday, we're gonna finish this trip from Rotterdam all the way to Zamalsay down here in the Alps. Dwarven beard. Oh, I'll take it. Dwayne, I don't know what makes it a dwarven beard, but I'll I'll take it, man. I like that. I like that. Hey, B Min, how are you? It's been it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Alright, curious. Take care, buddy. I have not, Alima. I have not. So I can't necessarily comment on it. Um Think of giving a spin? Yeah, for sure. I'd love to do it. Uh Okay, so schedule for the rest of the week. Um So definitely some DC6 stuff. If we get an update CRJ stuff, let's do some IFR work. What would you guys like to see? I, I gotta go through stream ideas. I haven't even checked stream ideas recently. But, uh, oh yeah, Scob. We also have the Husky to look at. Forgot about that. Forgot about it, man. Yes, yes, the Husky. Let's look at the Husky. Oh, sure, Sind, yeah. You put some pics in there, buddy. Oh, they're looking great, too. That's awesome. Look at this, guys, real quick. With ah, you flew with the caravan. Nice. Do you have the mod? Look at all. Look at everybody there over Rotterdam. That's so cool, man. That is so cool. Beautiful, beautiful weather too. Beautiful time of day to be landing there. Look at everybody. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Thanks, Icebird. All right, so uh, Husky, check this out. Check uh, this out. Uh. That's right. So here is the standard aircraft, and I show you the standard because it's the only one that has a bunch of liveries. There she is. There she is. I have not tried her yet. You know the deal. You've been to the channel before. I wait to try these things first time with you guys. So, uh, this is the only one that comes with a bunch of different liveries, and there's some cool ones. Like, really cool. I think they're really cool. I like this one a lot. like this one a lot. Um, oh, with what aircraft more was? If the new NXI in the sim is able to perform holds yet. I don't know, fake. I don't know. With the Husky, that's awesome. Southwest vibes. Yeah, that's right. I like it, JLab. I think that's a sharp combination of colors. Anyways, there's a bunch of different liveries. Um, they're all really cool. Um, this is some classic too, right? Looks very cool. You know what? How about some tunage? That's better. Look at this. Hell flyer. That's awesome. So... I wanted to show you the liveries here because the other options do not have um, different liveries. They only have this yellow um, livery. This is the big wheel version of the aircraft. So a little bit more bush flying specific, right? But it's the only livery. Then we have the floats, and the cool thing about the floats is, unlike every float, well, not every, unlike a lot of floats out there, it uh, it can do land too. So you have a landing gear that you can retract to land in water or use it to land on land. Very cool. Very, very cool. And they gave us a ski version too, which is super cool. Yeah, a bit. This is, uh, you get the whole shebang. You get the whole thing. It's pretty awesome. If you ask me. Pretty awesome if you ask me. Right? Oh yeah, by the way, I asked and I didn't see an answer. Is there a timeline for the for the uh, Twatter? The Twin Otter? And yeah, it's about uh, 15 bucks or so, this aircraft. Right, I, I think it's a pretty good deal. Considering the model looks amazing. I don't know about the flying, but I mean... Microsoft has done a pretty good job with stuff they've released so far. Especially the default aircraft for the standard version, right? Um, so yeah, I thought it was pretty decent. 15 bucks for this. So yeah, we gotta try this out too. So let's do that. Oh, oh, and we have the F-14, the early, the preview of the 
uh, just flight. Well, I think it's DC Designs. Is it DC Designs that's doing it? And just flight's gonna release the F-14, which we're gonna have later this week. Okay, so we actually we have plenty. We have plenty. All right. I do have to keep it a little open because I'm not 100% sure that I'm getting the F-14 tomorrow afternoon. That's when they think they're going to be done with their uh, release candidates. And that's what they're going to send me. But they may take longer, right? So I think we should probably keep the schedule pretty loose. And we have stuff to look at, right? We can do DC-6 flight because uh, there's loads to learn. There's still loads, loads to learn. We are definitely going to check out the Husky. So we'll do some cool flights with the Husky too. Then we'll hit the CRJ if there's an update. We'll hit um, the F-14 when we get it. There's DCS World too. I think it's a DC Designs F-14 Ninja. I actually, I don't know for sure who is doing it. If it's Just Flight on their own, I don't think it is. I think it's someone else publishing it via Just Flight. Oh, Dwayne. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. There are. I think because several developers that are not like big serious developers for the sim are figuring out that hey the market is really big and so even if they put junk out they're probably gonna rake in some money before people realize it's junk so unfortunately we're seeing some of that happening and unfortunately microsoft doesn't seem to be qaing any of this stuff that comes into marketplace as a matter of fact i don't know what rule they use on to what gets into marketplace and who gets in first and second and so forth but i don't know that we'll ever know right it's dc designs okay cool. yeah oh really maybe it's worth uh oh nice okay nice to attack you so maybe the vegas updates yeah okay so plenty to look at but again i'm not gonna set a set schedule only because i think some of these things are still up in the air well i don't think they are and so it's better if we just keep it open and then we can play by ear kind of decide what we're gonna do each day depending on what has arrived in my inbox yeah, it bit. I fully agree. I fully agree. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a bit puzzling, really, right? I've been I've started describing Microsoft Flight Sim as the best simulator in the world with the worst installer and update system in the world. Right? I just don't get it. I don't I don't understand why it's so bad. Hey, the David and Joa just accepted you guys. All right, so let's find someone Somebody to raid. Who are we raiding, everybody? You can buy a raid, by the way, using channel points. Uh, or you leave me to my own devices and I go find somebody that we're going to raid. A hey, sheet is on. Always an impressive ATC guy to watch. He does monster streams too. He's two hours in. I bet you he's doing a 10-hour stream. Oh, all right. Commander Deco. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Oh! Icebird just retrieved. Okay. Hypertext hero it is. Hypertext hero it is. All right, bud. Let's find him. We like Hypertext hero. He's a cool guy. He's from Brazil, which already makes him super cool. Right? <laughs> Happy goes, yeah. Is he not on? He might not be on. He's not on. Oh, wait. He's on DCS. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, beautiful, huh? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. And he's got two people watching. Couldn't be better. Could not be better. Let's do this. Let's do this, guys. All right. Guys, I'll be back tomorrow. Same bat time, not bad. Same I bat time, same bat right, channel. Of them right close together. So 1300 Zulu tomorrow, and we'll see. We'll see yeah, if it's a DC6, uh, maybe a CRJ with an update. Maybe it's the Husky. We'll see just how crazy we're going to get. All right, guys. Loved yeah, seeing you again. That was super, super left. awesome for me. Um, it just makes okay, me so feel so happy to be back and talking to you guys again. So... Thanks for having me. I appreciate the number of people that showed up today. That was really, really cool after I took a, a unappreciated break last week uh, due to the sim not working. But we are back up. We got it to work. So I'm super happy. Great to see you guys. Thanks for all the support today. Don't forget, if you're going to Flight Sim Expo, you can use FOF code. Get 10% off virtually or in person. Doesn't matter. You can get that discount. Um, I'll see you tomorrow at 1300 Zulu. And let's go enjoy Hypertext Hero a little bit. All right. Thank you, guys. Love you. 
I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.